can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story. Chapter 801, Meeting an Acquaintance at the Scenic Area in the Afternoon. Wui Mountain Scenic Area. After purchasing the admission tickets, they boarded a tour bus and traveled along a narrow but picturesque mountain trail. They were finally traveling as tourists now as they began their sightseeing tour. The scenery was extremely beautiful. There were also tourists around them who chose to walk on foot for the tour. A. Look at that person in the vehicle. Damn, isn't that John Yi? Is that John Yi? It's him. It can't be wrong. Wow, Teacher Zhong. I saw Teacher Zhong. He's a huge star. Teacher Zhong, when are you coming back to do variety shows again? With his mind still on the DA Hong Pao matter, Zhong Yi had forgotten to put on his sunglasses and was recognized by quite a number of tourists as a result. The crowd started waving at the tour bus that was carrying them. Zhong Yi also smiled and waved back to them. Little Wang flattered, Director Zhong has so many fans. Huang Dandan agreed, that's true, that's true. Oh come on. Zhong Yi said, it's just an undeserved reputation. After touring around for about an hour, the tour bus suddenly came to a fork in the road. On the right, the path went uphill and connected to the other famous attractions of the Wuyi Mountains. The path on the left was much narrower and was just a road leading on with no road signs or location designations in place. Looking far ahead on the left path, there wasn't even a tourist in sight. The tour bus was just getting ready to take a right turn. John Yi immediately called out, Driver, please stop. The tour bus came to a stop and the driver turned around. Teacher Zhong? What's the problem? The driver was aware of who Zhong Yi was and had specially allowed their film crew to come aboard the tour bus without letting anyone else on. It was as though Zhong Yi had chartered the entire bus. Zhong Yi pointed left. Let's go that way. The driver looked in the direction he was pointing and asked, There? There are no scenic attractions over there. Zhong Yi smiled and replied, It's fine. I just want to have a look around there. The driver advised, There's really nothing to see over there. It's pretty deserted and there's only a nameless monastery there. The scenic area's workers don't even go there most of the time, much less the tourists. The scenic attractions cover a vast area and you won't even be able to finish seeing everything in four or five days if you want to visit every attraction. So why would you want to head in that direction? John Yi insisted, just go there please, thank you very much. All righty then. The driver could not dissuade him and just turned his steering wheel to the left and headed off in that path's direction. If I go further ahead, there won't be a road that I can travel on anymore. John Yi nodded. Okay, then we'll have a walk around there later. If he didn't remember wrong, Zhong Yi knew the DA Hong Pao attraction spot was at the end of the path. The only difference between here and his previous world was that this place did not even have a proper road leading in, much less a designated DA Hong Pao attraction. As expected, the history of DA Hong Pao in this world had an unknown deviation somewhere in time, so hopefully, those few tea trees would still be there. They reached the end of the road. Zhong Yi and the others got out of the bus and continued on foot. Ha Chichi asked, Director Zhong, what are we doing? Zhong Yi laughed as he said, we're just taking a stroll around. There isn't much to see at those scenic areas actually. Since they were already used to following Zhong Yi wherever he wanted to go, they just went along this time as well. After walking for about half an hour, the path ahead of them suddenly opened up. A small hill appeared in front of them, and to everyone's surprise, they discovered that Director Zhong was suddenly walking much faster than them. He did not even tell them that he was going ahead first and just hurriedly walked on, as though he was searching for something. Everyone looked at one another and started trotting up behind him as well. Director Zhong. Please be careful of where you're going. Aya, wait up for us. What on earth are you doing? Zhong Yi could no longer be bothered to answer them. They only saw that fellow standing at the foot of the hill, gazing excitedly at a small raised platform built on the hillside. There were several short trees whose trunks looked really obscure and thin as they grew out of the platform. One, he found it. It was really still around. D.A. Hong Pao still exists. Little Wang looked over as well. What is that? 
Tong Fu was befuddled. A bush? What's there to see here? What's with Director Zhong? Wu Yi asked, what's he so excited about? Huang Danden replied, I don't know, aren't those just some small bushes? Zhong Yi thought to himself, how are these just some small bushes? These trees are made of gold, they are money trees, they are by far the most valuable trees in the world. You can just pick some leaves off of it and they would sell for an astronomical price. Without another word, Zhong Yi climbed straight up. He looked fixedly at those insignificant looking small trees from a very close distance. It was already past the season for picking tea leaves, so there weren't any suitable leaves that he could pick at the moment. So these were the legendary D.A. Hong Pao parent trees. In Zhong Yi's previous world, the surrounding area here was cordoned off and protected by the government. There were also regulations to prevent the picking of tea leaves here as the trees needed to be protected and cared for, so there was no way a tourist could get so close to the D.A. Hong Pao trees. But now, Zhong Yi was standing here at the foot of the hill where the parent trees were growing. He could easily climb up there if he wanted to. Moreover, he also noticed that there was no trace of the stone inscription of the three Chinese characters for D.A. Hong Pao, on the hillside. It was as though it had never appeared before. That might just be the point in history where the deviation occurred. D.A. Hong Pao, which should have been famous since antiquity, had not been discovered by anyone in this world. No one had written the inscription, no one had given it a name, and as a result, these trees were left unknown all this while. It had seemingly been forgotten by the people of this world with nobody paying any attention to them. A. Eh? The parent trees looked like they have had their leaves plucked and were even pruned before. Someone had been picking tea leaves from this tree. Who was it? Who picked the tea leaves? John Yi was shocked. He looked around the area and his gaze fell upon the monastery not too far away. The monastery was not big and sat at the foot of the hill. There was no name board hanging at the entrance of it, so it was really as the driver had told them earlier. It was indeed a nameless monastery. In John Yi's memory of this place, there didn't seem to be a monastery that existed here. John Yi immediately led his group toward the monastery. He wanted to find out more about those tea trees and see if he could lease them, or even better, buy them outright. But he didn't know who he could approach about this. Inside the nameless monastery. In the backyard, two monks were having a talk. The younger abbot said with a smile, Senior brother, how long do you intend to meditate during this trip from Beijing? The elder abbot smiled. I'll leave it to fate. The younger abbot shook his head. You've really changed. You've really changed a lot. Yes. The elder abbot's expression was a calm one. This old monk's Qingshan monastery might not have as good scenery as you have here, but with so many people coming and going, it's a rather lively place to be at. I've met many people in my years over there and have gone through a lot as well. There are very interesting stories, just like the gatha that I sent you last year. Did you receive it? The younger abbot exclaimed, I received it. Every word was a gem. The elder abbot said, through its enlightenment, this old monk has had a truly beneficial year. I feel like I have gained a deeper insight into the teachings of Buddha. Therefore, I decided to make my travels to your peaceful abode to have some time to myself, but I'm worried that I will be intruding on your peace instead. The younger abbot said, Senior brother, please don't say that. You can stay however long you wish. I don't get to see many people in an entire year here. There are no tourists who would come down here from the scenic areas. As he was saying that, a young monk came in. Abbot, we have guests. The younger abbot was surprised. What guests? The young monk touched his head and said, I think they're tourists, but they said that they want to meet the leader of our monastery. Leader? The younger abbot didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Then he turned to the elder abbot and said, Senior brother, I'll go take a look then. I've been sitting here for too long, so why don't we go together? I need to stretch my muscles a little as well, the elder abbot replied as he stood up. The two of them went out to greet the guests. Outside, Zhong Yi had made his way into the monastery's front yard with his group. As the two groups came face to face, at that moment, a person from each group was stunned. Zhong Yi said, Abbot? The elder abbot also said, Armsgiver Zhong? Ayo, what are you doing here? 
Zhong Yi was amused at the coincidence. The elder abbot responded, this old monk was just on his travels. I came to my junior brother's monastery to visit him. Zhong Yi slapped his thigh and remarked, this must be fate, or rather, the two of us were truly destined to meet again. The elder abbot also laughed, yes, I had just brought up almsgiver Zhong to my junior brother a moment ago. I couldn't have expected to meet you so soon after just mentioning you. If this isn't fate, then what is? The younger abbot was slightly taken aback. Senior brother, is he the one you were talking about? The elder abbot nodded. The younger abbot immediately went up to Zhong Yi with his hands pressed together. Amitba. I've heard much about you. Zhong Yi quickly returned the courtesy. I'm ashamed, I'm ashamed. Ha Chichi, Tong Fu, and the others were stunned by what they were seeing. Damn, could Director Zhong's reputation be any greater? Even in a such a faraway place deep in the mountains, he could still meet an acquaintance? Even monks knew who he was? And they even looked like they knew each other pretty well? Zhong Yi introduced to them, this is the abbot of Qingshan Monastery in Beijing, in the past we, uh, never mind, let's not talk about that. The elder abbot smiled and finished his thought. Without that fight, we wouldn't have gotten to know each other. Ha Chichi inquired, fight? Zhong Yi coughed under his breath and explained, when I was filming a movie last year, their monastery did not allow our film crew into the mountains, so I beat up the monks from their monastery. About that, well, that's already ancient history not to be mentioned. Ha Chichi, Little Wang, and everyone else did not know what to say anymore. Beat up monks? Oh my god, I'm fainting. So director Zhong has already been that fierce since a long time ago. A female colleague of the film crew asked with great curiosity, director Zhong, quickly tell us more about it. The team had always enjoyed listening to stories depicting Zhong Yi's wicked deeds. Zhong Yi said in a speechless manner, why do you guys want to bring up those things? The elder abbot laughed heartily. It's nothing that we can't talk about. Come on in, almsgivers. Out here is not a place to talk. Let's go in and drink some tea as we chat. I'll tell everyone what happened. Inside, everyone took their seats. The abbot started relating to them the incident that occurred at Qingshan Monastery. When he came to the part where Zhong Yi started fighting with the monks, Ha Chichi and the others were listening to it excitedly. Then, when they heard about the part where Zhong Yi and the abbot had a debate about Zen, everyone was even more interested. Even the elder abbot's junior brother and the monks of the nameless monastery were fully engrossed listening to the story. The abbot laughed. At the end, almsgiver Zhong saw the gatha that I had engraved into a stone tablet, the body is a body tree, the mind is a mirror bright, never stop dusting and wiping, lest dust alight. Ha Chichi praised, what a good gatha. Wu Yi commented, you have a really good state of mind, master. Everyone began praising how good it was. The young monks of the nameless monastery also nodded in agreement, looking in admiration at the elderly abbot. Little Wang quickly asked, then how did director Zhong reply? Who won in the end? Tong Fu repeated, yeah, who won? The story was really too interesting. The abbot replied, obviously, it was almsgiver Zhong who won. Ah? A young monk was surprised by this. Another young monk also questioned in disbelief, but how? The elderly abbot smiled and answered, because almsgiver Zhong responded to my gatha with another gatha, by origin there is no body tree, nor is there a mirror bright, originally there is not a single thing, where does dust alight? When everyone heard that, they were all stunned. The looks in the eyes of the young monks staring at Zhong Yi now changed. Only Zhong Yi felt a little embarrassed at this moment. Ahem, I'm ashamed, I'm ashamed. Chapter 802, Buying the DA Hongpao Parent Trees this gatha sounds way too cool. Our director Zhong is really too amazing. Listening to it makes me feel so moved. I didn't know that something like that happened back then. I remember someone posted a video back then regarding this incident that had taken at Qingshan Monastery. A pity that I didn't watch it at that time, so I'll definitely search and watch it for myself when I get back. How valiant! Director Zhong is undoubtedly a grandmaster of the literary world. Everyone was full of praise. Zhong Yi laughed. Don't praise me like that. That's enough. At this moment, the tea was served. 
the younger abbot personally brewed a pot of tea for everyone. Even before the tea was poured out, its fragrance was already exuding. The moment the tea was poured out into the cups, the piping hot, deep-colored tea wafted a hot vapor which carried an aroma that attacked everyone's sense of smell. Hachichi wondered, what tea is this? Great tea. Wu Yi acted as though he knew but was in fact not knowledgeable about teas. Immediately, the light in Zhong Yi's eyes changed. He did not care about anyone and picked up the teacup to have a sip, then a second sip, and finally, a third sip. Following that, he took a deep breath and said, this tea is. The younger abbot smiled and pointed outside. Every year, during the tea harvesting season, I will get someone to go and pick the tea leaves from some of those unknown tea trees on the hill. After we process them, we drink it for our own consumption, so the taste might not be comparable to other famous teas. But it could still be considered to have quite a unique flavor. Its taste still remains even after six or seven infusions. Tong Fu nodded. This tea tastes quite good. Huang Dandan acknowledged, it's quite nice drinking it. Quite good. This is Da Hong Pao that we're talking about. The tea that is brewed from the leaves of the Da Hong Pao parent trees. Zhong Yi was extremely excited. Is there any more of this tea? The younger abbot was stunned for a moment. There's still plenty of it. We have a total of several catties gathered up over the past years. Since there aren't many visitors to our place, it's not very often that we drink the tea, so most of the tea leaves have been accumulating up till today. I'm not someone who usually likes to drink tea either. Does almsgiver Jong enjoy this tea? They're just some small tea trees growing out in the wild. If you think it tastes good, I'll get someone to bring the tea leaves out for you to bring back. They're not worth much anyway. One, several catties? They have accumulated that many tea leaves over the years? Zhong Yi was beaming with joy. Would that be appropriate? The younger abbot said, you're an old friend of my senior brother and also a rare guest of our monastery, so what's inappropriate about that? Saying so, he turned around to instruct a young monk to bring out the tea leaves. It was obvious that he did not treat those tea trees as something valuable. The elder abbot looked at Zhong Yi and asked, Armsgiver Zhong, what's the reason you came here? Are you on a tour? If so, then how did you end up coming to this isolated location while touring? This old monk intentionally came to look for my junior brother, but I still had to search for a very long time before I could find this place. Zhong Yi also did not hide his intentions. Abbot, since we already know each other, then it'll be easier to speak. To be honest with you, I came because of those tea trees. We came to the Wu Yi Mountains to shoot a documentary and have already wrapped things, but when I saw those tea trees, I had a new idea. I intend to shoot a few more scenes here to add to the story, so I wanted to find out whether we had permission to film. Should I inform the people in charge of the scenic area first? Also, which of you usually pick the tea leaves? Can you get the young monks to cooperate with us for a short shoot? Shooting more scenes. Ha Chichi and the others were taken aback at this, but did not ask any further. When the younger abbot heard that, he said, shooting a documentary. Then it's definitely not an issue since we often have television stations who come to the scenic area for filming. Get our monks to help you with the shoot. That's also not a problem, but the season for tea leaf picking has already passed, so how will you shoot that? Zhong Yi said, I have a way for that, but we don't have to emphasize the tea picking activity itself. The younger abbot agreed without hesitating, all right, these are just small issues. After communicating his intentions, Zhong Yi immediately got Ha Chichi and the others to get prepared. Sister Ha, contact the supervisor of the scenic area. Old Wu, bring someone along with you to go back to the hotel and get the video cameras and other necessary equipment. Little Wang, change our flight date to two days later. There's now a change in our schedule, so we'll go back another day later. Okay. Understood, Director Zhong. Everyone went off to do their jobs. After Zhong Yi delegated the duties to his subordinates, a young monk brought out a large bag of tea leaves and handed it to Zhong Yi. Carrying the several catties of Da Hong Pao, he didn't know just how many years' worth of tea leaves were accumulated. The tea leaves were not placed together, but packed separately in a dozen or so smaller packets. 
neither the color of the tea leaves nor the year of harvest were the same and most of the tea leaves appeared very aged. Zhong Yi had not calmed down since a very long while ago. He asked, Abbot, who is in charge of or responsible for those tea trees? The younger abbot said, this entire place falls under the scenic area. Are there any tea plantations in the mountains? There's one south, but it's quite far from here. Are those tea trees there leased by someone or what? They are leased to the local tea merchants. Some of the tea trees are rented by them or they lease a moo of land and hire workers to plant tea trees on them. There is also a tea tree region in the scenic area itself, so we have all sorts of things going on around here. Two. What if I want to take out a lease of those tea trees? You want to take out a lease of those tea trees? Yes, can you help me to contact the supervisor? It would be best if you can contact someone from the government office who can make decisions. If possible, I would like to buy those tea trees on this side of the hill. The price doesn't matter, but it'll definitely be higher than the prices offered by those tea merchants. Well, I'll try to arrange something for you. There was a telephone in the monastery as well. These days, monks were also keeping up with the times. Later that afternoon, Zhong Yi and the two abbots came to the administrative office for the scenic area. The local government representative and the supervisor of the scenic area were also here. When they saw Zhong Yi, they recognized him immediately. Aren't you teacher Zhong Yi? You're the one who's interested taking out a lease for the tea trees? Zhong Yi shook hands with them one by one and replied, yes. The staff of the scenic area also knew about those several tea trees. To them, they were just some wild tea trees that wouldn't have much of a yield in a year. They grew on the hillside and it would take too much effort to harvest their tea leaves. Since the yield was so low, there was no reason to bother about it at all. It had always been the people from the nameless monastery who picked the tea leaves for their own consumption. After a moment of exchanging pleasantries, they got straight to the point. The government representative said, because this is a scenic area, the circumstances are also a little special. Generally, the tea trees on the plantations are either planted by the staff of the scenic area itself, or with the help and cooperation of the local tea merchants. They are not open to the public in most cases, but since you, Teacher Zhong, have requested it, I think we can make an exception this time. If you wish to take out a lease on a tea plantation, we have a batch of tea Luohan that was just transplanted over to a plot of land on the south side which can be harvested next year. They are probably more suitable for you than those tea trees that you mentioned, Zhong Yi interrupted, I don't want tea Luohan. That government representative said, then you just want those few, small little tea trees on the hill? Yes, can you name me a price? Zhong Yi answered. That government representative and the supervisor of the scenic area exchanged glances. Because those tea trees are rather aged trees from the older generations, it will be more expensive if you want to take out a lease. It will cost 100,000 renminbi per year. That's already the cheapest we can offer. 100,000 renminbi? That's enough to rent a few mu of tea plantations. But Zhong Yi did not say anything. What if I don't want to rent, but buy them? That government representative replied, actually, it's not worthwhile to buy them. We collect management fees here annually. Also, the purchasing costs are usually very high. Let me know what your asking price is first. Zhong Yi blinked. The two officials discussed for a while and did some calculations before making an offer. 3.5 million renminbi. The younger abbot frowned. Arms give a Zhong. Just those several tea trees would cost over 3 million to buy. Isn't that quite the rip-off? Zhong Yi counter-offered, 3 million. That is my final offer. After some further negotiations, they finally struck a deal for 3 million renminbi. As Zhong Yi was very anxious, he got them to write up a contract right away and signed it on the very same day. Zhong Yi did not have much money as he had not saved up much for the past two years. However, he could still afford to fork out 3 or 4 million renminbi. Back at the monastery. The younger abbot said while shaking his head, it's too expensive. However, Zhong Yi stated, no matter how much they cost, they're still worth it since I like this tea. Oh, abbot, in the future when I'm not around, I'll have to trouble you with the matters of harvesting, maintenance, and pruning of the tea leaves every year. The younger abbot nodded. Absolutely. 
Zhong Yi declared, but I can't let you and everyone work for nothing. I will donate 500,000 renminbi to the monastery, be it for charity or incense costs. Can you give me the bank account information, or perhaps I can bring cash over tomorrow? A few of the young monks were stunned when they heard that. The younger abbot waved his hands. It's just a simple matter, so there's no need to. John Yi would not allow that. That won't do. How could you refuse to accept the incense money that I'm donating? Besides, you've also given me several catties of tea leaves, so let me handle the costs when your monastery undergoes renovations later. The younger abbot demurred, no, that isn't right. When the elder abbot saw this, he also said, ha ha, junior brother, just accept it. Since almsgiver Zhong is dedicated to Buddhism, this is his sincerity and heartfelt token. Your monastery really needs some repairing as well, and that's not about whether it is extravagant or not. If one day this dilapidated building collapses, many lives will be lost. You still have to be responsible for your disciples, understand? With the elder abbot saying that, the younger abbot could only reluctantly accept. It was all settled. The cameras would roll another time for a bite of China. Zhong Yi had almost spent all of his savings in exchange for some insignificant tea trees. To others, Zhong Yi might seem very stupid and look like he had gone crazy. But only Zhong Yi knew he was going to earn big time with this deal. The famous D.A. Hong Pao parent trees from his previous world had now turned out to be his private property. This was just like a dream. Chapter 803, It's Getting Boisterous at Central TV. Two days later. Beijing. Kaishiku. At Zhong Yi's parents' house. He unlocked the door and opened it. Zhong Yi returned home, pulling his luggage and carrying several bags into the house. The moment he stepped in, he immediately smelled the aroma of pork ribs. His mother was busy cooking in the kitchen and his father was also helping her make lunch for Zhong Yi. Dad, Mom. Zhong Yi greeted them. His mother smiled. Son, you're back. His father came up to him. Are you tired? Did you suffer a lot? I'm not tired, but I kept thinking of home-cooked food, Zhong Yi said with a laugh. For the past two months I've been filming, I've tried many different cuisines from a lot of places, but I just couldn't get used to them and still prefer the taste of home. His mother was very happy to hear that. All right, all right, all you know is flattery. Zhong Yi said, but it's true. At this moment, Chen Chen emerged from the bedroom. Zhong Yi, did you buy me any presents? Zhong Yi rolled his eyes at her. I went on a business trip. Did you really think it was a trip to enjoy myself? No presents. Chen Chen's sharp eyes caught sight of a large bag that Zhong Yi was holding in his hands very carefully. She reached out her hands, trying to take it from him. What's that? Tea leaves. Hands off! Zhong Yi exclaimed protectively. His mother said, Tea leaves? Good timing. We've just run out of tea leaves at home. Go and brew two pots for drinking later. Zhong Yi was not having any of that. Forget it. Two pots? Do you know how much this tea costs by the gram? It's not something you can just drink for leisure. We should save them for later. The first thing that Zhong Yi did when he got home was stash away the several catties of D.A. Hong Pao. He looked for a suitable spot that was dark, cool, and dry to store them in. After that, he took out the copies of the contract and the D.A. Hong Pao parent tree's purchase agreement from his luggage and put them away safely, afraid that he would lose them. Chen Chen pouted. Stingy. His mother also stared at him. Do you have to go as far as that? HMPH, none of you would understand even if I explained it to you. Zhong Yi then reminded, make sure you don't touch my tea. If you guys want to drink it, I'll brew a cup later, but only a cup and not more. His mother was annoyed. A cup? His father was also speechless for a long time at that. In the future, if he could hype it up enough and the entire world knew about the value of D.A. Hong Pao, then rather than just millions, these several catties of tea leaves could even be auctioned off for up to several tens of millions of yuan. Not to mention that there was also an inexhaustible supply from those yearly harvests of the parent trees of his. Suddenly, a call arrived. The caller ID showed Wu Ziqing's name on it. 
Seeing that, Zhong Yi suddenly smiled and answered, Hello, old Wu. You're back? Yeah, I just got home a moment ago. How's your work going? Everything's going smoothly, how about you? How are you doing? It's going well for me too, haha. Ha. We've not met in two months already. After I finish up my documentary's post-production, I'll visit you and have a taste of your cooking. Oh yes, I'll bring some tea leaves for you as well when I go over. I guarantee you haven't had something like it before. It's an especially good quality tea. You'll know what I mean after you taste it. I'll bring you a hundred grams to try. A tea that Big Sis has never had? There aren't too many types that I haven't tried before. Ha, huh, you definitely have not tried this one before. All right then, I'll be looking forward to your tea leaves. Okay. After hanging up, Zhong Yi saw the expression on his parents and the kid's face. His mother. His father. Chen Chen. For them, it was a cup each, for someone else, it was a hundred grams. What a huge difference. His mother couldn't help but ask, rascal, am I still your mother? Zhong Yi laughed at that. After lunch. In the afternoon, Zhong Yi did not stay at home to rest, but headed straight back to the office. There was still a lot of work waiting for him to handle, so anyone other than Zhong Yi could rest. He was not even home for two hours yet, nor had the time to go look for Wu Zeqing, but had already come back to Central TV Tower for work. Actually, this fellow also felt tired. He wasn't made of steel. If he drank too much, he would puke, if he ate too much, he would feel bloated. With the three film crews starting their shoots at the same time, even though they had a very packed schedule to follow, they still only had to travel every few days to a different location. However, Zhong Yi was flying almost every other day across the country to different locations and divided his time among the three film crews. On top of that, he was also the overall supervisor and executive director, so his workload was several times that of the others. In the two months, Zhong Yi had already traveled to more than a dozen different provinces, covering almost the entire country. But even if he was tired, Zhong Yi always believed that only by experiencing the hardest hardships could he rise above the ordinary. He couldn't control how others did their work, but he could guarantee that as long as it was something that he did, it would surely be done to perfection. After two months away from Beijing, there were also some changes back at the workplace. From afar, Zhong Yi could already see a long vertical banner near the entrance of Central TV. Written on it was the promotional slogan for Rise to the Dance. There were also ad posters and balloon decorations around it as well. When Zhong Yi did the voice back then, there was no such treatment from Central TV. As he drove closer, he saw countless fans camping outside the entrance. There were more than several hundred people. Hua Dong Fang. Hua Dong Fang. Sek leader Hua. I love you. I love you. Teacher Shen Lili. You're my goddess. Fan Wenli. Teacher Fan, look at me. Give me a look. Chen Yi. You're so handsome. Ah. Sek leader Hua turned to look at me. He was looking at me. Get lost, it was me who he was looking at. When can we enter the recording studio? It's the first recording today. Hurry up, I can't wait any longer. Only then did Zhong Yi realize that the team of Rise to the Dance had just arrived ahead of him. A few compact cars covered with promotional stickers of the show had just driven into the compound. From the fans' shouts, he realized that it was the first recording of Rise to the Dance today. It seemed like in the two months that Zhong Yi was away, the preliminary auditions for Rise to the Dance had finished and they were now moving on to the next phase of the show. From the looks of it, they might be officially starting their broadcast very soon. At that moment, Zhong Yi also felt a sense of urgency and thought that he should really make the most of his time and hurry up and finish his documentary. He turned his steering wheel and drove in behind them into the compound. At the gate, he lowered the car window for the security guard who let him through immediately. Some fans noticed it. Aya, that's Zhong Yi. Look at that BMW. Teacher Zhong has come to work too. Didn't the news say that he went to shoot a documentary? Has he finished filming it? Teacher Zhong is back in Beijing? Some of the onlookers started discussing. 
but as they were mainly the fans of Hua Dongfang, Fan Wenli, and Chen Yi, they did not pay much attention to Zhong Yi and just finished with their discussions after a few words. Since Zhong Yi was not a celebrity idol, his popularity among the younger groups of people made him not that sought after. Coupled with his disappearance from the mainstream media as he was away for work, although two months couldn't be considered a long time, but for a celebrity in the entertainment circle, it was not a short time either. Two months was enough for a fan to change their allegiance to other celebrities due to a show or song that they came across during this duration. But luckily for Zhong Yi, his reputation was too big and his results were too dazzling. As a result, he did not have to worry that he would be forgotten after only two months away. At most, his popularity would maintain as before. Inside. At the lobby of the television tower. When Fan Wenli saw Zhong Yi's car behind her, she purposely stopped in her tracks and waited for Zhong Yi to come out. Director Zhong, it's been a while. Have you listened to my new song yet? Zhong Yi smiled as he walked up to her. I've been up in the mountains every day without a cell phone signal. How could I possibly have heard it? But I must definitely have your album in my collection. I'll be buying a copy to listen to afterwards. Fan Wenli smiled and said, give me some suggestions after you listen to it. Zhong Yi waved it off and remarked, oh come on, you're the professional when it comes to music. I'm just an amateur who has coincidentally written two songs. How could I give you my suggestions? Chen Yi and the others who were walking ahead also stopped in their tracks where Dongfang turned around to look. No one knew what he was thinking, but he started walking over as well. This must be teacher Zhong? Zhong Yi looked at him and also stepped forward to shake his hand. Teacher Hua, nice to meet you. Hua Dongfang was an A-list actor with a very good figure. He was indeed worthy of his dance background and also had the looks and demeanor to go along with it. There was talk that his acting skills were quite good, but as Zhong Yi had not really watched any movies of his, he wasn't too familiar with that claim. However, getting into the ranks of the A-list celebrities, he shouldn't be a simple person at all. At least in terms of popularity, Zhong Yi was not his match. It was rumored that as long as Hua Dongfang was involved in a movie, even just as a supporting actor, the box office earnings would break 100 million renminbi, or even 200 or 300 million renminbi. His followers on Weibo numbered in the many tens of millions, so Zhong Yi had long since heard of his name. Hua Dongfang had also often heard of Zhong Yi's name before this. He looked at Zhong Yi's face with a slightly strange gaze. These two people were meeting for the first time, so they didn't speak much and just simply exchanged a few pleasantries. A bit a ways, the dancer, Shen Lili, was on the phone talking. Nobody knew whether she saw Zhong Yi or not, but as she talked on the phone, she entered the elevator with a few program staff members to go upstairs. Rise to the dance's executive director Xu Yiping turned back and cast a glance over them before following them into the elevator as well. However, Chen Yi unexpectedly stayed behind. He went up to the group with a smirk on his face. Director Zhong, have you finished your documentaries filming? Zhong Yi acted like he just noticed him and said, Yo, isn't that Director Chen? Ha ha, yes, we just finished our filming and are preparing for the post-production work right now. Chen Yi looked him up and down and remarked, You look like you've put on weight. Zhong Yi replied with a chuckle, You've not slimmed down at all either. Chen Yi looked spirited. The new show was being heavily promoted in recent days and that helped his popularity and worth rise back up quietly. Back then, after he was squeezed out of the B-list celebrity rankings by Zhong Yi, Chen Yi had forced his way back into them about half a month ago. He managed to squeeze out a longtime singer who had been famous for a long while and returned back to the B-list celebrity rankings. Even though they were in the same tier now, his ranking was still far behind Zhong Yi's. But Chen Yi believed that once Rise to the Dance started broadcasting, it wouldn't be hard for him to catch up to Zhong Yi's level of popularity. One was involved in a variety show, while the other was shooting a documentary. One of them would only have his popularity rise, while the other ones would fade. With one going up and one going down, the gap in their popularity would quickly be closed. So why would Chen Yi be afraid of not being able to catch up to Zhong Yi? It was just a matter of when he got there. Actually, it wasn't just Chen Yi who felt this way. By now, everyone else also thought the same way. 
didn't Central TV Department 1 flex their muscles heavily to support Rise to the Dance and Chen Yi because they wanted Chen Yi to replace Zhong Yi? Wasn't their intent to let Chen Yi ride the coattails of the glory of the voice? To Central TV Department 1, Zhong Yi had always been an unavoidable pain. From the time since they started their cooperation until they fell out, and then the court case, Central TV Department 1 had totally lost face. That was also the reason why they gave so much love to Rise to the Dance, because Central TV Department 1 wanted to tell everyone that even without Zhong Yi, they could still rule the variety world. Without Zhong Yi, they would still have an excellent host who could take the place of Zhong Yi. Chen Yi gave a fake smile and said, Director Zhong is known for being able to make famous any show that he makes. I'm sure Director Zhong's documentary is definitely going to be different from the others. Zhong Yi laughed. I can't compare to you guys. Rise to the Dance is incredibly popular even before its broadcast. Even though I was stationed out in the mountains, I couldn't get away from all those promos and news about it. Chen Yi narrowed his eyes. I'm quite looking forward to the broadcast of your documentary. Same here, same here, Zhong Yi replied. It appeared that they were both flattering each other, but were in fact engaged in a battle of sorts. Fan Wenli could sense it, so she tried to steer the subject away. Director Zhong, when is your documentary going to be broadcast? Can you notify me when it does? I'm really looking forward to watching it. Chen Yi also said, yeah, when does it broadcast? Zhong Yi glanced at Chen Yi and returned, let me ask you first, when is Rise to the Dance going to be broadcast? Hearing Zhong Yi ask that, everyone present was very surprised. Why did he ask that? Was Zhong Yi trying to find out about Rise to the Dance's broadcast date and time so that he could have his documentary avoid it? Was he trying to avoid clashing with it so that his documentary wouldn't perform too badly and paint him in a bad light? That couldn't be. Zhong Yi was so notorious for being a hooligan in the entertainment circle that Central TV was even sued in court by him. So why would he suddenly choose to avoid a conflict like this? Fan Wenli gave Zhong Yi a strange look. Hua Dongfang replied smilingly, I think we're scheduled for December. Has the exact date been set yet? He turned to look at Chen Yi. Chen Yi revealed a joyous smile at that. With Zhong Yi asking that question, it showed that he had totally lost his confidence. It left Chen Yi feeling very satisfied as he said, we set the date yesterday. It's slated to premiere on Friday, December 10th at 8pm. There will be a mini press conference tonight. We'll make an official announcement then too. Having said all that, Chen Yi's gaze fell on Zhong Yi as he questioned him, what about you guys, Director Zhong? But nobody expected that Zhong Yi's answer would dumbfound everyone here. Zhong Yi laughed loudly. Ayo, how coincidental, our documentary is slated to premiere on December 10th at 8pm on Friday as well. Fan Wenli was shocked. Chen Yi was shocked. Even Hua Dongfang was shocked at that. Everyone else's expressions froze. What did you say? You want to broadcast your documentary on the same date and time as Rise to the Dance. Everyone was quite dumbfounded by this. Fuck, it was only then that they understood that Zhong Yi had asked the question not because he was afraid of Rise to the Dance, but because he had intentionally wanted to match up against them with the same broadcast schedule. Moreover, no one had any doubts that the broadcast schedule for Department 14's new documentary was just finalized right there, and then by Zhong Yi. Otherwise, how come something so coincidental possibly happen? Crazy. Zhong Yi has really gone crazy. To say nothing of this being a documentary, many of the upcoming shows on Central TV were already strongly appealing for their shows to not be scheduled for the Friday primetime broadcast as they wanted to avoid the seemingly unstoppable rise to the dance. There were also the other shows of other television stations like Beijing Television, and Shanghai Satellite TV whose program teams had applied to change their broadcast times because of the head-on clash with rise to the dances. Broadcast time. They were all afraid that their viewership ratings would turn out badly if they had to go up against rise to the dance. But while everyone else was rushing to avoid this, here you are, trying to go head-on with rise to the dance. This is too crazy. That show of yours is just a documentary. Around them, many of the Central TV employees who heard that suddenly stopped dead in their tracks. They all looked at Zhong Yi in shock with very wondrous expressions on their faces. This is the Zhong Yi they knew. 
this is that stubborn Zhong Yi who would not yield to anything. Fan Wenli didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Director Zhong, you are. There's no need to do this, there's really no need to do this. Fan Wenli had never doubted Zhong Yi's abilities. If Zhong Yi had been given a variety show instead, would he have needed to avoid other people's shows? That would be bullshit. All the television stations in the entire country would probably be the ones planning to avoid Zhong Yi's show's time slot. Even Chen Yi would have to quietly and obligingly avoid it without making a sound. Because it was Zhong Yi's show, because it was Zhong Yi's variety show. But in the current situation? It's a documentary that you have, so who would bother to avoid your show? It should be you avoiding other people's shows instead. Zhong Yi's reply left everyone stunned. Chen Yi was also tickled by his arrogance. You want to compete with us on the same broadcast schedule? All right then. That would be really great. I couldn't welcome you more than that. Director Zhong, so it's confirmed then? Chen Yi tried to intimidate him. You won't be making any changes to that I suppose? Zhong Yi gave him a smile. Of course. I'm only afraid that you'll change your time slot instead. Chen Yi chuckled, we definitely won't be changing it. We'll see you around on the evening of the 10th then. Chen Yi and his team left. Zhong Yi shrugged and then went about his own way as well. The remaining people who saw the commotion stared with their mouths agape. What the heck? Isn't Director Zhong being too rash? I really have to give it to Director Zhong. He's even trying to use a documentary to compete against a variety show on viewership ratings? Fuck. How brave would you need to be to do that? In the entirety of Central TV, only Zhong Yi would try something like that. It's needless to say, but Zhong Yi will definitely lose. Yeah, who knows what director Zhong is thinking. The talented are truly bolder. But that wouldn't be fair. How can a documentary possibly be compared to a variety show? If director Zhong didn't arrange for their documentary to be broadcast alongside Rise to the Dance, other people might not go and compare them. After all, the genre of the two shows are too different, so even if director Zhong's documentary were to get a viewership rating of 0.0 something percent, no one would say a thing. Since all documentaries perform similarly, no one would make a joke out of it. But now, it looks like director Zhong is itching for a fight? Does he really intend to tussle with Rise to the Dance? He really wants to fight it out to prove something? He's making it impossible for others not to compare them. The key point here is, will there even be anything to compete on at all? Even if all the television stations in the entire country were to pick out their best viewership rated documentary, they wouldn't be able to compete with a random variety show with the lowest viewership that's broadcast on a satellite channel. Director Zhong's mind really works differently from others. Even if Zhong Yi wants to broadcast his documentary on the 10th, will Department 14 agree to it? Come on, have you all forgotten who the director of Department 14 is? Oh, it's Yang Qianfei. Fuck, Director Yang isn't someone who would back off from a challenge either. Right, if it's Director Yang, he might really end up making such an arrangement too. There might really be a chance for these two shows to clash. This is surely going to keep the media busy for a while. This is going to be interesting. You mean it's going to be trouble, don't you? After all, Rise to the Dance should have been Zhong Yi's show to handle, or you could say it was already decided until it got handed to director Xu and Chen Yi instead. Now that director Zhong has purposely scheduled his documentary to be broadcast on the same date and time as Rise to the Dance, I wonder how the media is going to report about it. The sensationalization is going to be, a. Hey, hang on, do you guys think that director Zhong might be using Rise to the Dance to publicize his documentary? That sounds very possible. The promos for Rise to the Dance have been overwhelming and everyone in the country knows about it. But how did they intend to promote Zhong Yi's documentary? Even if they spend money on advertising, there's only so much it can do. Who would bother to watch a documentary? Moreover, Department 14 doesn't have that many tens of millions to put into their promotions anyway, so if they used Rise to the Dance to create a case for themselves instead, to use Zhong Yi's and Chen Yi's rivalry to hype it up, then it will definitely help to bring more attention to Department 14's documentary. This is definitely the easiest and most cost-effective way for them to promote Zhong Yi's documentary. 
You guys are thinking too hard. Yeah, even if it's publicizing the documentary, what's the use? It's still a documentary we're talking about. Even if a heavenly king or queen were to do the narrations for it and they used that to hype it up to the entire world, there still wouldn't be much of a viewership. Ahem, uh -huh, that's true too. Yeah, the key issue is that no one bothers watching a documentary. Hi, let's just wait and see how it turns out. Very quickly, this news started spreading around Central TV. Zhong Yi was indeed Zhong Yi. When he was not around in Beijing for two months, almost nothing happened at Central TV, with the days going by peacefully and quietly. But on the day that he returned, Central TV was getting boisterous again. Chapter 804, A Starving Camel is Still Bigger Than a Horse. Upstairs. Central TV Department 14. When Zhong Yi entered the office space, he did not go elsewhere but headed straight to Yang Qianfei's office. Old Yang was having a late lunch and had just finished eating the food from his lunchbox prepared by his wife. His secretary was just taking the lunchbox from Old Yang to go wash it when Zhong Yi entered. Director Zhong. The secretary nodded with a smile. Then he left the office with the empty lunchbox. Yang Qianfei was taken aback and asked curiously, Teacher Zhong, didn't you just get off the plane today? Why did you come to work in the afternoon if you just arrived back at Beijing this morning? There's no hurry at all. Besides, you should be resting after working so hard for the past two months. Why are you in such a hurry to do the post-production, voiceover, and the editing? Zhong Yi smiled and said, I wanted to discuss something with you. Yang Qianfei asked, What is it? I want our documentary to start broadcasting on December 10, Zhong Yi asserted. Yang Qianfei was taken aback at first, then looked to be deep in thought while he wondered, why does this date sound so familiar? Zhong Yi replied, Rise to the Dance is also going to be broadcast on that day. Only then did Yang Qianfei recall. No wonder it sounds so familiar. I would like our documentary to be broadcast on the same day and time as theirs. That's why I came here to seek your opinion. Zhong Yi stated, if you think that's not possible, then we can talk about it again another time. Yang Qianfei didn't even give it a second thought and just said, why not? Since you're the executive director of our only independent program team at Department 14, I won't interfere with the matters that you're handling. You can decide on the date and time by yourself since there are plenty of free broadcast time slots at Department 14. You can just choose any time slot from Monday to Sunday. As long as you feel that it's all right, then it's settled. There's no need to ask me. With that, it was now Zhong Yi's turn to be taken aback. Thank you. Yang Tianfei chuckled, we are different from Department 1. This is just a small office. As a famous program planner, executive director, and host in the country, we can't be any happier that you are here with us now. We won't limit you in doing anything. As long as you feel it's okay, then anything is fine. I'll let you have absolute freedom and authority on handling that matter, so you can do whatever you like and it doesn't matter how the viewership ratings turn out either. They supported him with the money, they supported him with the manpower, he could do whatever he liked, and there was no need to ensure a good viewership rating, even for Zhong Yi, this was the first time that he had come across such a department. Naturally, Zhong Yi felt very grateful to Yang Qianfei, as he knew this was because Yang Qianfei respected and trusted him. Zhong Yi said, Director Yang. Yang Qianfei gave a wave of his hand. I don't have that many rules here, since I call you little Zhong, then you can just address me as old Yang. Sure. Zhong Yi had to be worthy of his respect so he said, don't worry, I'll definitely do a good job on this show. Back in his own office. The empty Section 3 office space at Department 14 already had its new nameplate hung on the door and on it were the words of, a Bite of China program team. The people inside were excited and the twenty-odd staff were discussing in low whispers. Just look at how fast the news had spread. Zhong Yi was only at Old Yang's office for ten minutes, but everyone already found out about it. Little Wang was stomping around anxiously. Director Zhong really wants to compete with them? Tong Fu pulled a long face. I can't imagine how embarrassing it'll turn out to be when the viewership ratings are out. All the staff throughout Central TV are discussing this matter now. All the people are waiting to watch the fun, no, waiting to see us make a fool of ourselves. Huang Dandan smiled wryly. 
how could our documentary possibly verse their variety show? Moreover, it's even a large-scale singing talent show with big-shot celebrities like Hua Dongfang, Fan Wenli, and Shen Lili. There's no way we can compete with them. We're only making a traditional documentary. Ha Chichi remained silent for a long time. Zhong Yi came back to the office and said, Why are you all here? Seeing him, everyone hastily stopped their discussions and did not say another word. Zhong Yi asked curious, Didn't I already say that you guys can have a few days of rest? I can handle the rest of the work here and you can rest well. Zhongzhu replied, If you're not resting, then neither should we. Ha Chichi responded, We can't let you do all the work. Wu Yi spoke, we'll all rest together after the documentary's post-production has been completed. Everyone had gone through thick and thin together since they were on The Voice, so they had a mutual understanding of one another. That was why everyone came back to work without exception. Even those that had returned on the same flight as Zhong Yi in the morning also came back after having their lunch. Zhong Yi felt quite touched. All right then, let's make our final push and complete everything. After a pause, he continued, I want to tell you guys something which I think everyone already knows about it. I just reported to Director Yang that our documentary will start broadcasting on December 10th. There's only two weeks left, so we must do our best to quickly finish up and send it for approval. Little Wang, who looked like she was either crying or laughing, asked, Director Zhong, are we really going to compete with Rise to the Dance? Zhong Yi smiled and said, how would we know if we don't give it a try? Little Wang claimed anxiously, but we shouldn't even be trying. We're only making a documentary here, how? Even if we changed it to another broadcast time, so what? Zhong Yi declared, everyone should not feel pressured by this. What's the difference between broadcasting on that day and on a different day? We might as well take advantage of Rise to the Dance's popularity and let them help us promote our documentary for free. We won't even have to spend any money on that. When they thought about it, it was indeed as he said. Even if they avoided the broadcast time of Rise to the Dance, there would still not be much of an audience who would watch their documentary, so there wasn't going to be too much of a difference in the end. Following that, Zhong Yi started to assign the tasks. He did not idle around either and started to make some phone calls. The first call, hello, Director Chu. I finally managed to reach you. Teacher Zhong, hello, I was in a meeting earlier. I'm doing a show now which I think you might have heard of. I know, it's a documentary. Look, we had a very good working relationship previously with the second tier ads on The Voice and you also know my character now. We definitely won't disappoint you with this show, but for now, we still do not have a title sponsor yet, would you, Aya, I'm sorry, Teacher Jong. Recently, our budget is really low and we really can't afford to fork out any. We're making a documentary on food which is very suited to the branding of your winery. We really do not have enough money. Perhaps next time. Next time, we'll definitely cooperate with you again. The second phone call, hello, Boss Ju, it's me. Director Zhong, it's been a long time. I've just finished a documentary, so about the ads, your fruit juice product, Director Zhong, let me be frank with you. If you were making a variety show, even if it were a talk show, I would definitely be fighting to be your title sponsor. But now, it's a documentary you're making, and that basically has no commercial value in it and the viewership ratings are also poor. So then, I'm really sorry about this. The viewership ratings will definitely be much higher than what you would expect. Maybe next time, when you're making a variety show again, I'll definitely be the first one to look for you. I'll even invest 50 million renminbi on it. A few phone calls later, he received no favorable responses. Zhong Yi was feeling helpless. Those businessmen were too short-sighted. Ha Chichi also came back from making some calls. Director Zhong, I've had no success at all. I've checked with seven, eight food and beverage-related companies and none of them were interested in buying our advertisement slots. Only one company was slightly interested but when they heard that we wouldn't be inserting ads inside the actual documentary, they also rejected it. Zhong Yi explained, we're not doing a variety show this time, so the actual documentary has to be cleanly presented. Otherwise, it'll affect the overall quality of the documentary. That's why we're only selling the title sponsorships and advertisements outside of the actual documentary. 
Ha Chichi sighed, then it'll be even less attractive. I also discussed with some online video hosting sites regarding the online exclusive broadcast rights. They were very interested in cooperating with us, but the price offers were very low and almost negligible. It'd be as good as giving it to them for free. Forget it, I was already mentally prepared for this outcome. Zhong Yi said, we'll just go ahead without the advertisements then. We'll talk about it again after the show is broadcast. The program team felt that director Zhong was being too positive. For the past few decades, there were almost no documentaries in the entire country that earned any money, much less earning from advertising fees. This felt like idiotic nonsense. Selling advertisements. Following the variety show style of simulcast over the internet? And even thinking of competing with Rise to the Dance by broadcasting at the same time slot? No one on the program team knew what Zhong Yi was thinking about. They were just an unloved and uncared for traditional documentary and yet he wanted to do it like how variety shows were done. Zhong Yi did not bother to explain it to anyone. If no one wanted to take up the advertisement slots, so be it. He immediately moved on to the next step and arranged for the art designers to create some publicity posters for a bite of China, then led a group of people to edit the documentary. They took an hour before finally ending up with three-minute trailer, or you could call it a promotional video too. Once the music and voiceover was added, it would be ready for release. The background music was a huge task and it was even more troublesome than Zhong Yi doing the narration by himself. Hence, he handed this job to around eight staff members and let them handle it. If they really could not manage, they could also choose to spend some money to hire someone from a music company to do it for them. Zhong Yi still knew a few people in the music industry who could help them out. Their program team still had some money left over which should be enough to cover those costs. As for the editing and narration work, they were entirely Zhong Yi's tasks to handle. The others could do little for him here as they wouldn't be able to help him out essentially. The work started. Director Zhong, I've completed it. That won't do, make it a little more detailed. Director Zhong, is this poster okay? No, it looks too plain. It only depicts the scenes of some farmers working in the field? This looks too monotonous. Ah, uh, but our documentary is a food show that introduces different foods and cuisines, this, even if it's a food show, we still have to bring out the artistic atmosphere of it. Especially the cover poster. It has to be more outstanding. Why don't we do this? Change all the rice in these paddy fields into the shapes of calligraphy writings. Calligraphy? Yes. Replace the paddy fields with calligraphy. When seen from far, they look like paddy fields, but when viewed up close, the farmers are actually planting calligraphic words in the fields. Oh right, create a few more posters. For example, piping hot rice dumplings. Make them look like it's in the shape of a mountain and place two real mountains beside it to further enhance that effect. Wow, this idea is so awesome. Yeah, the atmosphere is brought out immediately. Director Zhong is truly a professional. Isn't that nonsense? Director Zhong has been making advertisements since a long time ago. Which advertisement made by Director Zhong isn't known by all? In the aspect of publicity, no one can compete with us. Even if we're not making a variety show, but a documentary instead, our starving camel is still bigger than a horse. Immediately, the program team of A Bite of China went into full swing. Chapter 805, The Unveiling of A Bite of China. That night. The program team of Rise to the Dance called a press conference. At the press conference, large publicity posters were put up all over the venue. Promotional catchphrases and posters could be seen everywhere as the organizers and related staff members of the program team were in attendance, including Hua Dongfang, Fan Wenli, Shen Lili, who were the big-name guest coaches. They all sat with executive director Xu Yipeng and assistant director come host, Chen Yi, at a row of tables behind the stage facing over 40 reporters of the media from the newspapers and the television stations. The promotional video was played at the beginning of the press conference. Then, Xu Yipeng, Chen Yi, and the three guest coaches shared some anecdotes of this afternoon's recording. Finally, it was time for the question and answer session for the reporters. A male reporter raised his hand and asked, 
director Xu, Rise to the Dance has already moved into the recording phase now and everyone is very concerned about the broadcast date. Xu Yiping answered, the date has already been set for Friday, December 10th at 8 p.m. Everyone, please look forward to it then. A female reporter asked, sect leader Huai, you've been involved in filming for the past two years and have hardly appeared in any variety shows at all. Regarding your participation in Rise to the Dance this time, what are your thoughts about this talent show? How do you feel after today's first recording of the show? Hua Dongfang smiled and answered, if I have to describe it, then it has to be with the word, surprised. I won't be revealing the details of today's recording for now, so everyone can find out what I mean on December 10th. I believe you'll also be surprised by it. Oh right, there's also a scene of me battling it out on the dance floor with teacher Wenli. That's a must-see. Fan Wenli also grinned at that. At the beginning, the questions were all the usual ones, but at some point in time, the pulse of the press conference changed. A random reporter suddenly asked, according to an anonymous source, the production phase of Rise to the Dance hasn't been smooth at all. There were many issues that happened since the beginning, like problems with the venue, and an incident where the staff made a mistake and caused a mishap while setting up the stage. What I am trying to ask is, ever since teacher Zhong Yi left Central TV Department 1, has that greatly affected everyone? If it were Zhong Yi serving as the program's producer and director, the production phase would probably have gone much smoother, right? Chen Yi frowned. Shen Lili also looked quite uncomfortable with the question. What were they driving at? Did you mean that without Zhong Yi we couldn't make the show? Actually, that reporter's question wasn't unreasonable as the show was really hampered by a lot of oversight and problems. Xu Yiping and Chen Yi, as well as most of the entire program team, were handling such a large-scale talent show for the first time. The difference between a 10 million and 100 million production cost show was not just in the amount of money, the nature of the show was totally different as well. Xu Yiping, Chen Yi, and the rest did not have any experience in this area so they took many day tours and made a lot of mistakes in the course of the production. Xu Yiping looked at that reporter and said, I do not need to talk about teacher Zhong's experience and results in the field of entertainment shows. His departure is indeed a pity, but that was arranged by the station and the leaders definitely had their considerations before doing so. Since I have agreed to take on this project, I will certainly give my all and do a good job. Moreover, the preparation of a show in its production phase is surely not going to be smooth sailing. Even if there were some problems, that wasn't unexpected and shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Haha, <laughs> even though my experience is in directing galas, I am no stranger to variety shows either. On top of all that, I have a group of elite staff supporting me, so as to how the show turns out, everyone will find out when it begins its broadcast. Another reporter asked, what is the targeted viewership rating you have for Rise to the Dance? Xu Yiping answered, ha ha, of course the higher the better. A middle-aged female reporter asked, we heard that teacher Zhong Yi is also launching a documentary over at Department 14. Can you tell us what your views are on that? Xu Yiping gave her a glance. Is that so? I didn't pay much attention to that I guess. The female reporter asked, you mean you did not know what your competitors are up to? Hearing that, Chen Yi interjected, our competitors are the other variety shows at the same time slot, and even those variety shows that air at different times. But a documentary does not fall under our area of observation. When Fan Wenli heard this, she gave a look to Chen Yi but did not say anything. Many of the reporters understood the meaning of those words. This was issuing a letter of challenge. Not only was it a challenge to all the variety shows in the country, the scornful attitude towards Zhong Yi was also very obvious. He basically did not have Zhong Yi and his documentary in his sights. Suddenly, Xu Yiping dropped another bombshell. I would like to make use of this opportunity to announce something. The exclusive title sponsorship for Rise to the Dance has already been sold to Chu and her mineral water. As for the exact title sponsorship fee, Xu Yiping did not mention it. But after the press conference ended, there were still some reporters who managed to get hold of the accurate figures for it. Chu and her mineral water had actually paid 100 million renminbi for the title sponsorship. It was the same amount as the Voice's title sponsorship fee. Online. Many netizens were in an uproar. 100 million in title sponsorship fees? Damn it, why so much? 
I thought it would only get 50 million at most. Didn't they already agree on the title sponsorship with another sponsor earlier? Why did it change? So there are really companies willing to spend 100 million on Rise to the Dance for its exclusive title sponsorship? It's exactly the same amount as The Voice's title sponsorship fee. Do you all think that Rise to the Dance can really surpass The Voice? I don't know, but judging from this momentum, Rise to the Dance is going really aggressively for that. How incredible! Another 100 million renminbi title sponsorship fee has appeared in the country. In the future, could a 100 million title sponsorship fee become the criteria that will differentiate a normal variety show from a phenomenal variety show? This is explosive news. Rise to the Dance is really going for it. With this momentum, I doubt anyone can stop them. The news and Weibo were once again filled with topics about Rise to the Dance. At Central TV Department 14. Many of those who were working overtime were shocked when they heard this news. Zhongzhua was in disbelief. A 100 million renminbi title sponsorship? How could it be that much? Little Wang said jealously, how can that lousy show be worth 100 million? Tong Fu seethed, by spending so much on advertising, can they even recoup it? If the advertisers are willing to spend that amount of money, Ha Chichi said while shaking her head, who are we to say anything? Just continue with your work. After all, no matter what Central TV Department 1 does is none of our business. Even if Rise to the Dance were to keep up or increase their efforts to stay in the news, it has nothing to do with us. Jongswa gave a wry smile. Who says it has nothing to do with us? Did you forget when our broadcast is? Ha Chichi sighed. At this moment, Zhong Yi came back from the recording studio and told everyone, the promo video has been edited and the narration has been recorded as well. Get a few people working on it today to get it published online and send it out internally within Department 14. Oh right, add in the broadcast date and time as well. We can get started on the mass publicity already. Buying ad spots, employing a shill army, all these were part and parcel of a show's promotional activities. Ha Chichi immediately reported to Zhong Yi about the situation regarding Rise to the Dance. When he heard about their astronomical title sponsorship fee, Zhong Yi remarked without even frowning, OK, I got it. Let's just hurry up and do our work first, who cares what they do? Ah. Understood. Everyone immediately began working on the promotional video. Of course, all of them first sat down together to watch the promotional video once. All of the footage and editing was done by Zhong Yi and decided by him alone, so no one actually had any idea of how the promotional video would look since they hadn't seen it before. In their minds, this was just going to be a traditional documentary without anything interesting to look forward to. But when the edited promotional video that was only a few minutes long played out in front of their eyes, they were all rather stunned. The paddy growing in the fields. The pine mushrooms that were found in the mountains. The plates of cuisine emanating steaming hot vapor. All those images left them in a kind of daze. Eh? That's not right. Was this footage taken by us? Uh, did we really shoot that? Why do I find it strangely unfamiliar? I know this shot. Wasn't it the one that I took at the foot of the mountain where the big rock was at? Did that place look so beautiful? Why are all the scenes done in close-ups? They're all features shots. It can even be edited in this manner? Is this what an HD video camera can do? Damn. Can this footage be any clearer? I can even see the shimmer when the heat rises. I can also see the wings of the little bug that flew past the pine mushroom perfectly. Why does it feel so different from the other documentaries that we've seen before? Yeah, this. At this moment, everyone in the program team realized for the first time that the footage that they had spent two months filming were truly very different from the other traditional documentaries. As for whether it was better or worse than those other documentaries, they all did not know, since when it came to documentaries, there had never been a special rule for success. Since director Zhong had edited it this way, they would just follow his instructions and publish or send it out as it is. Upload it online. Contact the advertising department. Follow through with Department 14's broadcasting section. All at once, a bite of China had its posters and promo clip put out onto the market. 
This was also the moment that a bite of China was unveiled in this world for the first time. Chapter 806, Waiting to Make a Fool of Someone At night. At Yang Tianfei's house. A bite of China's promo clip appeared on Yang Tianfei's computer screen all of a sudden. He did not watch this clip on the internet. Rather, it was sent to him by the program team of A Bite of China. Although Old Yang had said that Zhong Yi could make all decisions on the show by himself, Zhong Yi couldn't just leave it at that. What the leader said was his business, but when it came down to it, Zhong Yi still preferred to get official instructions. When the clip ended, Yang Tianfei watched it again. Not long after, he watched it for the third time and he occasionally frowned, at times feeling doubtful. A middle-aged woman called out from the living room. It sounded like she was nagging him. What are you doing, old Yang? Why aren't you coming out for dinner? Yang Tianfei replied, I'll come out in a while. The door opened and his wife entered the room. What are you watching? Yang Tianfei answered in an odd manner, it's the promotional video of our documentary. The documentary that was made by Zhong Yi. His wife asked, is it good? Yang Tianfei hesitated for a while, then said as he shook his head, I'm not sure. Anyway, this documentary is quite different from what we've imagined. In the past, no one has actually shot a documentary this way before. His wife remarked, no matter how he films it, it's still a documentary. Don't tell me that he can make a documentary that is like a variety show. Upon hearing his wife saying that, Yang Tianfei couldn't help but sigh. He can already produce such a good documentary on his first time directing it. Hi, with little Zhong's directing abilities, it is indeed a pity that he came to our department. Those bunch of idiots at Central TV Department 1 have really wasted his talents. Central TV Department 1. A lot of people left work late because of the rise to the dance press conference. In the conference room, after some of them had finished discussing matters related to rise to the dance, the promotional video of a bite of China coincidentally made its appearance on the internet as well. A. Eh? They've released the promo video? Play it and let's have a look. Yeah, play it. I'm also interested to see what they have been busy shooting for the past two months. They played the video and projected it onto the big screen in the conference room. Some of them frowned. A, this doesn't feel like a traditional way of shooting a documentary? Another person said in surprise, when did Zhong Yi possess such a level of skill in editing and control of the imagery? Other than variety shows, he also knows how to make a documentary? Looking at the way it is presented, how can this person be a broadcasting graduate? It wouldn't be too far-fetched to claim that he is directing graduate instead. I is this really his first time shooting a documentary? That's right. Was this really his first time shooting a documentary? Everyone had the same question on their minds. The people present were also fellow professionals, so their judgment was naturally different from others. From just a few scenes, they could already see the standard of this director. Some of them even thought that if Rise to the Dance were given to Zhong Yi from the start, it might have been more suitable than getting Xu Yipeng and Chen Yi to handle it. Even if they knew that Xu Yipeng was capable, even if Xu Yipeng tried his best to prove this point at the press conference earlier, it could not change the judgment of some people regarding the difference in directing ability of Zhong Yi and Xu Yipeng. It was because Xu Yipeng's directing ability at variety shows was still unknown and uncertain. But Zhong Yi did not need to prove anything anymore because everyone knew very well that Zhong Yi was the executive director of the top-rated show in viewership in the variety world. However, Jiang Yuan shook his head and commented, this is just playing to the gallery. The only differences from a traditional documentary are the usage of HD equipment and giving the subjects a close-up framing, and doing more long takes. Yes, it is indeed as director Jiang has said. No matter how beautiful the imagery is, this is still just a documentary. Even if he can film the cuisine and present it attractively on screen, it's still useless. This was also the first time that they were seeing the true face of Zhong Yi's documentary. They had no choice but to admit that it was indeed different from what they had expected. However, even if it varied a lot from their expectations, from the day that Zhong Yi left Central TV Department 1 and transferred to Department 14, no one ever treated Zhong Yi as a competitor anymore. Zhong Yi has already gone to an obscure documentary channel with the lowest viewership ratings at Central TV. 
from that moment, Zhong Yi had already lost the right to compete with them. This applied all the same even though he was the best variety show director in the industry. In the program team office of Rise to the Dance. Everyone was curiously watching the promotional video of Department 14. Xu Yiping smiled and said, it's nothing much. After watching it, Chen Yi said, I thought they could do something entirely new with the documentary, but even if the shooting techniques used are different, even if they use HD video cameras, it's still nothing but a documentary. Previously, some of them were worried that Zhong Yi would spend a lot of money to invite some celebrities to lend their support by helping to create a style, similar to a variety show. But now, they realized they had thought too much. Zhong Yi was truly shooting a documentary, and no matter how different this documentary looked from the others, a documentary was still a documentary. It wasn't something that was worthy of all that attention. Meanwhile, on the internet, many netizens also watched the promotional video of A Bite of China. What? Well, Zhong Yi's documentary is here. Teacher Zhong has already disappeared for two months. I've almost forgotten about that esteemed person. Zhong Yi is back. Holy shit, he really went to make a documentary? I thought those were just rumors. He really went and did it. There, isn't the new show that's almost out a bite of China? The title is so weird. It doesn't sound too interesting. I think it's good and very beautifully shot as well. The imagery is really clear. Was this shot on HD video cameras? There's even someone who would use HD equipment to shoot a documentary. What a reckless waste of the equipment. I guess it's okay. I don't know much about documentaries, so I can't tell the difference between what it's nice and what's not, because who would have the time to watch a documentary? But since this is a work by Zhong Yi, no matter how uninteresting it is, I will definitely still give it a watch. If it were filmed by other people, I wouldn't even take a look. That's right. I'll definitely watch Zhong Yi's new show, but I'm not expecting much. I'm not going to watch it as I still prefer watching variety shows. Recently, I've been looking forward to Rise to the Dance. Sect leader Huo will finally be making a rare appearance on screen as a guest coach. The facts had proven before that Zhong Yi's fan base was pretty massive. Even if he had disappeared for a full two months, even if no one usually paid any attention to documentaries, once the promotion for A Bite of China was released, everyone would still immediately discuss it eagerly. This was the influence of a B-list celebrity, not to mention that Zhong Yi was also not just an ordinary B-list celebrity. With his legendary feats, even the current first place of the B-list celebrity rankings could not compare with him. Yao Jiansai helped to forward it. Dong Shanshan liked it on Weibo. A portion of those currently popular contestants of The Voice who were groomed to fame by Zhong Yi also forwarded it in succession. If not for Zhong Yi falling out with Central TV Department 1, leading to many public figures having concerns about that, there would be definitely many more people giving their likes. Of course, Fan Wenli was not one of those who had any concerns. She did not seem to be bothered that she was currently working together with Central TV Department 1 and gave her well wishes as well. Hope you can continue to create another glorious achievement. The netizens actively commented. A. Continue to create another glorious achievement? Teacher Fan is really humorous. That's right. This time he really won't be able to continue his legend any longer. Teacher Zhong's glorious achievement was getting 2% of the nationwide viewership ratings. But Teacher Zhong only has a documentary as his trump card now, so how is he going to have any glorious achievements with that? But Sister Fan is really terrific. Although she is currently working with Central TV Department 1, she did not forget to give her well wishes to Director Zhong. Here's a like for you. Teacher Fan is such a loyal friend. Unlike some of the contestants of The Voice. Even though Director Zhong was the one who groomed them, when they heard that Director Zhong and Central TV were stuck in a deadlock, they immediately pretended not to know him. What's with that? We can't blame them. After all, Central TV Department 1 is in the favorable position. Director Zhong is really being forced to his limits. At this moment, the first promotional poster of A Bite of China was released. When the netizens saw the poster, they started heaping praise on it and felt that it had an artistic feel. Then, when they noticed the words on the poster, they were stunned. What's this? Is this for real? 
Besides the advertising slogan on the poster, there was a sentence in small black words, see you on December 10th at 8 p.m. On the 10th? 8 p.m.? I'm gonna faint. Why does it look kinda familiar? Isn't that the fucking broadcast time of Rise to the Dance? Damn it! A bite of China is going to compete with Rise to the Dance. Zhong Yi is picking a fight with Central TV Department 1 again. Can someone tell me that this is not true? What? Director Zhong must have gone crazy. Zhong Yi just returned to Beijing, right? He already stirring up trouble right after getting back. This is definitely Zhong Yi style. This is just like in the past. Does he intend to go on a face-smacking spree again? The title of face-smacking Zhong is not for nothing. Fuck, face-smacking my ass. The broadcast is at the same time? Isn't he just sending himself to their doorsteps and letting them smack his face? Indeed, what is director Zhong thinking? How can a documentary possibly beat a variety show? Are we overthinking it? Maybe he does not have such an intention? Maybe it's just a coincidence? How can there be such a coincidence? Zhong Yi's fans were stunned. The netizens observing the commotion were also stunned. When this news got out, the topic immediately received a lot of attention and was constantly being spread. Zhong Yi's cell phone started ringing. It was the shocked voice of Hu Fei. Little Zhong, what are you trying to do? Zhong Yi laughed and said, I'm not trying to do anything. Hu Fei wondered, if you weren't trying to do anything, why would you want to broadcast the documentary at the same time Slotters rise to the dance? Zhong Yi said amused, then what do you think I'm trying to do? Hu Fei replied, how would I know what you are trying to do? Not long after, a call from Dong Shan Shan arrived. Dong Shan Shan immediately asked when the call connected, old classmate, what is the meaning of all this? I don't mean anything, Zhong Yi answered while laughing. After a short silence, as though she had considered for a long while, Dong Shan Shan said, you better not tell me that you want to compete for a higher viewership rating than Rise to the Dance. Zhong Yi did not answer directly. What do you think? Dong Shan Shan repeated, how would I know what you're thinking? Don't tell me it's just a coincidence. Zhong Yi laughed heartily at that. Yes, it's just a coincidence. Dong Shan Shan stated, both the date and time of the premiere are just a coincidence. Who would believe that? In any case, it didn't matter what was said anymore. The date was already set and that was something that no one could change. The internet had a field day. Discussions were going on all across the industry. Some were mocking Zhong Yi for being overconfident, some were gloating and waiting to see the fun. It seemed like the entire world was waiting for Zhong Yi and Central TV Documentary Channel to make a fool of themselves. Chapter 807, Who Can Stop Me? The next day. The list of a bite of China's production team was published. Executive Producer, Zhong Yi. Executive Director, Zhong Yi. Overall Planner, Zhong Yi. Narrator, Zhong Yi. Assistant Directors, Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui. Videographers, Zhong Yi, Xu Han, Li Guadao, Jingxia, Huang Danden. Editor, Zhong Yi. And so on. It was just like before. Many of the netizens were already used to seeing a list like that. Every time Zhong Yi made a show, his name would be credited for the positions of executive producer, director, overall planner, editor, etc. In the industry, this was no longer something new and Zhong Yi had always been doing it this way. However, it was even more this time, as Zhong Yi even took on the position of a videographer. However, that was also understandable since the essence of a documentary depended on the way it was filmed. For such an important position, Zhong Yi couldn't be sloppy about it. What was this called? Some people would say that he was a show-off, but more people referred to it as him being amazing. It seemed like this fellow was qualified for every damn position available in a show's production. He could take on all of the positions. If it were anyone else, who could do something like that? Even if they had the technical skills to do so, they wouldn't have the energy to do everything. Online. The commotion was still continuing on Weibo. A lot of people were still unable to accept this bombshell from yesterday. The main issue was that no one could understand what Zhong Yi's considerations were. 
Everything that Zhong Yi did up until now had left the people and the entire industry confused, with no one able to comprehend his motives. Why is that so? Does he really intend to use a documentary to verse a variety show? In the entire entertainment circle, no one is more daring than Zhong Yi. It's pointless to argue over this now. Let's just wait for the outcome. But do we even need to wait for the outcome to know what the results are? Yeah, it's obvious that he won't win. With Rise to the Dance already so popular, everyone else is trying to avoid it. Didn't you guys see how several of those satellite channels made changes to the broadcast time of some of their new blockbuster shows? Some were rescheduled from Friday to Saturday, while some of those which were still scheduled for Friday had their times changed from 8 pm to 9.30 pm. But what about Zhong Yi? Not only does he not avoid it, he's even walking into the direct line of fire. That's why he's called Zhong Yi. He definitely deserves the reputation of being a wonder of the entertainment circle. The news in the media were also reporting non-stop about this. Zhong Yi declares war on Central TV Department 1 again. Deliberate or just a coincidence? A clash of broadcast schedule for a bite of China and rise to the dance. The first documentary to be filmed in HD is coming soon. Rise to the Dance's press conference, Rise to the Dance does not consider Zhong Yi and his documentary as competitors. Broadcast schedule clash could just be a coincidence. A documentary does not use viewership ratings to determine if it is good or bad. Comparisons should only be made with past documentaries, not against the viewership ratings of a variety show. Broadcast schedule might turn out to be a promotional strategy by Zhong Yi. A 10 million renminbi documentary, is it really worth that price? In the past days, disregarding other promotional activities related to music, concerts, movies, etc., the television show mentioned the most was Rise to the Dance in the news headlines and discussions. There was basically an overwhelming coverage on it, and one of the rare variety shows to be so heatedly discussed before it even started broadcasting. It was getting more attention than when The Voice had not broadcast yet, with little to no negative news about it. Of all the new shows on the satellite channels and old shows that had aired before in the entire country, none of them could be compared to this. But right now, with Zhong Yi's popularity and the heavy promotions of A Bite of China, their show had also started to hold down a place of its own on the news headlines. Although the coverage was much less than for Rise to the Dance, but when compared to other unloved and uncared for documentaries, a bite of China's build-up was already considered to be very good. Central TV Department 14 Inside a work area, Zhong Yi was doing an audio recording. The geography of China is very diverse, so people living in different areas enjoy different staple foods. Staple foods not only provide calories, but also affect people's feelings towards the seasons, enabling them to lead a rich, healthy, and interesting life. Shanxi, Chen Village, in an old village. The women are the best at making bread and pasta. After grain has been ground into powder, it is known as flour. In the soundproofed studio, Zhong Yi instinctively did the narration line by line for the already edited video with meticulous attention. His speaking tone was also very steady and mature, and one could easily hear that he had purposely lowered his tone while speaking to bring out the depth of his voice to match the imagery on screen. Those who knew Zhong Yi would know that his hosting style in the past was not like that. Comparatively, Zhong Yi used to present in a much lighter style with his language and voice, not forgetting his humor and crazy reciting speed. Even during the recording of an educational program like Lecture Room, he did not show this steady style of presenting with his voice. The reason was simple. Because one should always use different styles for different types of shows. This was the most basic lesson and technique that Zhong Yi learned when he was still at Media College. A variety show? You'd have to be humorous. A talent show? You'd have to be enthusiastic. An interview? You'd have to be on point for the subject. Naturally, documentaries also had their own style. As different documentaries required different styles in handling too, Zhong Yi adopted this voice and tone to deliver the narration in its original form from his previous world's version of A Bite of China. Being a professional broadcast host, Zhong Yi also felt that this style was the overall most suitable way to bring out the essence of a show like A Bite of China. If he were to stick to using his most adept, humorous style for the narrative work, it could still be done, 
but that would totally steal the show away and was not what the documentary was about. He finished recording the voiceover for three episodes in one session. Finally, after some editing, the three episodes were more or less completed. Looking at the time, it was about time for lunch. Zhong Yi came out from the soundproofed studio and went back to his own office. Everyone was busy with their work and none of them went for an early lunch. Ha Chichi immediately reported, Director Zhong, we have already gone ahead with the schedule for the promotions and started on our advertising campaign as well. How are the effects? Zhong Yi asked. Ha Chichi nodded. It's doing all right. For our promotions on Weibo, the popularity of the post has already passed 10,000, with over 2,000 forwards which is still increasing by the moment. Zhong Yi asked, what about the online video hosting sites? Ha Chichi replied, we've already scheduled for our ads to run on their platforms. Very good. Zhong Yi said, just keep up the intensity of the promotions. I understand. But the problem is that our production budget is getting low, so the advertising campaign might not be able to cover all our identified platforms, Ha Chichi hesitated. After they returned to Beijing, there wasn't much left of the 10 million renminbi that Director Yang had allocated to them. The spending for the first day of promotions practically emptied everything they had left, but there was no limit to how much they could spend when it came to such promotions. Zhong Yi acknowledged, I've already spoken to Director Yang about this. Regarding the production budget, the department will disperse to us another sum of money which should be enough for us to continue our promotions into December. Since we're doing a documentary, we won't have to advertise all over the place like how they do for a variety show, and there's no need to do that either. It'll be good enough if we just do it according to the intensity that I planned. But suddenly, Yang Tianfei's secretary hastily walked into their office with a terrible look. Director Zhong, the secretary cried. Zhong Yi was taken aback and had an ominous feeling. What's the matter? The secretary said with a darkened expression. Director Yang wants me to let you know that the promotional budget he had wanted to set aside for you has gone up in smoke. Gone up in smoke? Zhong Yi did not understand why that had happened. The other staff of a Bite of China's program team all looked over. What happened? Why is that so? Didn't Director Yang ask us to spend all of the 10 million earlier? That's why we don't have any budget left. If the publicity goes up in smoke, how are we going to promote our show? How are we going to be able to broadcast our show? Everyone knew the importance of promotional activities. That was why when everyone heard this, they started panicking. The secretary said, it's not that Director Yang doesn't want to allocate the funds to you all, but our department only has enough money left to keep it running normally, so there's no excess money that can be used. It was just a while ago when Director Yang was called over to meet the station head. After that, without Director Yang's consent, they channeled all of our department's money away to Central TV Department 1 on the guise that this money is loaned to them. They're doing this because Rise to the Dance's promotional budget has run out. Zhang Zhuo banged his hand on the table and stood up. Even if they don't have enough money, what right do they have to take our money away? Little Wang cried out, fuck that. Tong Fu was also very angry. Is isn't he that as good as bullying us? The secretary took a deep breath and said sternly, two months ago, the station head spoke to Director Yang regarding this matter, but Director Yang did not agree to it. Instead, he transferred 85% of our department's budget, which was that 10 million renminbi, to your program team, because Director Yang did not want to lend that money to Central TV Department 1. However, he thought that after spending the 10 million, the station would just give up on the idea, but who could have expected that they would still channel it away like they did a while ago? The only money that we had left was around 1 million renminbi, but even that is gone now. The station head said that Central TV Department 1 will return the money to us in some days, but we all know that's not going to happen. The money that the station acted as guarantor for Central TV Department 1 two years ago has not even been returned yet. Huang Danden was already trembling. The station heads are treating them so well, it's so unfair. Wu Yi said furiously, this is no longer just about playing favorites. Everyone's hearts turned cold. Upstairs. At that same office. It was still that same deputy station head. Old Yang, what's with this attitude? Does the station think that we're easy to push around? 
you're all sister channels. What's wrong with loaning some money to them? It's not as though they won't be returning it to you. With me as their guarantor, what are you scared of? When the copyrights of Rise to the Dance get sold, the money will come trickling back in. At that time, I will make sure that the money that Central TV Department 1 loaned from you two years ago is returned as well. It's only around a million RMB, so please think of the bigger picture. Even if their show needs to carry out promotions, what about ours? A Bite of China is starting its broadcast soon. We also need that money to do our promotions. But now, you aren't even leaving 100,000 renminbi for us. Don't talk to me about that, old Yang. Do you think I don't know what you were thinking when you allocated that 10 million to Zhong Yi's program team? A documentary that costs 10 million to produce, tell me, are you crazy or what? Zhong Yi's a crazy man. Are you going to follow along and be crazy as well? You still dare to talk about promotional activities? You can just do the advertising on your own channel to introduce the show, no? Do you have to advertise with external parties and waste that money? Does a documentary need all that? With 10 million renminbi, we could have done dozens of documentaries with that amount of money. But it was all wasted by you on one documentary. Can you even recoup the cost of it? How are you going to make up for this loss of 10 million renminbi? The money belongs to our department. Do you mean to say that I don't have any rights to authorize the usage of it? There's still no one who would waste that money like how you did. How much money can a documentary earn? By spending 10 million renminbi on it, you won't even be able to make back 100,000. The money that you lose is still the station's money in the end. You're already a veteran here. Why do you keep making such mistakes? Rise to the Dance is our blockbuster show of the year, it has to do with the station's strategic plans for the future, so we can't afford to mess it up. Now that they have a shortage of funds, you guys should be supporting them instead. The 10 million renminbi that you wasted on a worthless documentary will be overlooked by the station for now. Whose decision was this? It was my decision, and also the station's decision. Yang Qianfei bristled with rage at that. Central TV Department 1 in the program team office of Rise to the Dance. Jiang Yuan had come to look for Xu Yiping and Chen Yi. We've managed to secure the additional funds for you too. But it's not much, just around a million, so make do with it for now. Xu Yiping said, that's already enough. Thank you, Director Jiang. Chen Yi sighed. If the stage didn't get destroyed back then, we wouldn't have needed this amount of money. Jiang Yuan laughed, it's all right. Accidents happen, but as long as the results are good, everything will be fine. We'll only look at how the show does, same for the station. This one million renminbi was borrowed from Department 14. I heard that the station emptied their accounts and budget which was initially planned to be used on a bite of China's promotions. You guys should know how much support our department and station are giving to you. We're sparing no effort, so don't disappoint us. Xu Yiping laughed, don't worry. It'll definitely be perfect. Chen Yi also said confidently, we're planning to surpass the viewership ratings of The Voice. That's great then. Jiang Yuan was very satisfied to hear that and also looking forward to it. With that, a hubbub spread throughout the station. Everyone knew that Central TV Department 1 had run out of money for some time now. They hadn't produced too many good shows in recent years, and even those shows which fared well did not earn much. They only survived for so long because of the production budget assigned to them. Only The Voice did rather well this year, but under all that glory and achievement, it did not earn them much money. A 100 million renminbi in title sponsorship fee? It was all invested back into the show by John Yi. The fees from the remaining second-tier advertisements, exclusive broadcast copyright, etc., were the only net income for them. As for the overseas copyright? And all other copyrights? Those were all held by Zhong Yi. The reason that they were summoned to court for a lawsuit was also due to the issues involving the copyright dispute, thus leaving Central TV Department 1 almost without any profits. That was also the reason they fell out with Zhong Yi, they tried to take the copyright away from him. Now, the invested amount into Rise to the Dance was even greater than they had put into The Voice. Together with the incident where the stage was destroyed, it left them with an even greater deficit. 
However, no one could have expected that at such a time, the station would still help Central TV Department 1 and ask for money from Central TV Department 14. Although the documentary channel's viewership ratings were very poor and ranked last among all the departments of Central TV, but similarly, the funding allocated to them was also the least. Moreover, a bite of China was already done with the production phase, so it needed the money to do their promotional activities, yet the station forcefully channeled their funds away. To allocate it to Central TV Department 1? A lot of people in the station were bitterly disappointed at this. The station's behavior in recent years is getting weirder and weirder. Yeah, what is this? I don't like Zhong Yi's temperament either, but the station is really too much of a bully, aren't they? Yeah, Zhong Yi might be quite the bastard, but he'd still contributed a lot to Central TV Department 1 before. The contract was already discussed and agreed on, but not only did Central TV Department 1 go back on their words and try to snatch Zhong Yi's copyrights away, they even tried to freeze him. They have never been reasonable the entire time, but even putting him in cold storage was not enough. They're even taking away his promotional budget after Zhong Yi went through so much to shoot a documentary. They really aren't giving him a chance, are they? They're even dragging Central TV Department 14 into this as well? Who has Department 14 offended? This matter really wasn't handled well and was carried out too ruthlessly. It leaves a bitter feeling in people's hearts. It must be Central TV Department 1 who went to seek help from the station heads. Hi, that's what you get to enjoy when you're like Rise to the Dance, getting popular before even being broadcast. Yeah, compared to a show that is obviously going to get really popular, what is a documentary from Department 14 worth? Of course it would have to step aside and let Rise to the Dance get what they need. I heard that Director Yang had a shouting match with the deputy station head. Director Yang's temper has always been like this, everyone knows that. He's a veteran of the station, so no matter what he does, the station won't do anything to him. We can only wait and see what the other person will do now. There's another person in Department 14 who has a bigger temper than Director Yang, so would Zhong Yi just take this lying down? His show will be premiering soon in less than two weeks. Where are they going to find the money now? If they don't manage to find it, how would they carry out their promotions? Who knows? Actually, even promotions are of no use for them. Do you guys think that he can stir up the industry with a documentary? Even if he's a legend in the entertainment industry, he couldn't do that. At Central TV Department 14. A bite of China's program team was cursing and swearing. The others from Section 1 and 2 also came over to the Section 3 office space when they heard about the news. All of them were cursing at all 18 generations of ancestors of Central TV Department 1 and rise to the dance. A few bolder ones even scolded the station head softly. They were all trembling with anger. Weren't they stabbing Yang Qianfei and Zhong Yi in the back like this? This demonstrated their attitudes to all of them at Department 14. Furthermore, it wasn't the first time that Central TV was doing something like that. They had done something similar in the past, except they didn't do it in such an extreme manner like this time. I'm so angry that it's driving me nuts. How can they do this? Central TV Department 1 are people, are we not people? Director Zhong, what should we do? Yes, we're just waiting for your word. Director Zhong, tell us what should we do? I've really had enough. Everyone's feelings ran high. But Zhong Yi looked relatively calm and did not say a word. He even had the slightest of smiles on his face that the others wondered if they had seen it wrong. Everyone was dumbfounded. It didn't seem right. What's wrong with Director Zhong? Based on Director Zhong's temper in the past, he would have already rolled up his sleeves and gone to Central TV Department 1 to pick a fight by now. Why was he still able to smile in this situation? He's even so calm? Ha Chichi said, Director Zhong. Zhongs were also asked, aren't you angry? Zhong Yi laughed and declared to everyone, when I just debuted, everyone felt that I could not be a radio broadcast host. The radio station did appreciate me and the leaders tried to suppress me, but in the end, I still received the Silver Microphone Award. After that, I joined the TV station, but it was still the same. No one felt that I could make it and they found trouble with me at every corner, framing me whenever they could, yet my program still became famous everywhere. 
Later on, I was even banned, not the kind of ban that Central TV Department 1 has implemented on me now, but a ban by the SARFT. I was the first blacklisted artist on the list and a lot of people kicked me while I was down. Everyone was turning me away because they all thought that my career was over, but as you guys can see now, I'm still doing very well. In fact, I'm even doing better than all of them. When everyone heard this, they fell silent. Zhong Yi said with a smile, even 10 books aren't enough to write about the things that I've been through. The difficulties and desperation that I've faced are possibly even more than everyone's here combined. I've not only been arrested twice, I've also been through a very stringent ban, met with a hijacking incident, and even flown a plane. After hearing Zhong Yi speak about his experiences, everyone admired him endlessly. The things director Zhong had been through could really be called legendary. No one could compare to him in this area. Yang Qianfei's secretary was also listening to it seriously. After he said that, Zhong Yi chuckled. After that, I realized that there's no difficulty we can't overcome. No matter what problems we encounter, as long as we try to push ahead, then we will definitely get past them. It's the same thing now too. Pausing, he looked at everyone before continuing, if there's no money, so be it. We will pump in however much we have, but if there's nothing left, then we will just not do anything. Little Wang said anxiously, but, no buts. Zhong Yi said with a grin. Even if we do not promote the documentary, so what? Huang Dandan wiped her sweat away and said, if we don't promote it, then there'll be no exposure. If there's no exposure, then there'll be no viewership. But Zhong Yi shook his head at that. I won't believe that. Let's just not promote the show anymore. This time, I will show them that even without any promotions nobody can stop me. Ha Chichi was taken aback. What do you mean? Zhong's were expression changed as well. Director Zhong, what do you intend to do? Yang Qianfei's secretary was also extremely surprised. They understood from the tone of Zhong Yi's voice. Everyone's hearts were beating furiously because of that. They were really going to match up and compete with Central TV Department 1. Furthermore, it was a situation where they wouldn't be doing any promotions for their show. How, how could that be possible? Even if they were to carry out mass promotions for their documentary, the chances of them competing with Rise to the Dance was as good as nil, much less without any promotions. What would they compete with? Ten minutes later, Yang Qianfei returned to Department 14 and went back into his own office. He immediately called his secretary in. Inform Little Zhong that there won't be any more funding. The secretary said, I told Director Zhong about it just now. Yang Qianfei picked up his glass of water and downed it in large gulps, unable to calm his mind. He was clearly still very furious. Go and tell Little Zhong that even if I have to pour in my own money, I would definitely get him the money to do the promotions. The secretary said, Director Zhong said, that it's not necessary. Yang Qianfei was stunned. Not necessary? He's prepared to not do any promotional activities anymore. The secretary proceeded to repeat almost word for word what Zhong Yi had said in the office earlier. When Yang Qianfei heard everything, he was stunned again. Did little Zhong really say that? The secretary forced a bitter smile. Yes, those were Director Zhong's own words. But the way I see it, Director Zhong's definitely mad at them. Yang Qianfei took a deep breath, and his anger from a moment ago subsided as he suddenly started laughing. All right, I understand. Understand? Ah, uh, what on earth did you understand? The secretary was confused by this, but was too embarrassed to ask. Chapter 808, Rotten Fruit The next day, Zhong Yi came to work at 6 a.m. in the morning, carrying a bag of piping hot buns, two hamburgers, and three bottles of mineral water. He headed straight into the editing studio and did not come out for the rest of the day. When everyone from Department 14 knocked off, and even after those who stayed behind to work overtime left at around 8 p.m., Zhong Yi still did not come out from the editing studio. Everyone knew that director Zhong was busy editing the documentary, so they did not dare to disturb him. The next day, everyone came to work as usual, but they still did not see any sign of director Zhong. A day later, when everyone came to work, they heard from a staff member of Department 14 who had the night shift saying that Director Zhong was no longer in the editing studio. 
and had gone to the recording studio at around 4 a.m. Then, they did not see him again for another day. Little Wang panicked. Will director Zhong's health be affected like this? It has already been three days. Ha Chichi was extremely worried and asked, Director Zhong has not gone home at all? Wu Yi wiped his sweat off and said, rather than going home, I've heard that he has been staying here all this time. I haven't even seen Director Zhong once in the past few days. Only little Han who does the night shift has seen him twice, and that was because he went out to buy supper for Director Zhong. It's not good if it goes on like this. With this work intensity, he better not have something happen to him. Tong Fu got frightened by that. Let's go get Director Zhong. Zhong Zhuo didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Back then, Director Zhong was also like this when he did the voice. He did not go home for many days and even brought a child to stay at the program team office every day. He did not leave the station at all. Huang Dandan said in shock, ah? Really? Ha Chichi gave a wry smile. Of course it's true. You guys didn't know about the situation because little Tong and you aren't from the voices program team. Our director Jong is a guy who would work to death. As long as there is work within the program team, then needless to say, director Jong will assuredly be the last one to leave work and the first person to come to work the next day. We have tried persuading and talking to him before, but it's not like you don't know director Jong's temper. When has he ever listened to us? So there's no need to go get Director Zhong since it's useless even if you talk to him. You may even end up distracting him from recording the voiceover. The original staff of Department 14 were feeling rather alarmed by that. While those people who worked on the voice with Zhong Yi were not surprised, they did not feel too comfortable about it either. Finally, on November 30, the recording studio's door finally opened during the daytime. Zhong Yi walked out with his hair messy and looked exhausted, though his eyes were shimmering. Ha Chichi stood up immediately. Director Zhong. Little Wang exclaimed, Ayo, you finally come out. Zhongs were shouted, quickly, go and get Director Yang. Director Yang had told everyone to inform him once Zhong Yi stepped out of the studio. As such, when Tong Fu saw this, he ran to Director Yang's office immediately. After an entire week, they finally saw him again. Before Tong Fu had reached the director's office, Yang Qianfei heard their shouting and burst through the door and strode towards the office space of a bite of China. Director Yang. Zhong Yi smiled. Yang Qianfei heaved a sigh of relief. You're really risking your life for this documentary. However, Zhong Yi brushed it off very casually. It's nothing, Director Yang. Back when I was recording the talk show and preparing for The Voice, the situation was not that different from this. It's just not going home for a few days. What's the big deal with that? The main issue is that we do not have much time left before the documentary starts its broadcast. If we take it too slowly, I'm afraid it will be too late. That's why I wanted to quickly rush out the documentary to submit it for approval. We still need to plan for the programming lineup and times, otherwise we won't make it in time. Yang Tianfei asked, so how did it go? The documentary is complete. We just need to add in the background music and we can submit it for approval, Zhong Yi answered. What? It's already completed? You finished everything by yourself in just a week. Everyone was dumbfounded. Those people who were originally from Department 14 looked at Zhong Yi as though he were some kind of god. In the past, they'd frequently heard rumors of Zhong Yi risking his life for work, but did not actually witness it firsthand. However, now that they saw it for themselves, they were truly shocked. He was pushing himself too hard. As a leader, if you took on all the work by yourself, then what would there be left for us to do? However, on second thought, they did not say anything because everyone knew that if they could help out in the areas of editing and voice recording, Director Zhong would surely get them to help. But there was really no one in the program team who could help him, only Director Zhong himself could handle such work that called for certain artistic standards. If their leader worked so hard, then how could they not do the same? Everyone immediately busied themselves like they were on stimulants. Some of them went to get the background music, some of them went to finish up the post-production work and some contacted the approval board staff in advance. Zhong Yi was still supervising from the side as the remaining tasks were inseparable from him. 
however, as most of the important work was already done, he could finally afford to relax a little. He took out his cell phone and turned it on. When it powered on, countless missed calls and messages came flooding in. Who Fei, call me back when you turn on your phone. His mother, when are you coming home? Tian Bin, what's the matter? You even turned off your cell phone? Dong Shanshan, old classmate, have you gone missing? Zhong Yi called his mother back. Mom, I'm going back tonight. You finished your work already? Yes, I'll be able to finish it today. All righty then. If you didn't call back home, your dad and I would have forgotten that we had a son. Man, it can't be that serious, right? Then, he suddenly heard the chat app notification sound from his cell phone. It was an invitation to join a group chat but he didn't know when it was sent to him. Seeing that it was Hu Fei who invited him, he accepted and joined. When he entered the group chat, he saw that everyone in it were familiar faces. They were his ex-colleagues from the BTV Arts channel whom he worked with on Lecture Room and also the current program team of Do You Remember? Xiao Lu, Ah, Teacher Zhong? Da Fei, Teacher Zhong has joined the group chat? Dong Shanshan, what have you been doing for the past week? Did you go missing? Hu Fei also appeared and typed out a long string of question marks. Zhong Yi thought that this would save him the trouble of calling them up, so he sent a group message to them. I was busy editing the documentary for the past few days and didn't even go home or turn on my cell phone, but everything's done now. Let me inform all of you here first, ha ha. On the Friday of the week after next at 8pm, remember to tune into Central TV Department 14 to give me some viewership support. Hu Ji cried out in excitement, we'll definitely do so. Dong Shanshan, ha ha, I will switch on a few more television sets in the station and tune it to your channel. Hu Fei asked, Little Zhong, I have something serious to ask you. Why isn't your documentary being promoted anymore? Weren't the promotions going well earlier? Why did the promotions only last for a day? What's the use of that? I don't have to tell you how important the promotions are, right? Surely you understand that with the broadcast date approaching, these two weeks of promotions are especially crucial. It's also the golden period for it, so even if you know that the documentary will not have much of a viewership, and don't have expectations of getting any results on the documentary, you cannot just drop everything and not bother about it. After all, you have already spent a few months shooting the documentary. However, Zhong Yi did not explain it in detail. Hi, don't mention it anymore. Hu Fei sent, is there something behind this? Soon, they found out the shocking reason from the internet. On Weibo. Actually, some people from the media and industry insiders had been wondering for the past few days as well. They could not understand what was actually going on with Zhong Yi and his new documentary. Why aren't there any more promotions? There don't seem to be any more advertisements on the online video hosting site. It looks like we can only see the promotions of Zhong Yi's new documentary on Channel 14 now. Aren't they being too thrifty? Basically, no one watches Channel 14 at all. Every time in the overall viewership ratings, the Central TV Documentary Channel's viewership ratings are even lower than the Military and Agriculture Channel. What kind of promotional effects can they achieve there? I wonder what Department 14 is thinking. They're too unsupportive of Teacher Zhong. Even if there are very few people who would watch a documentary, you still have to promote it. They only promote the documentary for a day and that's it? Fuck that. Could this really be the talented being bolder? Teacher Zhong does not plan to do any promotions at all? I wonder what is going on with this. It will start broadcasting in another week or so. Would it really be okay like this? The program that is going to be broadcast at the same time with Zhong Yi's documentary is none other than the hotly promoted Rise to the Dance. If there are no more promotions, then Rise to the Dance will definitely apportion even more of the viewership ratings. What if Teacher Zhong only gets zero? Zero zero, something percent of the viewership ratings in the end? Then it would be too embarrassing. There will definitely be plenty of people ready to step on him when that happens. There were also several news reports about it. Promotions for a bite of China have stopped. Could there be a change to the broadcast time for Zhong Yi's new documentary? Countless people were left guessing. Then, an insider suddenly revealed a sensational piece of news. 
it wasn't because Department 14 did not want to do the promotions. They had in fact already prepared all their promotional plans. But due to rise to the dance lacking funds for their promotional budget, Central TV Department 1 unexpectedly went through the channel of Central TV's leaders and borrowed Department 14's remaining promotional budget that was set aside for a bite of China. They stated it as borrowing, but in fact this was as good as stealing, which was extremely ugly behavior. Zhong Yi's fans were infuriated. Fuck. That bunch of grandsons. Bastards. Motherfucking idiots. Fuck their grandmas. If this can be tolerated, then what would be intolerable? Central TV Department 1 has really gone too far. What has Teacher Jong ever done to you? That you guys have to stab him in the back time after time? And I was wondering why Department 14 stopped doing their promotions. So that's how it is. They were out of money. All their money was stolen away by Rise to the Dance. That's so treacherous. Starting today, I have gone from a neutral to a hater of Chen Yi. That executive director Xu Yiping is probably not a good person either. Isn't Central TV too biased? Fuck. What the hell is this? Just what the hell is this? They are not even going to let Teacher Zhong and his documentary get a piece of the viewership ratings. Do they intend to get rid of him once and for all? Everyone knows that Teacher Zhong will definitely not be able to compete against such a large-scale variety talent show that has gathered so many big names together with just a documentary. Even in that situation, you guys still want to stab him in the back? There aren't any promotions going on, so how can they broadcast it? Teacher Zhong, don't broadcast the documentary anymore. These people are truly a bunch of jerks. Right, let's quit. Don't work for them anymore. Several media workers could no longer stand to watch any further. They also came forward to post. A bite of China has met its end even before its broadcast. Even the cleverest housewife cannot cook a meal without rice. If a bite of China does extremely poorly in its viewership ratings, please do not scold it or feel disappointed. Everyone knows that Zhong Yi has already tried his best. Is there a need for fairness in television stations? Of course, there were also those opposed to Zhong Yi or had always been supportive towards Rise to the Dance who were gloating at this. Some of them were even insulting people. The group of haters were all smiles. Serves him right. Zhong Yi's legend should have ended long ago. You've all glorified him, but what does Zhong Yi actually have? He's just a normal human being who has better luck than most other people. Ha ha ha, in fact, without a budget for promotions, it might turn out to be a good thing for Zhong Yi and Department 14. With a reason and excuse now, no matter how low their viewership rating is in the end, even if it turns out to be a historical low, they would have still an excuse for it. This will leave them some face instead when the results are out. Let Zhong Yi's legendary viewership ratings come to an end. From now on, it will be Teacher Chen Yi's stage. Rise to the dance, go, go, go. Surpassing the voice will be just like playing a game. At around 5 p.m. in the afternoon, Central TV posted on its official Weibo to clarify the situation due to too many doubts being voiced by the public. The post was mostly written in an official tone explaining that they were not targeting certain channels or individuals as they did not have any reason to do so. They even used the phrase, a big family, to describe their internal solidarity and friendship. But did they think that the netizens were dumb? Friendship? Solidarity? Bull fucking shit. Just saying those words themselves made everyone's hearts turn cold and angry. The group of Zhong Yi's fans were all seeking justice for him, cursing and swearing at Central TV. In the end, even some of the industry insiders also came forward to speak up for Zhong Yi. Beijing Television's Hu Fei, Perhaps the present Central TV is no longer the same as the Central TV of before. An entertainment media outlet's deputy chief editor, some people's behaviors are getting uglier and uglier. A deputy station head at Hume Television Station, hi, is the destruction of a viewership rating legend really something worth being happy and proud about? Why do I find it difficult to watch such behavior from some people? This affair had stirred up too much of a controversy. Countless people were already arguing incessantly online. There were many people who stood for it. But the number of people who were against it were not to be outdone either. 
if not for this discussion being on the forums and Weibo only, the two groups of people would have already started brawling with each other. At this point, Zhong Yi, who had disappeared for a week, appeared again. He used his long-standing Weibo account and posted a poem. It was an illustrious poem by Wen Edwa from his previous world. Compared to Dead Water, this poem was basically not famous and not a lot of people had heard about it either. But Zhong Yi really liked this poem back in his previous world. Even without using a memory search capsules, he could easily recite it backwards. All the netizens gathered around. Zhong Yi has appeared. Come and look. It's another poem. Zhong Yi wrote a poem? Let me see what he has written about this time. Without needing to mention the content at all, with just the line, Zhong Yi wrote a poem again. It was enough to pull the attention of everyone over, because each and every poem of Zhong Yi's had always been famous. Hu Fei quickly opened his Weibo. Dong Shan Shan immediately came to see. Zhong Yuanchi's manager, Fang Wei Hong, also appeared. Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, Tong Fu, and the other program team staff also realized this and quickly opened their Weibo after learning of it. It was a modern poem, fairly short, but long enough to make people who saw it get terrified from head to toe. Rotten fruit black bugs have long since chewed through my flesh. I lie on a bed of moss so cold it stings just letting the rot set in deeper. Waiting for the rot to pierce my core and decompose my prison. My imprisoned soul will then, wearing a pea green vest, leap out grinning from ear to ear. Chapter 809 This is a poem fit for a cultured civilization. 1. There were countless of comments. Good poem. Well said. Fuck, fight it out with them. Have long since chewed through my flesh? Isn't that describing Zhong Yi's current plight? Right, from the time he joined Central TV Department 1, they have been chewing through his flesh. This poem is very similar to Dead Water which Zhong Yi composed in the past. How long ago was it since Zhong Yi wrote a poem? I've already forgotten when I last read a poem by him. I can see that Zhong Yi is really furious this time. Every time teacher Zhong gets angry, he writes a poem. But as for this soul wearing a pea green vest, leap out grinning from ear to ear? What does he mean by that? I don't know either. I don't quite understand the last two lines of the poem. Does teacher Zhong mean that he's going to show his prowess? But with what would he show his prowess? Who cares? Anyways, this poem gives me the chills when I read it. It's incredible. At Central TV. Deputy station head Ju who had helped Central TV Department 1 get the loan was just leaving work. While he was taking the elevator down, he heard the gossip of some staffers who were holding their cell phones and discussing in low whispers. They were pointing at the screens but he did not know what they were talking about. Occasionally, he could vaguely hear the words, Weibo, and, Zhong Yi. Deputy station head Ju asked offhandedly, what are you guys talking about? The several of them hurriedly said, nothing, nothing, we're just chatting. You're off work now, station head Ju? Deputy station head Ju nodded at that. When he arrived downstairs, his chauffeur was already waiting there for him. He entered the backseat of the car before he took out his cell phone curiously to have a look at Weibo. At that moment, he saw the poem that was just posted by Zhong Yi. Rotten fruit? Chewed through by black bugs? Deputy station head Ju shook his head unhappily and immediately called Yang Tianfei. The call connected. Hello, old Yang. What's the matter? Did you see Zhong Yi's poem? What poem? The one that Zhong Yi just posted on Weibo. Get him to delete it right away. I don't know what you're talking about. Go and take a look then. Take a look at it right now. I can't check because my home internet is down. Are you purposely pretending not to know? Your internet is down? Fine, then I will read it out to you. Rotten fruit. Black bugs have long since chewed through my flesh. I lie on a bed of moss so cold it stings. After he finished reading it, deputy station head Ju asked coldly, Answer me, old Yang, who are the black bugs referring to? Yang Tianfei answered without even thinking, Black bugs are bugs which are black in color. What's the matter with this poem? Isn't it just describing a fruit that is slowly spoiling? The meaning of the entire poem is so clearly expressed. 
Rotten Fruit wants to teach people how to economize food, to pay attention to their nutritional intake of fruits and vegetables which should not be wasted. Otherwise, when a fruit rots, it will turn into a spirit that haunts people who waste their food. How educational. This passage is littered with ideas promoting a cultured civilization with the five disciplines and four graces. When he heard Yang Tianfei say that, Deputy Station Head Ju nearly fainted. Economize food? Nutrition intake? Five disciplines and four graces? Fuck, where the hell did you get that from? Deputy Station Head knew Old Yang was messing with him. He was so angry that he hung up on him straight away. On the other end, after Yang Tianfei hung up, he gave a contemptuous laugh. You people at the station were so biased towards Central TV Department 1 that you didn't even leave a single cent of promotional budget to us. Now that you have forced little Zhong into a corner, oh, you won't even allow him to write a poem to mock you for a bit. Ha, huh, what logic is that? All the good things are always left for you, huh? Central TV Department 1 in the program team office of Rise to the Dance. Hey, quickly have a look at this. That Zhong Yi has written a poem again, someone shouted. Actually, besides the person who shouted that, many of the other staff had already seen it. However, they were too embarrassed to mention it to others. After all, Zhong Yi had a rather complicated relationship with their program team, as well as with the two directors, Xu Yipeng and Chen Yi. That was why Zhong Yi's name was never casually mentioned within their office area. Chen Yi frowned. Are you the only one who has nothing to do? That person could only whimper. Chen Yi ordered, get back to your work. Read something useful instead. That person hurriedly said, I understand. Actually, Chen Yi and Xu Yipeng had also read that poem. When they clocked out, Chen Yi took the initiative and left with Xu Yipeng. They went downstairs together. Zhong Yi was indirectly scolding us, Chen Yi said. Xu Yipeng shook his head and just said, ignore him. He's only good at blustering. Do you really expect him to use a documentary to compete and fight it out with us? Chen Yi smiled and said, of course not. Xu Yipeng couldn't help but laugh. If we can't even beat his documentary, then we should just quit our jobs, pack up, and go home. Haha, <laughs> the people in the program team now are the elites of the station, while the invited guests are all big shots. With every aspect of the promotions in place, would we be afraid that a documentary that no one watches would be a threat to us? Even if those hardcore fans of Zhong Yi really tune in to watch a bite of China when it gets broadcast, it still wouldn't be able to apportion 0.0 something percent of our viewership ratings. 0.0 something percent? That is as good as a negligible figure, so let alone being a threat, it won't even be an obstacle to us. Chen Yi smiled and remarked, that's right, Zhong Yi has really taken us to be laymen in this area. But even if it's a layman making a variety show, there's no reason it will do worse than a documentary's viewership ratings. Xu Yiping stated, in this past two years, Zhong Yi has indeed created some very popular TV shows, but this has made him a little arrogant and he has lost the reverence for this industry as well. We can't totally blame him either. As a director and host of variety shows who has been transferred to a documentary channel, he has never had any experience with documentaries before. He probably still does not know how deep the water runs for a documentary type of show. After his documentary gets broadcast, the viewership ratings and advertising revenue will make him realize that there's some things that just can't be changed because of an individual's heroics. Documentaries are a stagnant genre so no matter how good Zhong Yi is or how strong his program planning and directing abilities are, there's not much that he can do about it. No one can bring life back to that puddle of stagnant water. At a restaurant. Jiang Naixiong, Jiang Yuan, and some others had left work early and were dining together. During dinner, an executive of Central TV Department 1 was suddenly stunned by what he saw on his cell phone. Then he said in a speechless manner, Zhong Yi is making a scene again. He wrote a poem to scold us this time. What happened? Let me take a look. The several of them read that poem. Jiang Yuan said angrily, rotten fruit. Black bugs? Jiang Naixiong did not look happy either. This Zhong Yi is getting more and more out of hand. Not only is he mocking Central TV Department 1, he's even bringing Central TV into this. 
Jiang Yuan took out his cell phone and said angrily, who's he calling black bugs? I must call old Yang, what the hell? A deputy director said, don't you know what sort of temper old Yang has? If John Yi did not write a poem and instead bluntly called out our names to scold us on Weibo, old Yang would surely still pretend not to see it. Jiang Yuan felt a little upset and said, I'm afraid Zhong Yi will stir up a commotion and affect the reputation of our rise to the dance. After all, it would be for the best if there's less negative news. This is the golden period for the promotions and the most crucial time for us. Can no one really do anything about this Zhong Yi? The show will be broadcast the week after next, but not only is he not worried about his own show, he even has time to bother other people? If he has the time, Shouldn't he be thinking about what to do with that documentary of theirs which doesn't even have a chance to be promoted? If the viewership ratings turn out too low, who would be the one embarrassed instead? What imprisoned soul? What leaping out? You have already been transferred to the documentary channel, yet you are still thinking about giving others a face smacking? What the heck? All right then, we would like to see how you are going to wear a pea green vest and leap out grinning ear to ear. Chapter 810 Broadcast. Part 1, adding in the accompanying music. Working on the post-production. The production phase was complete. The show was sent in for review. The show was approved. Arrangements for the programming lineup were cleared. About two weeks later. December 10th, Friday. It was a hubbub this morning at Central TV Department 14. The program team staff of A Bite of China arrived early today at just past 7 a.m. Yang Tianfei was angered, Director Zhong was angered. On the issue of the heads of Central TV Department 1 and Central TV, the group of staff members were also angered. If there was no funding to carry out a mass promotional campaign, then they would double as the Shil army themselves. With the aid of Weibo, they promoted A Bite of China everywhere. Even though it was to little effect, even though they did not have much success, nobody could give up doing whatever they could. Because it was already the last day before the program was broadcast, there were only 12 hours until the official premiere of their documentary. Let's make another round on Weibo. Coming, coming. Director Jong's fans are amazingly supportive. They've helped forward so many for our posts which is the highest rated documentary by viewership that our department is broadcasting currently. Quickly seek Director Yang's help to add a few more advertisements at those time slots. There isn't much time left. None of them have a good viewership rating at all. Of the documentaries that are broadcasting now, the highest viewership rating is only 0.062%. We've already been airing more than a dozen rounds of advertisements for a bite of China in the past few days at that time slot so it has seriously oversaturated that show. There's no meaning to show the ads anymore. That documentary basically does not have many viewers to begin with anyway, so the ads have already reached maximum effect. What about the newspaper firms? My old classmate works at a newspaper firm and I managed to get her to add in an article yesterday after much persuasion. The other newspaper and media outlets are all mainly focusing on rise to the dance. Since we did not pay any money and ours is only a documentary. They weren't willing to give us any coverage at all. Even in the minority of the news drafts that were just submitted, they only mentioned our documentary because of director Zhong or because of the rotten fruit poem from that day. We have done everything that we can. Hi, we'll just have to leave it to fate now. Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others had already tried their best. This absolute disadvantage was impossible to reverse with just them alone. Without money, no topicality, and no selling point, how could they possibly do any promotions? Where's director Zhong? Little Zhong suddenly asked. Wu Yi turned and looked around. I don't know. Ha Chichi also found it rather strange. Yeah, why didn't I see director Zhong today? It wasn't until 9am, which was also Central TV's normal working hours, that Zhong Yi leisurely strolled into the office. The first thing he saw when he came in was the bustling scene of all the program team staff gathered together. Zhong Yi was stunned by this and simply raised his hand to greet everyone. Whoa, all of you are here already. This early in the morning? Tong Fu nearly fainted at that. It's a bite of China's premiere today. 
Huang Danden also said in a speechless manner, it's the day of our documentary's broadcast. I know that. Zhong Yi said, but aren't we already done with the production? The footage was also checked before we submitted it, so aren't we just waiting for it to get broadcast? Zhong Zhuo was taken aback by his attitude. Aren't you nervous about it? Zhong Yi laughed. What's there to be nervous about? We have already done all that we could, so let's just wait for the broadcast. Everyone didn't know how to react as they thought of the saying, the eunuchs are more anxious than the emperor himself. Actually, what they did not understand was that whenever Zhong was needed, he had never dropped the ball before. He was always the first to get to work and would not bat an eyelid even if he had to pull an all-nighter to complete his work. However, once he finished everything, Zhong Yi would not worry about unnecessary things, just like the situation now. They had no money to compete with Rise to the Dance by placing advertisements on high-cost platforms like the various online video, hosting sites and Central TV Department 1, so posting on Weibo and various forums wouldn't make much of a difference for the show and would have an almost negligible effect. At a time like this, the best option was to just rest. After all, they should be striking a proper balance between work and rest. Moreover, Zhong Yi had confidence in a bite of China. Compared to the promotions for first season of A Bite of China back in his previous world, the promotions and topicality of their version was already many times more than the original version. Did the original A Bite of China do any promotions? Actually they did, but there was almost no one who paid any attention to them. Zhong Yi could still remember when he first started watching A Bite of China. It was already near the end of the first season. It was only then that he learned of this show, after he went online to look it up when a classmate told him about it. He spent the entire day watching it in astonishment, but did not contribute to the viewership ratings of the show as he did not know about this documentary at all before that. It was the same for many of the other viewers who also found out about it at a later time. That was what contributed to the great difference in viewership ratings between the first and second seasons of A Bite of China. Therefore, he wasn't dissatisfied with the current situation that they were in. In this current world, regardless of whether anyone would watch the documentary or not, at least a lot of people already knew about this show called A Bite of China. They knew that A Bite of China would go up against the certainly popular large-scale talent show called Rise to the Dance during the same time slot, so wasn't that enough? Actually, it was already good enough. Everyone has worked hard during this period of time. Zhong Yi looked gratefully at everyone. I saw everyone's efforts. Also, thank all of you for putting your trust in me. Why don't we knock off earlier today? You can leave in a while, or if you prefer, in the afternoon. Just look for little Wang to let her know when you're leaving. I will approve this. It won't be considered as skipping work, ha ha. Zhong Zhuo wiped his sweat away and said, Director Zhong, why would we want to knock off earlier? Wu Yi said, yeah, the broadcast is scheduled for today. A lot of people are waiting for us to make a fool of ourselves. At such a time, who would still be thinking about resting? Ha Chi Chi also forced a wry smile. You may be gracious, but we're not. Did you not see? The fans of Rise to the Dance and Chen Yi have been bombarding us in many waves for the past few days. They basically do not have us in their sights at all. Even the staff of Central TV are discussing us in whispers. When old Wu and I went upstairs yesterday, everyone else in the elevator were giving us strange looks. An old employee who was very well informed said, I heard that during a station meeting yesterday, one of the deputy station heads who was in charge of Central TV Department 1 even made a joke about our A Bite of China's program team. Tong Fu said exasperated, I think I will stay here and clock some overtime today. I'll just go home later. Count me in. His girlfriend, Wang Danden said, if I don't see our documentary safely get broadcast, I won't be able to stop worrying. Anyway, the broadcast will end at around 9pm, so I don't mind waiting. We should definitely stay for overtime. We're already at the last critical juncture. Seeing how everyone had expressed their stance, Zhong Yi was helpless to do anything about it. He knew that the attitude of Central TV Department 1 and some of the station heads had angered everyone here badly. All right then. Over time it is. Ring ring ring. His cell phone rang. When he saw that it was from Fan Wenli, 
Zhong Yi went back into his own office before answering, Sister Fan? I saw you just now when you were outside. Did you just reach the office? Fan Wenli said. Zhong Yi replied, Yeah, I've just reached the office. You're at Central TV? Fan Wenli stated, I came here for some business today, but because Director Xu and Chen Yi were with me earlier, I did not say hi to you. After a pause, she continued, Rise to the Dance finished recording its fourth episode. The show's content is quite rich and I find it to be rather good as well. But compared to the voice, it might not be that exciting since dance is not as mainstream as singing and not everyone knows how to appreciate it as well. When those internal people at Central TV Department 1 kept talking about how they would surpass the voice, I was really questioning in my mind if they knew anything at all. However, I cannot deny that this is still a rather good talent show. What's more, with such strong promotions for the show, it might not be impossible that they could really match the voice. Zhong Yi understood that old Fan was giving him some inside news. Oh, I see. Fan Wenli asked, how about your side? How is it going at your side? Zhong Yi laughed lightly. We finished the production long ago, so we're only waiting for the broadcast now. I can't say for sure how it'll do, but we'll know after it has been broadcast. Do you think you can win an award for it? Fan Wenli asked. Why are all my friends asking me if I have the confidence to win the most prestigious award in the documentary genre these days when they call? Zhong Yi returned. Fan Wenli responded, that's because we're confident in you. Although this is your first time directing a documentary, but with your capabilities, it's not impossible for you to win an award. Zhong Yi laughed and said, why isn't anyone asking me about my opinion on the viewership rating? Viewership rating? Fan Wenli said with a start. Because to us, the furthest a documentary can go is win a domestic documentary award. What do viewership ratings have to do with documentaries? Zhong Yi only chuckled at that and did not say anything more. Central TV Department 1 The entire Rise to the Dance program team was busy preparing for the final phase. Xu Yiping shouted, counting down to the last 10 hours. Chen Yi said, everyone, chin up and let's finish the last of the promotional activities. Today is the most important day, so everyone has to put in some overtime. Director Xu and I will buy everyone supper tonight. Xu Yiping added, pick a place that you all like. Everyone cheered at that. Great. Thank you, bosses. I'll be finishing up my work here very soon. Can we have Western food? Hee <laughs> hee. Although they were busy, it was also a joyful and relaxing atmosphere that everyone was working in. All the people of the program team had an unprecedented look of anticipation on their faces, and at the same time, an unparalleled confidence. Viewership Ratings Champion of the Same Time Period? Nationwide Viewership Ratings Champion for Variety Shows? It had never crossed their minds that they would not get these honors, because to them, these were already in the bag. With such a huge investment, with such an astronomical title sponsorship fee, with those big shot guest coaches, with such a popular platform, and with such heavy promotions, there was no reason why they would not get the viewership ratings top spot. The only thing on their minds right now was whether they could surpass the voice, whether they could rewrite history. Only two people in the program team were feeling rather unsure of all that. The two were the rookies who had been snatched to Central TV Department 1 from Department 14, who also happened to be the immediate juniors of Zhong Yi at Media College. The rookie with the broader face whispered, aren't they all being too optimistic? The other person gave a wry smile and said, yeah, I don't think that it's going to be this simple either. The broad-faced person asked, why do you feel that way? There's no reason. That person said, it's just because he's John Yi. Yes, from the point of a given name, John Yi was actually a very ordinary name. There were at least 80 to 100,000 others named John Yi in the entire country. But in the entertainment circle, this name was not ordinary at all. It could be said that this name represented a legend, a legend who no one dared to ignore. Chapter 811, Broadcast. Part 2, Later That Afternoon. The rise to the dance program team's final run of promotions was starting to show some effects. Like Hua Dongfang's scandal, Fan Wenli's rocky marriage, fans fainting in the recording studio. These gossips and hype were being flooded in all kinds of forms into the mass media, newspapers, and the internet, 
bearing down on the public with tremendous force. It nearly occupied close to 10% of the entertainment industry's news, and even overshadowed an important film industry's award ceremony. People could not avoid the news about it and their attention was entirely taken by Rise to the Dance. On Weibo. The netizens were very excited. Anticipation X 10,000. The show is finally beginning today. Rise to the Dance is so awesome. Don't just keep promoting it, hurry up and start broadcasting already. You're making us unable to wait anymore. I'm waiting to watch it. Hurry, hurry, hurry. 8 p.m. in the evening? I can't wait any longer. Ha ha, I like sect leader Huai. I love teacher Chen Yi so much. I'm a hardcore fan of his. Teacher Chen is too cool. Under such widespread buildup of the show, there was no lack of topics for the people to talk about. Of course, not everyone had forgotten about Zhong Yi, as a small portion of the people were still paying close attention to the broadcast of A Bite of China. So today Zhong Yi's documentary is also broadcasting? I'm caught in a dilemma, which one should I watch? It's been quite some time since A Bite of China stopped their promotions. I nearly forgot about it. It's not that they didn't want to promote it, but that central TV department one played dirty. When it rains, it pours. It's hopeless for a bite of China. I think I better watch Rise to the Dance instead. It's just too bad that it's a documentary, hi -e. Yeah, I really feel pity for teacher Zhong Yi. Compared to a blockbuster program like Rise to the Dance, what is a documentary? Even the entirety of Central TV has already given up on a bite of China. Fuck, using Rise to the Dance to compete with a documentary, what's there to compete on? Is it even a competition to begin with? If they're so good, let them compete with teacher Zhong Yi on variety shows instead. Then we will see who will be the one that gets beaten. But there won't be a chance of an if scenario at all. Don't argue anymore. Everything will be revealed tonight. The stage was ready. Appetites were whetted. The only thing left was the countdown to broadcast. Five hours before the broadcast, Zhong Yi was called over to Yang Tianfei's office. Little Zhong, did we miss out anything? Yang Tianfei asked. Zhong Yi laughed. Everything is in place. Yang Tianfei said, Are the preparations complete? Zhong Yi nodded. We're just waiting for the broadcast. There's nothing much we need to prepare for anymore. Yang Tianfei looked at his expression and laughed. You seem very relaxed. Yeah, I've already done all that is necessary. The rest is up to the market to determine. Zhong Yi's reply was exactly as his thoughts were. At this moment, he felt very calm. After all, he had been through all kinds of storms before and had grown through the experience. Zhong Yi was also growing through all that. Three hours before the broadcast. In the office of Central TV Department 1's director. Xu Yiping said, Director Jiang, please give us another advertisement slot. Jiang Naixiong smiled and said, Just today alone, Central TV Department 1 has already assigned three advertisement slots to you guys, and it's still not enough. All of that costs money. Besides, we only gave two slots to The Voice when they premiered. Chen Yi also pleaded for a long time. Finally, Jiang Naixiong said, let's wait for next week when your viewership ratings are out. As long as the premiere episode exceeds one. 5% in the viewership ratings, I will add another slot for you guys next week. 1.5%? Chen Yi didn't think that it was too much. Even Jiang Naixiong thought that this target was not too much to ask for. When they returned to the Rise to the Dance program team's office, Xu Yiping and Chen Yi started to supervise everyone's work again, but since the finalized show to be broadcast had already been submitted, there wasn't actually much to be busy with. But they still tried to make the best of the whatever time that was left, as the staff busied themselves with anything they could, as long as they did not idle about. Everyone just looked like they had something to do, as if by doing so they could show their determination for the new show. A female staff member who just came back to the office from outside said, I saw Zhong Yi just now. She was only telling this to her colleague who was seated beside her, but because she did not lower her voice, Xu Yiping and Chen Yi who were not too far away heard it as well. Chen Yi frowned. What? 
Is he up to something again? Xu Yipeng was also well aware of Zhong Yi's character. He was afraid that Zhong Yi would suddenly come up with some trickery. The female staff member waved her hands hastily. No, no, I only saw Zhong Yi leaving work with his bag to go home. His left work? Gone home? Isn't their show also starting its broadcast tonight? Ah? Why did he go home? Besides Xu Yipeng and Chen Yi being speechless at this, the other program team staff were also dumbfounded by what they heard. Then, Chen Yi couldn't help but laugh loudly and shake his head. However, he did not say anything. He gave up just like that? Leaving work even before the broadcast has started? Is that rotten fruit of yours just empty talk? Xu Yiping immediately said, why do you care about what others do? Just mind your own business and broaden your outlook. There are so many other variety shows of the same time slot who are our competitors, yet you'd rather keep your eye on a documentary. Ah, sorry. No one dared to mention it again. Two hours before the broadcast. Zhong Yi was already back at his parents' house. Mom, hurry up and make me a bowl of noodles. I'm so hungry. When Zhong Yi stepped into the house, he flicked his shoes off and left them strewn about on the floor. Then he sat down heavily onto the sofa, crowding Chen Chen's space. Chen Chen was very annoyed by that and vied with him for the middle seat. Zhong Yi did not give way to her, and two of them started brawling again. His mother asked in surprise, Why are you home? I'm off work. Where would I go if I don't come back here? Zhong Yi said rather perplexed. His father said, We thought that you would have to work overtime. Isn't today the premiere of your documentary? Zhong Yi smiled and said, I can just watch the premiere at home where it's more peaceful. When he finished eating dinner, Zhong Yi went to take a shower. After he came out, he started sending messages to his friends and relatives one by one. To Yao Jintsai, old Yao, switched to channel 14 at 8 p.m. Yao Jintsai replied, Ha ha, all right. I will watch and learn from it. To Dong Shanshan, it's going to broadcast at 8 p.m. Turn on your TV and add to the viewership ratings for me. Dong Shanshan, it's already on. I'm with brother Hu, Hu Ge, and the others. To Wu Ziqing, old Wu, my show is starting soon. It's today. Wu Ziqing, okay. To Fan Yinyun aka Big Saber Bro, broadcast at 8 p.m. Go go go. Fan Yinyun, a must see. To Zhong Yuenqi, Sister Zhong, watch Channel 14 in a while, don't forget. Zhong Yuenqi, okay. Actually, how much viewership ratings could he add by contacting just a few friends and relatives? Zhong Yi only informed them in case they called him out later for not telling them about his new show's broadcast, because he did not treat them as friends and family. His mother also switched to Channel 14. However, Zhong Yi said, Mom, switch it to Channel 1. His mother said in surprise, Why are we watching Channel 1? Chen Chen also leered at him. You want to watch Rise to the Dance? Zhong Yi smiled and said, Yes, I must see what the opponent's show is like. His mother switched the channel to Central TV Department 1. Zhong Yi understood quite well what a bite of China would be like as it was entirely recorded and edited by him. Since he knew it so well, it wasn't necessary to watch it anymore. He was more concerned about the quality of Rise to the Dance, and whether it was as good as the promotions made it out to be. Was it really as good as what Fan Wenli said? Of course, Zhong Yi also had to see if Rise to the Dance was qualified to be a bite of China's opponent. The countdown started. Three minutes. Two minutes. One minute. At 8 p.m. sharp, the premiere episode of Rise to the Dance and a Bite of China started broadcasting together. Chapter 812, Broadcast. Part 3, to Central TV Department 1 and some industry insiders, today was an unusual night for them. Central TV Department 1 was concerned with whether Rise to the Dance would let them continue leading the trend for television, variety shows. Xu Yipeng, Chen Yi, and their program team staff were all waiting in anticipation for Rise to the Dance's viewership rating. The television industry insiders were also observing to see how greatly Rise to the Dance would influence this genre of shows in the future. Then of course, there were also people who wanted to watch the first documentary Zhong Yi directed, A Bite of China just to see what kind of a show it was. 
but to most citizens, this was just a night like any other night. Some people had just returned home from school and some people came home from work. Some might be bored and others might want to relax, so they turned on their televisions. So here's the thing. Was today a usual day? Or was it an unusual day? Could it be that it was a usual day, but with a hint of unusualness? Or perhaps, it was an unusual day that had some usualness to it. Fuck, only a ghost would fucking know. Moving on to the next subject. It's starting. Ha ha, the broadcast is starting. It's finally beginning. Chenny has come out on stage. Wow. Sect leader Hua has appeared. Did Fan Wenli get fatter? Don't tell me she's pregnant. Fuck, teacher Lily still doesn't look well on screen. But that can't be helped, since she's a professional dancer who does not make a living off of her looks. In the atmosphere of explosiveness and anticipation, Rise to the Dance was now broadcasting on Central TV Department 1. On the TV screens, Chen Yi appeared unstaged to the rapturous applause and cheers of the live audience. Everyone stood up, clapping as loudly and fervently as they could. Welcome, everyone, to the stage of Rise to the Dance. Our show is brought to you by our exclusive title sponsor, Chunher Mineral Water. Thank you to Huali Appliances and Lituor Detergent's strong support. Chen Yi stood in the center of the stage, reading a long string of advertisements before smiling and announcing loudly, Today, we're here with our three guest coaches to witness a feast of China's dance scene. Here, today, together with the entire country's millions of viewers, we will be witnessing what we call the miracle of dance. Thunderous applause rang out. First, let us welcome teacher Hua Dongfang. Teacher Fan Wenli. Teacher Shen Lili. The guest coaches were smiling and waving to the cameras. They were all wearing very magnificent-looking costumes. From the looks of it, it could be seen that the program would have cost quite a bit to produce. It was definitely not cheap and the outfits all looked like they were individually tailored for each of the guest coaches. The entire stage was also very beautifully decorated. Due to the incident that basically destroyed it, Central TV Department 1 reconstructed it with a lot of money and the stage no longer bore any resemblance to the voices stage. It was as good as a new stage altogether, looking very bright and ritzy. Following that, Chen Yi introduced the competition rules and regulations. Chen Yi started off on television doing interview programs. Although he had done quite a few variety shows before as well, he gained his fame through interview programs before stepping up to hosting galas. Chen Yi's hosting style was clearly different from Zhang Yi's. Zhang Yi focused on humor, eloquence, as well as individual talents. This fellow's hosting style would never be replicated by another. The humor and wit he showed in his talk show. His vast knowledge as seen in analysis of the Three Kingdoms. His recital speed that was displayed through his hosting act in The Voice. No one else could mimic all of that as his style was extremely distinct. As long as he was on stage, then he would be the focus of everyone. He was a shining light that was independent from a show. It was a trait that was Zhong Yi's own. In the field of hosting, his existence was always going to be a unique one. Meanwhile, Chen Yi's trait was his affinity with the audience. He focused on the audience mood and atmosphere of the venue, and could adapt to different situations very well. No matter what the characteristics of a show were, he could bring it out to its fullest at all times. His was a strong and stable style of hosting which could keep everything under control, and this was also the basis for his appointment as one of the Spring Festival Gala hosts. A few minutes later. The main event began. Next, let's invite our first contestant onto the stage. The scene cut to the contestant's intro clip. My name is Chi Fang and I've loved dancing ever since I was young. At the age of five. On this, Rise to the Dance had learned from the voice's style of story presentation. The industry had long ago analyzed and broken down the factors that contributed to the success of the voice. John Yi's model for making shows as well as his storytelling had also been studied by everyone. They knew that by doing this before a contestant appeared on stage, it would help the audience build empathy and identify with the contestant. Facts had proven that this was not a segment that they could leave out, and it was also where Zhong Yi's cleverness could be seen. With his successful show as a model, the people who came after followed suit and did not miss out on implementing this successfully proven method. 
However, Rise to the Dance did not fully copy everything from The Voice and still made the necessary changes according to their genre. The contestant went on stage. The live audience let out faintly discernible exclamations. The netizens went crazy with their discussions. Ah! She's so fat? This woman has to weigh at least 90 kilograms, right? Fuck, can she even dance like this? The music started, and so did the dancing. Nobody expected that this contestant named Chi Fang immediately started wiggling around as she started dancing a samba. Everyone watched dumbfounded. Holy shit. Holy shit. She can dance this well. My god, this is too exciting to watch. This contestant is really quite good. On screen, Hua Dongfang and Fan Wenli could be seen giving each other a look of surprise, then focusing back to Chi Fang as they gazed at her in admiration. It was as though they were already prepared to take this contestant onto their team. Meanwhile, professional dance artist Shen Lily also looked at the female contestant without blinking, before finally standing up from her seat with a smiling face and couldn't help but start dancing along with her. The audience went wild. The atmosphere in the venue was extremely passionate. Being a talent show, it was needless to explain how important the first contestant was. The effects could be considered decisive for the show, because if the first contestant could grab the attention of the audience, then the show was already half successful. On this, without a doubt, Rise to the Dance had achieved it. At Zhong Yi's parents' house. His mother was watching the show and said, this show is quite good. His father looked to him. Do you think this show will be popular? Zhong Yi shook his head and answered, it's difficult for me to say, but I don't think that it will do too badly. Xu Yiping and Chen Yi are also very smart, knowing how to take the essence from my previous show and apply it here. Actually, seeing it now, Zhong Yi was quite surprised. He had not thought that Xu Yiping and Chen Yi could churn out anything good. But clearly, after the show was broadcast, it left Zhong Yi surprised as it turned out even better than he had expected. His mother said, even if it were to do poorly, the viewership ratings will still be much higher than your documentary. Mom? Don't speak too soon. Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. That might not necessarily be true. His mother said, What's not true? Yours is just a documentary, and you really think that it can compete with a variety show? Zhong Yi chuckled, Why can't it compete? Who says that a documentary's viewership rating has to be less than a variety show's? Looking at this lively start to rise to the dance, you might think that the viewership ratings will be quite good. But actually, there is also a disadvantage, as a dancing talent show has one setback, which is that dance is an art not everyone can understand. There won't be too many people who'll appreciate it, so as to how many people actually like the show, it's still a question mark. Even if the show gets popular, there's still a limit to how popular it'll get. Once it reaches the upper limit, it will be difficult for it to get more viewers. In this world, there were not many dancing talent shows. For such a large-scale one like Rise to the Dance, it was still the first. However, in Zhong Yi's previous world, dancing talent shows numbered many, while their ups and downs were all known by Zhong Yi. Naturally, he knew more than the people of this world where the disadvantages lay in a dancing talent show. That was why he had only written the program proposal informally for Central TV Department 1, because they requested it. If it came down to it, he had no plans to do it at all. His mother disagreed, but a documentary's target audience is even smaller. That opinion of yours would surely be accepted by another, but I don't agree to that. Zhong Yi laughed. A normal person would surely think that no matter how specialized a subject a variety show does, it still would attract a larger audience than a documentary. But that's not necessarily true, because my documentary is about food. From a three-year-old kid to a 90-year-old senior, who doesn't eat? How many people don't like eating? My documentary might not seem like it would have a large audience, but in fact, it actually appeals to all ages. Ignoring the accepted range of viewers between a documentary and a variety show, my documentary definitely has a larger appeal to a wider range of people than a dance show. His mother pouted. Why am I unconvinced by what you're saying? Chen Chen let out a ha-ha at that. Zhong Yi could not say anything to that and just stopped trying to convince his mother. On Weibo.
a few simultaneously discussed Weibo posts were attracting a lot of attention. It's good. I like the second contestant. She danced really beautifully. Yeah, that woman looks fine as well. She'll definitely be very popular. I still think that the first fatty contestant danced better. That image of her dancing has a really strong impact. So even a fatty is able to dance that well. That's truly inspirational. I've decided that I will go and learn dancing starting tomorrow. I want to learn too. I like Chen Yi's hosting style. He's so down to earth. Here for sect leader Huo. He has definitely not disappointed me. Sect leader Huo and Fan Wenli's dance battle really made me laugh hard. Ha ha ha. The viewership ratings definitely aren't going to be bad. The way I see it, the first episode is surely going to exceed 1%. Of course there were also others who did not think the show was good. I think it's only average. It's not as good as The Voice, a little worse than what I had expected. Yeah, I don't get dancing at all, so it's not interesting to me. A dancing show definitely won't attract as many people as a singing one. But it should be enough for it to get at least a 1% viewership rating for its premiere episode. How many TV shows these days can manage to surpass 1% in the nationwide viewership ratings on their premiere episode? I think only The Voice managed to do so this year. With a few more episodes, the later episodes of Rise to the Dance should still go up. It seems like the talk about it right now is quite good and a lot of people are watching it. I heard that Rise to the Dance will have their finals broadcast live. Back then, Central TV Department 1 did not give this privilege to The Voice even though Zhong Yi had applied for it many times. But that privilege has been given to Rise to the Dance now, so when it comes to the day of the live finals, there might be a chance that they can surpass The Voice's highest viewership ratings. Who says that the premiere episode can have 1% viewership ratings? I believe it would be at most 0.5%. Impossible, 1% and above is a definite figure. 1.5% is possible too. How fucking unfair. Central TV Department 1 is treating Rise to the Dance so differently from the way it treated The Voice. They even approved for the finals of Rise to the Dance to be broadcast live? Ahem, previous poster, actually, we cannot blame Central TV Department 1 for that. Don't you know about Teacher Jong's notoriety? When has a live broadcast involving Teacher Jong ever ended without a problem? The incident at Father Wei's memorial, the Shanghai SARFT press conference, they always ended in an earth-shattering uproar. It's fine for other people to do a live broadcast, but to let teacher Zhong Yi do that? Whose heart wouldn't tremble at the thought? If it were you, would you approve letting teacher Zhong do a live broadcast? So that's why all this has to do with teacher Zhong's reputation being really bad. So bad that everyone fears him. Oh yes, how is Zhong Yi's show doing? I don't know, I haven't watched it yet. You guys intend to watch a documentary? Fuck, you're all super amazing. Rise to the Dance has gone into their commercial break. I'll go and have a quick look at Zhong Yi's documentary. What's it called again? It's called A Bite of China. Chapter 813, Broadcast. End, at around 8 p.m. Central TV Department 1. There were evening shows on this channel, so other than the program team of Rise to the Dance, there were several other program teams of Central TV Department 1 working overtime as well. Some time ago, Zhong Yi had blasted some people of Central TV Department 1 on Weibo. Those were the ones who kicked him while he was down during the court case with Central TV Department 1. This had caused the relationship between many of the program teams and Zhong Yi to become even worse. In turn, they became even more attentive to what Zhong Yi did. At a certain interview program's recording studio. We're finally done recording. Everyone has worked hard. It's time to clock out now. Oh, has that Zhong Yi show started broadcasting yet? It should be broadcasting already. Let's watch. I want to see what kind of a lousy show he can come up with on his first try at a documentary. At a certain variety show's office at Central TV Department 1. Rise to the Dance is quite exciting. Yeah, it's guaranteed to get number one in the viewership ratings. How's Zhong Yi's documentary doing? It should already be broadcasting, but I'm not sure. 
Old Shu is still as capable and Zhong Yi will have to admit that this time. Okay, switch to channel 14, I want to see what that, bite of something, documentary is about, and see what Zhong Yi can come up with. During Rise to the Dance's commercial break, many of the viewers, whether they liked Zhong Yi or not, changed their channels to Central TV Department 14 with their remote controls. Compared to the passionate dance and music on Rise to the Dance, the moment they tuned into Channel 14, soothing background music greeted them. It was calm like the trickling of a river stream, like the feeling of floating on fluffy clouds. This was accompanied by the deep and magnetic voice of Zhong Yi narrating. After Sangi picks a mushroom, she carefully covers the hole with pine needles so that the mushroom can continue to grow. All villagers observe this rule. In the office. A central TV department one host mockingly laughed and shook his head. After watching the intense scenes of Rise to the Dance, who would want to watch such a slow-paced and uninteresting documentary? Beside him, a female staff member laughed and said, yeah, it's really too boring. Let's just knock off and go back home to sleep, said another person. There was also someone who went along with the crowd and added, if there's anything interesting, it's only that the visual impact is better due to the usage of HD video cameras, but other than that, it's still the usual documentary style we've always known. Aren't they just filming food? Who doesn't know how to film something like that? A lot of them laughed. But very quickly, all of them couldn't laugh anymore. The documentary continued broadcasting on television. Zhong Yi's voice wonderfully matched the scenes. Although the taste of pine mushrooms is very unique, they only became popular three decades ago. The main ingredient for another popular traditional Chinese dish is also found in mountain forests. Winter bamboo shoots are harvested and then sliced, before deep frying them in oil and adding in seasoning. When completed, it becomes the most common household dish that is prepared within the Zhejiang region. In China, many people live near bamboo growths and understand bamboo shoots very well. As the scenes of the forests flashed across the screen, the HD footage of the ingredients in their most raw and original forms in nature left everyone salivating. Those bamboo shoots could really whet one's appetite. Even if it were just the freshly harvested bamboo shoots, it was enough to make people unconsciously swallow their saliva. Even if they had already eaten and filled their stomachs, they could feel the freshness of the bamboo shoots rushing against their faces. Even through the television, it seemed like they could smell the wet fragrance of the grass seeds. The HD footage was undoubtedly amplifying this experience for them, leaving them fully immersed in the experience as though they were there in the forest. It was too beautiful. It felt, too real. Several of those program team staff who had been mocking the documentary earlier looked at each other, while everyone else who was watching A Bite of China in the office were shocked. A Bite of China continued. Many of those people had fallen silent, their eyes glued to the television screen. Every September, brothers Chi Hu and Chi Chen go to Jiayu County in Hubei to dig out lotus roots from the lake pit. This plant grows deep underneath the mud in the lake. The thing that Chi Hu has just dug out is called a lotus root. It is a kind of vegetable that is commonly found in lakes. As professional lotus root diggers, the brothers work away from home for seven months every year. During the lotus root harvesting season, they come from their home in Anhui to participate in the harvest. The work is hard, but the pay is good, so Chi Hu and Chi Chen are willing to engage in this hard work. Lotus root diggers love the cold weather. This is because lotus roots sell well when the weather is cold. Mud. Fresh lotus roots. Lotus root diggers. What were just some ordinary images gave these city dwellers a pleasant feeling. It was a feeling of happiness and joy that was difficult to describe in words. This was Zhong Yi's documentary? This was a bite of China? That central TV host suddenly broke the silence and lightly shook his head while laughing. We might have underestimated Zhong Yi. He has shot the documentary quite well there, but no matter how well he filmed it, it's still just a documentary. It will definitely not do well in the viewership ratings. A person nodded and said. Yeah, luckily it's just a documentary, otherwise. Otherwise what, a colleague beside that person asked. That person gave a wry smile. Otherwise the other shows broadcasting at the same time slot might have something to worry about. An assistant director who had argued with Zhong Yi on the internet before observed, that Zhong fellow. It's obviously his first attempt at doing a documentary. 
Why does he even know how to handle such an unpopular genre? No one answered him. Because no one had an answer. At Yang Tianfei's house, Old Yang and his wife's family were watching television together. Only Old Yang constantly said, it's too well shot, it's really too well shot. This type of documentary wouldn't have any problem winning a documentary award for sure. His wife beside him agreed, this documentary is great to watch. So a documentary can even be made this way. I've never bothered watching any shows on your channel in the past, but this A Bite of China seems completely different from other documentaries, yet not completely different at the same time. Hi, old Yang, turn up the volume, I can't hear it. Yang Tianfei gave a slight sigh. How pitiful, it's really such a pity. His wife asked, what's the matter? Yang Tianfei replied, it's such a pity with Zhong Yi's capabilities. If he did not get handed a documentary project to handle this time, he would probably have had a chance to compete with Rise to the Dance. Our department has really held him back here. Even though his wife felt that A Bite of China was good, she also understood that no matter how good a niche show like a documentary was, it would not be able to compete with a variety show. As a result, she just continued watching the show without saying another word. Zhong Yi's parents' house. His mother continued watching the documentary in astonishment. Son, this is the documentary you shot? Yes. Zhong Yi chuckled. It's quite good, isn't it? His mother said, it's great. This is right up my alley and just my type of show to watch. Pausing, she continued, but it might not be so for other people. I believe a majority of the viewers won't be able to accept it. Zhong Yi asked, why not? Because documentaries are only for a minority of the viewers, his mother answered matter-of-factly. Zhong Yi asked again, why is it only for a minority of the viewers? His mother said, because it's a documentary. Zhong Yi gave up. Fine then. Zhong Yi understood the concept of, nobody would watch a documentary. In this world, the hearts of people were too deeply ingrained with this mindset. Even if a lot of people liked this documentary when they watched it, no one thought that others would feel the same way as them and like the documentary as well. Chen Chen suddenly said, Zhong Yi, I'm hungry. Zhong Yi dismissively told her, go and cook yourself some instant noodles. Chen Chen pointed to the television. I want some stir-fried bamboo shoots. His mother laughed and ruffled Chen Chen's head. The restaurant is still open. Let grandma order takeout for you. Just as well, I'm getting hungry from watching the documentary too. His father added, order hunted lotus roots as well. At Central TV Department 14, everyone still stayed put at the office. But with the same thoughts as Zhong Yi, the group of Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others were tuned in to watch the broadcast of Rise to the Dance. Little Wang said angrily, what is the audience so hyped about? Ha Chichi sighed as she browsed through Weibo on her cell phone. The audience's reception seems to be quite good. With so many promotions and those guest coaches, could they be unpopular? Jongs were also said with a heavy heart. Did you guys really expect that our documentary had a chance against them? Wu Yi insisted, how many people can understand an art like dancing? Jongs were shook his head. But at least they will understand it more than a documentary, right? The explosive debut of the popular Rise to the Dance had dealt this program team a great blow. It extinguished any last hopes they had for Rise to the Dance earning a bad reputation by doing terribly in the viewership, and getting a lowly 0.3% viewership rating. If their documentary did not do badly, they would not be too far off from Rise to the Dance or even outdo them in the viewership ratings. But as of now, they knew that there was no hope. Rise to the Dance did not experience an unexpected failure. As for them? They're a bite of China? As they were talking, Tong Fu suddenly exclaimed. Quick, have a look at this, he announced rather loudly. Ha Chichi was startled by that and remarked, Whoa, did someone step on your foot? Zhongs were looked over to him. What's the matter? Look at what? Tong Fu quickly explained, Look at the comments. Go on to Weibo and read the comments. Everyone was wondering why Tong Fu had such an astonished reaction, so one by one, all of them went to check their Weibo. When they saw it, they were also quite dumbfounded by it and couldn't react for a moment. There were too many comments by the netizens. 
before they could really read the contents of the comments, their attention was already taken by the words, A Bite of China. It's such a great show. Goddammit, a documentary can even be filmed this way? Is this what a HD video camera can do? How awesome! The imagery is so exquisite that it looks like an expensively produced movie. Zhong Yi has really brought documentaries to a godly level. I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. This is the first time I've seen such a documentary style. If Rise to the Dance did not go to commercial break, I wouldn't have switched to channel 14. Once I tuned into this channel, I couldn't stop watching. This is really good. John Yi's reputation is indeed great. I only watched this for John Yi. I didn't expect much at first, but who could have known that a bite of China could give me such a great surprise? This documentary is ridiculously innovative. 10,000 likes. I couldn't stop watching once I started. Yao Jiantsai suddenly posted on Weibo, recommending my old bro Zhong's new show, A Bite of China, which is currently showing on television. Everyone, go and watch. It's so good that I'm getting gastric pain just from watching. Beijing Television's Hu Fei, I'm wholly convinced. Dong Shanshan, strongly recommending A Bite of China. This century's most popular documentary. John Yu Inch's manager, Fang Wei Hong, what a surprise. Teacher Zhong Yi's shows are always so sincere and so astonishing. Grandma Zhong Xia forwarded a Weibo post, this is what you call a real documentary. How interesting. A famous documentary director of the industry, I never expected that in the downturn of the market environment, someone could still create new heights with a documentary. Here's to recommending a bite of China. Even though you can't expect a documentary to make much of an impact in the viewership ratings, nor can it compete against a variety show, but I feel that every documentary director could actually learn from a bite of China's filming techniques and logic of story delivery. This will inspire many people, including me as well. A sea of praise. Almost everyone who watched a bite of China was calling it good. Ha Chichi was stunned on the spot. Zhongzhuo was dumbfounded. Everyone in a bite of China's program team had a look of surprise on their faces because none of them had much of an expectation regarding their documentary. They did not expect that this would happen. Central TV Department 1. In the program team office of Rise to the Dance. Xu Yipeng was looking at the LCD TV that hung on the wall of the program team office. He was watching the fifth contestant who had just come on stage, and was all smiles. Occasionally, he would nod his head in approval. He was also extremely satisfied as he listened to the staff member beside him reporting about the Weibo comments, and how the show's popularity was rising. The show was definitely going to be popular. That was without a doubt. The only question left was how much viewership their premiere episode would garner. At this time, a staff member suddenly stammered, D. Director Xu, Director C. H. Chen. What's the matter? Chen Yi said, also with a big grin on his face, as he turned to the staff. Ah, uh, I don't know if I should say this, but... That staffer still said anyway, Department 14's A Bite of China is also beginning to trend. Chen Yi did not pay much attention to this. Oh. Xu Yipeng laughed and asked, what's everyone's comments about it? Everyone is saying that it's not bad. That staff phrased his words very carefully. There is much praise about it. Chen Yi shook his head and said, that's very normal. John Yi is a B-list celebrity and his fans still number quite a lot. There are surely some loyal, diehard fans who support him, so that's no surprise. Besides, they're just a niche documentary genre, so it'll definitely get more praise unlike variety shows which are always going to get more criticism than praise. Xu Yipeng also had a look at the comments made by some people regarding A Bite of China. Then he said, looks like Zhong Yi did not mess up his documentary, but no matter what, it's still just a documentary, so they shouldn't even think about what their viewership ratings will be. No matter how well it does, they will at most get a documentary award later on. Um, but that might not be definite either, since Zhong Yi's reputation is so bad. He has offended people from at least seven or eight industries, so he might not get considered even if he were to qualify for a good award. Even now, they still thought nothing of a bite of China. Since the beginning, they had not considered a bite of China to be a competitor at all, 
because they knew that an applauded program might not necessarily be a hit with everyone. A documentary had always been made with getting an award in mind. There was never a need to consider whether it would be a hit or not, because even if they did, there was no meaning to that. This was because 90% of the audience would not even want to watch a documentary. A documentary should only be concerned about its reputation and would go the artistic route, while their variety shows did not rely on needing a good reputation or getting praised. They were more concerned about whether it would be a hit with the masses, and how it would do in the viewership ratings. Thus, these two genres of shows were essentially not competing on the same playing field. There was nothing for them to compete on. They wouldn't compete with a documentary for public praise. Similarly, a documentary should never need to concern itself on competing with variety shows for viewership ratings. A call arrived. Hufei also had the same opinion of things. Hello, Brother Hu. Zhong Yi went back into his room to answer the call. Hufei laughed loudly, you're really great. Quietly going away for two months and disappearing from the scene. So you were in fact preparing for something big. This documentary is so well filmed. I'm watching your show in the office with Xiao Lu, Dafei, Dong Shanshan, and the rest. Everyone is praising how good you were and are so happy for you. Zhong Yi laughed and said, thank you to all of you. Hu Fei asked, you really know how to shoot a documentary? And even managed to shoot it so well like this? Zhong Yi humbly replied, I was just blindly doing it. Have you seen Weibo? The top three documentary directors have all given their likes to A Bite of China and their comments of you are also very good. I think that you will definitely win this year's top documentary awards. There's no doubt about that. Hu Fei was really very happy for him and he said, but you shouldn't think too much about the viewership ratings. There's definitely no chance there. You should just work hard while you're at Department 14 and aim for the most prestigious award for documentaries. That will be good enough. Zhong Yi only gave a light smile to that and did not wish to argue about this anymore. After hanging up, Zhong Yi browsed through Weibo to look at the comments from the netizens. After some consideration, he felt that the situation now was rather different from what he had predicted. It had surpassed his expectations. Was it too unpopular? It was exactly the opposite of that. It was too popular. According to Zhong Yi's previous predictions, a bite of China was supposed to bear disgrace and a heavy burden. After all, for the original A Bite of China in his previous world, what was the premiere episode's viewership rating? It was a mere 0.012%. It couldn't even garner a fraction of the worst performing variety show's viewership rating. That was why Zhong Yi had hoped that the documentary would gain an early reputation before erupting on its accumulated momentum of popularity. However, the love for the show that came from the audience rather surprised Zhong Yi. He knew that some of the measures he had taken were seeing a result now. Like the controversy behind his scheduling of the broadcast time to clash with Rise to the Dance. Like using his vast popularity which rubbed off on a bite of China. All of these were the differences. These were the reasons for the popularity gained in advance by a bite of China. The A Bite of China of this world was already traveling on a different path, with a different setup, and a different broadcast momentum from the original A Bite of China in his previous world. Perhaps, there was no need for good preparation to ensure its success? Perhaps, it was already time for the shows to compete and fight it out? Zhong Yi pondered it, before finally taking out his cell phone and calling Yang Tianfei. Hello, Director Yang. It's something urgent. I would like to make some last-minute changes to the broadcast time of A Bite of China. Yang Tianfei muttered, what changes? I would like for A Bite of China to broadcast two episodes in a row starting tonight. We will broadcast all the way until around 10 p.m. Zhong Yi added, so that we can end at the same time as Rise to the Dance. According to the broadcast schedule back then, A Bite of China would end before 9 p.m. while Rise to the Dance would run for two hours including advertisements. That would mean that after A Bite of China has finished the first episode, there would still be another hour's broadcast of Rise to the Dance. Yang Tianfei said, the schedule is already set. Although it's not like we can't change it, it's quite troublesome to do that. We would have to contact a lot of departments to get it through, so is there a need to do something like that? Zhong Yi said determinedly, I feel that there is a need. 
Yang Tianfei asked, why? Zhong Yi kept quiet for a few seconds, then replied, I'll tell you the reason tomorrow. Tomorrow? Why would you only give the reason tomorrow? Yang Tianfei was taken aback, but did not ask any further. All right, I will make the arrangements for you. There are still 20 minutes until the end of the first episode, so we can still make it. I will get someone to put up a scrolling notice on screen to let the audience know. As long as there are people watching a bite of China, they will definitely see it. I'm sorry about that, Director Yang. I know I'm being willful, Zhong Yi apologized. But Yang Qianfei said, you're the overall supervisor of the program team for a bite of China, as well as the executive director. You have your considerations and can judge for yourself, so I'll just have to take your word for it. Zhong Yi declared, thank you so much. I'll contact the others. I'm going back to the office immediately. They were from the documentary channel, so this decision would not affect any hosts or other program teams. The documentary that they had originally scheduled for 9 p.m. was a licensed documentary that they had bought. By pushing it to the back of the schedule to broadcast so late at night, they might as well not broadcast it at all. No one would say a thing anyway, and neither would the audience mind, since no one would be watching it. Therefore, even though it was a last-minute change, it wouldn't affect anything much. After hanging up, Zhong Yi quickly put on his coat. Dad, Mom, I'm heading back to the office. It's something urgent. Then he called up Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others by the by, who were still in the office working. Old Ha, tell everyone not to leave yet. I'll be right back. Zhong Yi said. Ha Chichi asked in surprise, Ah? Didn't you already clock out? Zhong Yi laughed, I guess you guys knew better by not leaving first. I'll explain when I get back to the office. Online. Very soon, people found out about the news of this change. On the broadcast of A Bite of China, the notice scrolled across the screen. Zhong Yi and the official Weibo of Department 14 also sent out an update to let everyone know. The netizens got an unexpected surprise. Wow, it's a back-to-back -back broadcast. That's so awesome. How ethical of the industry. Ha ha ha, I was still worried about not having enough to watch. The food I just ordered hasn't arrived yet. Seems like it will come just in time for the second episode's broadcast. Back-to-back -back episodes? Then wouldn't the broadcast be as long as Rise to the Dance? Ah, uh, what is Teacher Jong trying to do? Why do I get the feeling that this is not a simple adjustment? Could this change be directed at Rise to the Dance? Fuck, you guys are looking too deep into this. Even if they were to broadcast 10 episodes back to back, do you guys think that a documentary can beat a variety show, much less with just two episodes? Or would it be the large-scale talent show funded by a huge investment and having big names in it? If such a situation really happens, then the people of Central TV Department 1 should just vomit blood and jump off a building. Do you want to deal such a heavy blow to all the television station's variety shows? Everyone knows how unrealistic that is. Ah, uh, you're right too. Who cares about all that? It's fine as long as they broadcast it. The talk about a bite of China might be good and even though there is a lot more discussion about it now, there isn't anyone who would actually watch it. My guess is that it's just us who like it. Well, there's nothing we can do about that. This show is too niche. Wow, why didn't they show any advertisements before going to the next second episode? A Bite of China did not sell any ad spots? Who do you think would want to buy a documentary's advertisements? That's true. Let's not speculate anymore. Who cares if the others like this show as long as I like it myself? I'll go watch the second episode now, ha ha. I'll go as well. I'm so looking forward to it. The second episode. Title, Staple Food Stories. Staple foods usually provide most of the calories needed by people. The cooking styles of the Chinese vary in many different ways, from the most ordinary pot of rice or a steamed bun, to the myriad of delicately prepared staple foods that are the accumulated experience of the hard work by the Chinese. No matter how many dishes have been had, the staple food will always remain the main dish to be served on the dining tables of the Chinese. The music was soothing. The heat vapor from the dishes looked as though it was rising out from the screen. 
with the positive talk of the show building up, more and more people were tuning to Channel 14. Even those who did not watch the first episode but heard about a bite of China from the internet or their friends, and neighbors tuned in out of curiosity to see what this documentary was about. As a result, it went out of control. A lot of them ending up not changing the channel after they started watching for a few seconds. Chapter 814, The Viewership Ratings Are Out. The next day. Saturday morning. After he went downstairs and got into the car, Zhong Yi drove straight to the newspaper stand near the district's entrance. He put on his sunglasses and got out of the car to buy some newspapers. The newspaper stand's owner already knew that Zhong Yi stayed around the area and would come here very often to buy newspapers, so even though he was wearing sunglasses, the owner still recognized him immediately. You're here, teacher Zhong? The owner smiled. Zhong Yi nodded. Yeah, give me a copy each of Youth Daily, Morning Post, and Beijing Times. All right. The newsstand owner adept picked out three copies of newspapers and passed it to him. You're working today? Yeah, there's a bunch of things waiting for me to do. I can't even rest on Saturday. Zhong Yi paid him the money. I watched your documentary last night. The new stand owner said excitedly, Ayo, it's so good that it's indescribable. I started watching from the second episode, before playing and watching the first episode after that. It was the same for my neighbors who watched it. All of them said that they'd never watched such a good documentary before. It's even more enticing than watching a television series. When is the next episode going to be? Zhong Yi smiled and said, next Friday. The owner, okay, I'll definitely catch it. Zhong Yi, thank you for your support then. The owner, no worries. We're all neighbors. Across the street, a few grandpas and grandmas walked in the opposite direction of Zhong Yi. They were all old neighbors with Zhong Yi. There was a person who stayed in the same apartment building as Zhong Yi's family too. Naturally, he got recognized immediately. Hey, little Yi. Grandma Kui, Grandpa Sun, you're out buying groceries? Yes, you're going to work. Yes, I have some overtime to clock today. Your A Bite of China was really well made. Yo, you all watched it too. Of course, how can we not watch a show of yours? It's good, it's very good. Haha, <laughs> thank you so much. I will continue to work even harder. Do you have the later episode contents with you? Let's have an advanced screening of them. Ah? There are regulations set by the department about such things. I can't bring out any of the contents that have been lined up for broadcast. You're the program team's supervisor. Shouldn't everything be decided by you? Don't you have a say in the regulations? Then why not tell us what the next episode is about? Only after some hassling was Zhong Yi able to get himself out of there. After he got back to his car, he took the newspapers and sat in the car as he browsed through them. A bite of China garners great reviews. Zhong Yi displays an astonishing directorial debut in his first documentary series. Last night, Zhong Yi announced to all industry insiders with his work, a documentary can be done this way too. Famed documentary filmmaker praises a bite of China. Calls for all documentary directors to learn from it. Yao Jinsai, Chen Guang, Dong Shanshan, and many more give their support to a bite of China. According to figures from online vendors, from 8 to 11 p.m. last night, several of the dishes featured on a bite of China received seven times the usual amount of orders from customers. Many of the eateries that did not know what was happening called the online vendor to check if there was an error in the system. Could this be the end of the downturn for the documentary genre? Zhong Yi's reputation and hallmark is still as loud as ever. Guessing the viewership ratings for a bite of China. In the past five years, the highest nationwide viewership rating for documentaries was at 0.172%. The average viewership rating was 0.034%. Could a bite of China rewrite history? Surveyed industry insiders and professionals predict a pessimistic viewership rating for a bite of China. The documentary genre has long been weak with a niche audience base. It cannot be relied upon to contribute to a good viewership rating. What is most important for a documentary is still whether it can garner good reviews, while a low viewership rating is a common outcome. In any case, a bite of China has actually succeeded already. 
a large-scale documentary that amazes people. How much more talent can Zhong Yi produce from his mind? Seeing the newspapers filled with reports about a bite of China, Zhong Yi was very satisfied at this. Even if he flipped through the pages to see that the rest of the news was all taken up by reports of rise to the dance, which numbered at least two to three times more than theirs, he did not feel very surprised by it. For a variety show with so many big-name celebrities, it was very normal for it to get that kind of exposure. Hence Zhong Yi put the car into gear, stepped on the accelerator, and drove off to Central TV. At the office. It was a rest day today, but there were still quite a lot of people who came to work. An organization like a television station was usually like this. Sometimes, it would even get busier during the holidays than on a normal working day. He got out of his car and walked toward the main entrance. As he was walking there, Zhong Yi received a lot of attention from the people around. Many curious gazes fell upon him, as everyone occasionally pointed at him while they discussed and talked. Look, it's Zhong Yi. Which of you guys watched A Bite of China last night? I watched it. It was simply amazing. I wasn't thinking of watching it at first, but when I got home after working late last night, I saw my parents and aunt watching A Bite of China, so I just watched it with them in passing. But somehow, I ended up watching the entire show until 10 p.m. I have to admit that Zhong Yi really brought this documentary to life. There's a lot of praise about it on the internet. I saw that. Everyone's giving it likes. Central TV Department 1 still wishes to freeze Zhong Yi? This guy is so amazing. How can they possibly keep him frozen? Yeah, no matter where this man goes, he's always able to shine. We can't say that. There can't be too many people who watch a bite of China. It's just that it's getting praised, but it won't have much of a viewership in the end. At most it would earn a zero. Zero something percent in the viewership ratings, so how is that different from being frozen? It's totally disproportionate to Zhong Yi's popularity as a B-list celebrity and it won't at all help him advance further. Of course it won't be able to compete with Rise to the Dance. But they produced a documentary to such a level, so what else do you expect from a bite of China? If a documentary really outdoes such a large-scale talent show like Rise to the Dance, then the world must surely be crazy. Well, their results now are already quite good. That's right, don't assess a documentary using a variety show's standards. That's unfair. Looking at everything, Rise to the Dance is actually considered popular. Even though there are mixed reviews about it, there's no doubt about its popularity. There aren't any issues with the show's quality either. I watched it yesterday and find it to be rather good. Chen Yi is going to get popular this time as well. Yeah. He's incredibly lucky to be able to get this show at such a great time. The way it goes, when Rise to the Dance finishes its broadcast, Chen Yi might even end up becoming more popular than Zhong Yi. Even if he doesn't catch up to him, at least the gap between them won't be that big anymore. Rise to the Dance is leading the way again. Central TV Department 1 will end up as the big winner here. No matter how great Zhong Yi does, a documentary is still just going to be a documentary. Even if it's popular or has good influence, it still boils down to the viewership ratings in the end. Everything else is pointless. The only question left now is whether the premiere episode of Rise to the Dance can exceed 1%. A 1% viewership rating shouldn't be an issue at all. With the popularity effect persisting from the voice, it should have brought a lot of viewers to Rise to the Dance. Upstairs. Department 14, Program Team Office of a Bite of China. Zhong Yi had arrived a little late for work due to some delays on the way here. When he got here, he found Yang Qianfei with his secretary standing in the office area of his program team. Little Zhong, you've arrived? Yang Qianfei turned around and greeted him with a smile. Ha Chichi and the others also greeted him as well. Director Zhong. Good morning, Director Zhong. A very good morning to you, Director Zhong. Everyone seemed very excited and were in good spirits as well. Zhong Yi quickly said, Director Yang, you're here? Yang Qianfei nodded. In recent days, it's been quite hard on your program team. Everyone climbed mountains and waded through seas, working tirelessly. 
the reactions to the broadcast of A Bite of China was rather good, so I came here to extend my regards to everyone, especially to you, Teacher Little Zhong. It was mainly due to you that we successfully broadcast the documentary this time. Zhongyi laughed and waved it off. I don't deserve that. It was due to Director Yang's leadership and everyone working hard together. Yang Tianfei asked, since the show has garnered a lot of praise, what are your plans for next week's broadcast? Zhong Yi said, we won't do a back-to-back -back broadcast next week, but I would like to have one episode broadcast on Friday, followed by another one on Saturday. We will broadcast two days in a row so that we can consolidate the popularity of the show. All right, I'll leave it to you to decide. Yang Tianfei purposely paused for a moment, and then chuckled, there's another piece of good news that I want to inform everyone about. We received a call this morning from the selection committee of this year's television awards. They want to include a bite of China as a nominee for best documentary. We've only broadcast it for a day and there are only two episodes, but the selection committee has already made an exception to nominate our program. This is the first time something like this has happened with the awards committee. Ah? Are you serious? That's great. Well, we have a chance to win an award. Everyone was ecstatic. Wasn't all of the hard work they'd put in for the past two months just for a moment like this? Zhong Yi laughed, but not as excitedly as the others. To him, getting an award was of course good, but his focus was still on the viewership ratings. Director, when will the viewership ratings be released? Yang Tianfei was taken aback. Viewership ratings? Oh, around 10 o'clock. Then on further thought, Yang Qianfei said to him, Little Zhong, the nomination for a bite of China this time is no ordinary award. It's the most prestigious award in the country for documentaries and it's also the highest honor that a documentary can get domestically. Our focus right now is to ensure that we can win this award. As for the viewership ratings, I believe that the selection committee is not going to focus on that. After all, a documentary's viewership ratings are usually not high, and every documentary performs similarly so there's nothing to really compare. If the judging were to be based on that, then nothing could be judged. In the end, everything still depends on the reputation and artistic level of the documentary. Zhong Yi replied, I understand. So let me give you a heads up first. Yang Qianfei was afraid that the viewership difference would be too vast. It's still the same as I said before. Don't expect too much of the viewership ratings. Yang Tianfei's secretary also said with a grin, yes, Director Zhong. The viewership rating of our A Bite of China does not necessarily have to compete with variety shows. As long as we do better than the other shows of the same genre, that should be good enough. The outstanding praise for A Bite of China excited everyone to no end. But the mention of viewership ratings was avoided by everyone, while they only continued discussing about the nomination for the most prestigious award. This was because, even though there was so much praise for A Bite of China, no one believed that they could compare to shows such as Rise to the Dance and Do You Remember. This was not due to their lack of confidence, but rather because they knew that it was not a possibility at all whatsoever. Central TV Department 1 Director Jiang Naixiong and Deputy Director Jiang Yuan were talking in their office. Are the viewership ratings out yet? Jiang Naixiong asked. Jiang Yuan answered, not yet, today's calculations are taking a little longer. I've already called them up several times, but they said that they were still preparing it. It should be ready by around 10 o'clock, or 9.30 if earlier. Jiang Naixiong looked at his watch and mentioned, it won't be long then. Jiang Yuan smiled and said, yes, when the viewership ratings are out, we'll finally know the results. I am quite confident in Old Shu and Chen Yi. From the click rates and hashtag numbers, the viewership ratings will definitely be very high. Of course, it's not likely that we can match up to the voice's viewership ratings for now, but there's a high probability that it will catch up from behind. Jiang Naixiong was also looking very relaxed, laughing as he stated, that's good. This key project must do well. The entirety of Central TV and the entire industry are all waiting to see how we would do. Jiang Yuan reassured, don't worry, everything will be fine. I heard that Department 14's documentary is also receiving rather good praise. Jiang Naixiong inquired. Jiang Yuan answered without even thinking, it's not bad, but it's just the echo chamber effect. 
there can't be anyone who watched it when they don't even have the money to do promotions for it. Since there were no advertisements for the documentary, who would watch it? It's only John Yee's hardcore fans who are making a lot of noise over it. At most they'd get 0.1% of the viewership ratings, tops. Downstairs. At the program team office of Rise to the Dance, everyone was also discussing this. In the newspapers, headlines of their show took up at least half the front page, giving everyone an unprecedented sense of confidence. In the office area, many of the staff were already talking about holding a celebratory feast. Director Xu, treat us. Right, Director Xu, Director Chen, it's your treat. It's all because of Director Xu and Teacher Chen that we could do this. The entire country's media and Weibo users are all discussing our show. I've heard rumors that there are already some television stations who want to follow in our footsteps. Tianjin Television already intends to launch a dancing talent show next year. Our show has gotten really popular. Do you remember, Family Happiness, those shows can all take a seat. Yeah, our viewership ratings are definitely going to crush all of the other variety shows. We will definitely get the honor of being number one in the nationwide viewership ratings. Who else is there? Who else can fight against us for the top spot? The group of them were gloating, feeling extremely thrilled about it. Xu Yipeng laughed. The viewership ratings are still not out yet. A female staff member giggled, do we even need to wait for the statistics to be released? It's already guaranteed. Chen Yi also said, among the variety shows in the same time slot, there really are none that can compete with us. Even if Do You Remember has made some new changes to their show, it's not enough to stand up to us. On Weibo. Countless people took part in the discussion. What's the viewership rating for Rise to the Dance? It's still not released yet. With our sect leader Hua on the show, the viewership ratings can only be invincible. Chen Yi, I'm cheering you on. You'll surely do well. Rise to the Dance is unstoppable now. Central TV Department 1 is rising quite unexpectedly in the field of variety. I'm actually more curious about a bite of China's viewership rating. Previous poster, there's nothing to worry about. A bite of China's viewership rating should just be compared with other similar types of documentaries and not with variety shows. But a bite of China is produced by John Yi. That won't make a difference. You're just asking for the impossible. Haha, ha, yet another sheep from a bite of China's camp. You guys must have been trying to contribute to the traffic and discussions the whole of last night, right? Are you tired yet? Isn't that enough already? What's the point of trying to inflate the numbers for a lousy documentary? You even think there's a chance for the viewership ratings? Even if we just take the fractional part of the viewership rating for Rise to the Dance, it would be several times more than a bite of China's viewership rating. I really wonder if you guys understand anything at all. Hey, it's out. What's out? I think the viewership ratings are out. Wow, where is it? I want to have a look. At 9.40 a.m., the statistics were published. The netizens were looking at the online copy of it, while Rise to the Dance's program team staff were looking at the internally circulated copy. Actually, it was the same copy except that they received it earlier. Xu Yiping and Chen Yi were holding a copy of the viewership ratings table each. It's out, it's out. How much did we get? Who, I feel a little bit nervous. Director Xu, how much did we get? Quickly announce it. Ayo, you're really keeping everyone in suspense. Everyone stared at the two directors. Then, they saw Chen Yi break out into a smile as he said to everyone, it's quite good. Xu Yiping held the viewership ratings table in his hand and waved it at everyone. Rise to the Dance's first episode viewership rating is 1.27%. Without a doubt, we are the top-rated variety show in the entire country. Hearing that, everyone cheered. That's so great. Ha ha, cool. I knew it. 1.27%? The premiere episode has exceeded 1%. It's really quite good. How many variety shows these days can break zero? 5% with their premiere broadcast? Among those that could break 1% this year, other than The Voice, Rise to the Dance is the only other show. 
we can finally enjoy the celebratory feast. With this momentum, we can still get even better ratings in the future. Even if this viewership rating was not as logic-defying as they had expected, it was still much higher than their minimum expectations. It could be said that this was a satisfactory result, although not perfect. Chen Yi, suddenly reminded by something, smiled and said, Oh yes, what is the viewership rating of a bite of China? Xu Yipeng also smiled and replied, It's not stated on this table, but it should be available online, right? Chen Yi gloated, I'll go and take a look. Thinking of Zhong Yi's rotten fruit poem from back then, Chen Yi and the others were all waiting to see him make a fool of himself. Chapter 815, The Entire World Stills. Central TV Documentary Channel. Many of their colleagues, including those from Section 1 and 2, had all gathered around at Zhong Yi's Section 3 office space to look at the newly released viewership ratings. As the viewership ratings for documentaries and variety shows were not released together, they did not receive the statistics for their documentary yet. Instead, they were checking out Rise to the Dance's viewership ratings on the internet like the other netizens. Harchichi was shocked, 1.27%. They really managed to exceed 1%. Jongs were pulled a long face and said, and it's not just barely past 1%? Little Wang felt depressed and groaned, what's so good about that lousy show? Wu Yi sighed. There were cases of manipulated viewership ratings some years back, but since the strict crackdown, that practice has been quashed. These days, the viewership ratings can no longer be faked. Tong Fu piped up, actually, a 1.27% viewership rating was still within expectations. Don't forget that they invested 100 million or more into this production. They also managed to invite big name celebrities like Hua Dongfang, Fan Wenli, and Shen Lili, while the following and audience viewing habits that The Voice brought to Central TV Department 1 has also helped them a lot. If they did not manage to pass a viewership rating of 1%, it would have been quite an unrealistic outcome. Some of them glanced at Zhong Yi and saw that he did not have much of an expression on his face. Yang Qianfei also looked indifferent and did not seem bothered by the high viewership ratings of Rise to the Dance. After the others grumbled for a while, they didn't say any more as they knew it was not their business whether Rise to the Dance had a high or low viewership rating. No matter how low the viewership ratings were for Rise to the Dance, they still wouldn't have a chance to compete with them. A staff member from a different department walked with quick strides into the office with a form in his hand. Director Yang, the nationwide viewership ratings for yesterday's documentaries are out. Yang Qianfei nodded. Great. This caught everyone's attention, their hearts jumping into their throats. Zhong Yi also narrowed his eyes and looked over. That person left the viewership ratings table behind before departing. After he left, Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others immediately surrounded the area and stared anxiously at that piece of paper. On the first row, they saw their show indicated as the first name on it. December 10. The nationwide viewership rankings for documentaries, first place, the viewership rating for the first episode of A Bite of China is 0.32%. When the program team saw this result, they were a little dumbfounded. First place. We're first. It's really us. Zero. 32%? Fuck, how can that be? This, this is our viewership rating? Are you sure it's not a mistake? It's really 0.32%? Yang Qianfei was also shocked and his expression froze for a moment. Let me take a look. He took the form from them and looked at it carefully. It was truly a viewership rating of 0.32%. They were far ahead, several times ahead, of the second place show, which was an imported documentary also broadcast by their department 14. Everyone took a deep breath. The best result for documentaries in the nationwide viewership ratings in recent years was only zero. 172%, but the first episode of A Bite of China was already almost two times higher than that figure. This is too exaggerated. This is too scary. It needed be made clear that theirs was just a documentary. Looking at this. The viewership ratings for the first episode of A Bite of China was almost the same when compared to some of the more average large-scale variety shows and also could be mentioned in the same breath with them. What concept was this? It was a concept that would totally leave people in disbelief. Little Wang exclaimed, holy shit. 
Our documentary can really compete with a variety show's viewership rating? Yang Tianfei was so excited that he banged his hand on the table. Little Zhong. Beautifully executed. Everyone erupted with excitement. This is awesome. We're defying all common sense. Comparing a documentary with a variety show? Who would even try to consider this in the past? Ha 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 ha. Director Zhong, we've set a new record for documentaries. How cool. I didn't dare to think about the viewership ratings before this. Who could have thought that our viewership rating would be this high? Looking at our share of the viewership, it's already very heaven-defying. Everyone was celebrating. Except for Zhong Yi, who asked, what about the viewership rating for the second episode? As it was broadcast separately as two episodes, the viewership rating for the first episode was shown while the statistics for the second episode had not yet been calculated and was thus not included in the report. Yang Tianfei's secretary said, in most cases, for the broadcast of back-to-back -back episodes, the tabulation of the viewership ratings for the second episode is done a little slower, but it should be out soon. Let's wait a while more, but it should be about the same as the first episode. Online. Everyone also saw the viewership rating for the first episode of A Bite of China. Ah. It's so high. Goddammit, a documentary can achieve such a high viewership rating too? Zhong Yi is too awesome. Fuck, the viewership ratings of a documentary can even compare to a variety show that didn't perform too well. Am I dreaming? Zhong Yi is invincible. Damn. I've already said that A Bite of China is awesome, right? Ha ha ha. He has set yet another record. So it turns out that there were actually a lot of people watching A Bite of China. A. Hey, why isn't there a rating for the second episode? Oh right, where's the second episode's rating? It's not shown? It's still not out yet? Why are they taking so long? Hurry. Simultaneously, the industry was also shocked. The famous documentary director who praised Zhong Yi on Weibo yesterday also posted the documentary viewership ratings table for yesterday's broadcast and wrote on Weibo, congratulations to Zhong Yi and a bite of China. Beijing Television's Hu Fei, at a bite of China official, you guys are the absolute best. Singer Chen Guang, oh my god. Fan Wenli, congratulations to Rise to the Dance and a bite of China. Yao Jinsai, I thought that I was the only one who liked watching a bite of China, but it's not like that at all. An obscure TV show director Riley posted, even a documentary can get such a viewership rating. Director Zhong, can you please leave us alone in peace? A famous female host of Shenzhen Satellite TV, I'm dazed. Is this still even an unloved and uncared for documentary? She posted that along with a cute emoji with rolling eyes. These discussions and Weibo already reflected clearly what everyone was feeling now. It was unbelievable. It could even be said that it was a miracle. There had never been a documentary in the country that had scored such a shocking viewership rating. Central TV Department 1. Jiang Naixiong called Jiang Yuan. How did a bite of China get such a high viewership rating? Actually, Jiang Yuan didn't expect it either. I don't know. I never expected that so many people would watch their show. It must be Zhong Yi's hardcore fans supporting him. For a viewership rating of 0.32%, how many hardcore fans would he need to have? Over 10 million fans? Obviously, Jiang Naixiong did not agree with this statement. This Zhong Yi can really stir up things. Jiang Yuan replied, no matter what he does, he won't be able to make a wave. The popularity of a show still depends on its viewership ratings. Even if he can become the best in the documentary industry, but when compared to the variety show industry, his viewership rating can't rank among us. That's why we won't have to worry that he might get somewhere. Jiang Naixiong just acknowledged that. Elsewhere. The Rise to the Dance program team was also stunned. Chen Yi furrowed his brows so much that his eyebrows nearly touched. Is this viewership ratings table reliable? It, it should be correct, right, answered a staff member with a stutter. Another male staff member wondered, is this viewership rating even possible? It's just a documentary. Actually, no one had put Zhong Yi and a bite of China in their sights before this, 
so the viewership ratings for the first episode truly startled them. It was way too high and obviously not a viewership rating that a documentary could possibly achieve. What had John Yi done? I'm in disbelief. This John Yi is really capable. Besides, they even broadcast at the same time slot as our rise to the dance. Even so, they can still achieve such a high viewership rating? It means that they have taken part of our viewership rating. It should only happen for the first episode. Don't you realize that the viewership ratings for the second episode aren't out yet? Yeah, everyone was just tuning in for the first episode because of Zhong Yi's popularity. But when it's time to show us what they've got, I don't believe a documentary will have any sustainability in keeping viewers. Xu Yiping interrupted everyone's discussion and laughed, that's enough. Is a show with only 0.32% of the viewership ratings enough to make you all feel so surprised? This result is just a little more than a fraction of our viewership rating. When everyone thought about it, it was indeed as he said. As the executive director, Xu Yiping thought deeper and further than them. After he saw a bite of China's viewership rating, he was shocked at first, but that quickly turned to joy. It was a good thing that a bite of China had a high viewership rating. The viewership rating for Rise to the Dance was initially assessed to be not enough, but from the looks of it, that was because a bite of China had taken a part of their viewership rating. In his opinion, the viewership rating of a bite of China surely couldn't sustain, as a documentary usually didn't gain a following. There were people who followed variety shows, or followed television dramas, but have you ever seen anyone following a documentary? This was due to a lot of documentaries not having a continuity in their storylines. That was why when A Bite of China lost its momentum, the dispersed viewers would surely come back to watch Rise to the Dance and pull their show's viewership ratings to even greater heights. After returning to his office, Xu Yiping sat down and browsed Weibo. On the internet, there were also people criticizing a bite of China. What's there to brag about? Isn't it just 0.32%? Most variety shows easily beat it. Don't talk about how the genre is different or that there's no way to compare a documentary to a variety show. What's the use of saying all that? There's no such thing as fairness in the world. In the end, all that matters is the viewership ratings, isn't that so? Right, it's only a viewership rating of 0.32%. Why would you guys be so shocked like that? That's so uncalled for. Look how our teacher Chen Yi's rise to the dance did. Did we say anything? Well said. This bunch of fans of A Bite of China only know how to find justifications. Actually, they are all excuses. Seeing the comments from the rise to the dance fans, Xu Yiping felt good. What they said was quite right. Any reasons or excuses were pointless. As a TV show, whether it was a variety show, talk show, or even a documentary, weren't they all judged by their viewership ratings at the end of the day? Suddenly, some voices could be heard from outside. Ah. Quick, take a look. The viewership rating for the second episode of A Bite of China is out. Upon hearing that, Xu Yipen walked out while smiling. How much is it? Central TV Department 1 Director's Office. Jiang Naixiong's secretary knocked on the office door and came in. The secretary looked a little pale. Director Jiang. What's the matter? Why do you look so panicked? Jiang Naixiong looked at him. The secretary wiped his sweat away and said, Th this is the viewership rating for the second episode of A Bite of China. At this moment, Jiang Yuan also walked in from the outside. He had come to report to Jiang Naixiong about the work done for the advertising arrangements. When he heard what the secretary said, he asked curiously, how much is the difference between the first and second episode? The secretary wiped his sweat away again and said, I think it's better if you take a look for yourselves. Deputy Station Head's office. Deputy Station Head Ju was sitting at his desk and drinking tea when the telephone rang. Hello? Station Head Ju, the viewership rating for A Bite of China is out. Wasn't it already released 10 minutes ago? This time it is, it is for the second episode. Online. It's finally out. The viewership rating for the second episode is here. It's taking too long. I've been waiting for such a long time. So what's the viewership rating for the second episode? I hope it'll be at least the same as the first episode. 
they better not screw up. That's unlikely. Many people started watching from the second episode as they only found out about the show later. Therefore, logically speaking, the viewership ratings for the second episode cannot be lower than the first episodes. Heavens! What? Look at this, quick! Meanwhile, the staff from earlier also brought the viewership ratings to Department 14. Even though it was updated on the internet as well, but out of respect, they still had to hand the internal viewership ratings table to Yang Qianfei or his secretary as it was proper procedure. However, that staff's expression was completely different from before. No one knew whether it was everyone's misconception that his expression appeared horrified or something else, but when he entered the office, his gaze immediately fell upon Zhong Yi's face as he stared at him for a long time. Only afterward did he hand over the viewership ratings table with a gulp and say, the viewership rating for the second episode of A Bite of China is out. As there are some changes to the viewership ratings, some of the rankings have been rearranged. Harchich's heart skipped a beat. The rankings were rearranged? Did we drop a rank from the documentary viewership ratings? That person forced a smile. No. The main changes are the rankings of yesterday's nationwide viewership ratings for all TV shows excluding news-related ones. Everyone was dumbfounded. Yang Qianfei was stunned. Harchichi and Zhongzhuo were stunned too. What? The nationwide viewership rankings for TV shows? Isn't that ranking only reserved for the top 20 highest rated shows by viewership? But we only have 0.32% of the viewership ratings? How can we be in that ranking? That staff member thought to himself how the fuck he would know, but, but you have really gotten into that ranking. Yang Tianfei's secretary hurriedly took the viewership ratings table and looked at it. However, the next moment, he was badly shaken and nearly fainted. Aya! Be careful, be careful! What's the matter? Did you not eat breakfast yet? Is your blood sugar level too low? The secretary passed the form to Yang Qianfei with his trembling hands. He was already at a loss for words. Director, Yang. T take a look. Yang Qianfei took it from him and looked at it suspiciously. However, he nearly fainted from shock as well. What's the matter? What's happening? Ayo, just how much did we get for the viewership rating? Ha Chichi, Little Wang, and the others were already getting anxious and just squeezed in front of Yang Qianfei, desperately trying to get a look at the viewership ratings. Then, everyone's faces revealed a look of horror and they all turned their heads in unison toward Zhong Yi at the very next moment. The nationwide viewership rankings for television shows broadcasted on December 10, first place, the viewership rating for the first episode of Rise to the Dance is 1.27%. First place, the viewership rating for the second episode of A Bite of China is 1.27%. At this moment, the entire office area of A Bite of China fell silent. The Rise to the Dance program team fell silent. Central TV went quiet. The internet went quiet. The entire world stilled. Chapter 816, giving the entire world a slap. 1.27%. Tied for first place. The second episode of A Bite of China had actually tied for first place with Rise to the Dance on Friday's nationwide viewership ratings, for television shows. At this very second, it was as though time stopped and the entire world came to a standstill. As the seconds ticked by, everyone was shocked by the viewership ratings table that they had in front of them. After a long time, Yao Jinsai posted on Weibo, what the fuck? Hu Fei, damn. Central radio stations Tianbin, is this real? Fan Wenli. Asterisk hash hash percent percent, percent hash at. The internet was instantly a buzz. The netizens gradually made their appearances, all of them with very shocked expressions on their faces. Heavens! Oh my god! This is crazy! Th this is the viewership rating of a documentary? How can this be possible? Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! I'm going crazy! Isn't this totally defying all common sense? Isn't this getting a little too crazy? A documentary's viewership rating actually managed to stand shoulder to shoulder with Rise to the Dance. 
and took the number one spot in the nationwide viewership ratings? This must be fake, right? If you guys want to doctor it, can there be at least some effort in the technical details? Don't Photoshop something so unrealistic. It doesn't look fake. Ah, it looks real. Documentaries are actually on par with variety shows. This is not a question of whether they are on par or not, damn it. This is a documentary that has steamrolled all of the variety shows. What the hell? What is teacher Zhong Yi trying to do? Is he trying to poke a hole in the sky of the television industry? This is just a documentary. A documentary that no one would fucking watch. Yet you have made it into the top spot for the viewership ratings. You have really fucking made it into the number one spot for the viewership ratings. I'm already unable to use normal words to describe this. It's awesome. It's too damn awesome. Ah. Zhong Yi is definitely going to be my idol for life. I'm numb, my eyes have suddenly turned red. Teacher Zhong's hard work has not gone wasted. Teacher Zhong's efforts have finally paid off. Cold storage treatment? Banned? No one would watch a documentary. Go fuck yourself. Central TV Department 1. Open your eyes wide. That was the Zhong Yi who you guys had let go of knowingly. Even if he has been transferred to the documentary channel, Teacher Zhong is not someone who you can keep down. Even with a documentary, Teacher Zhong is still fucking unbeatable. Zhong Yi has come back. Ha 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 ha. The fearsome Teacher Zhong is back again. I'm so excited. Teacher Zhong, you're too fantastic. I'm happy for Zhong Yi. Cheers for a bite of China. Zhong Yi, why are you so cool? Why? If the first episode of A Bite of China with the viewership rating of 0.32% had shocked them, then the second episode's viewership ratings of 1.27% must have left everyone gasping in astonishment. Nobody in the country, even those who liked watching A Bite of China very much, or had extremely high expectations of it would have believed that A Bite of China could actually get the top spot in the nation's viewership ratings together with Rise to the Dance before they saw this viewership rating table. At Central TV. Department 14. Everyone was getting so excited that they were going crazy. We got first place. Wu Yi said in a daze, we're number one in the country. Number one in the country. Zhang Zhuo was unable to express his overwhelming emotions, so he raised up his hand and screamed, ah. Ha Chichi was in tears, but she was both laughing and crying at the same time. As she wiped her tears away, she said, our hard work has really paid off. Little Wang said rather dumbfounded, please tell me this is true. Huang Dandan hugged Little Wang excitedly. It's true. We're number one. Little Wang also burst into tears. Having been suppressed, humiliated, and stabbed in the back by Central TV Department 1, the original program team staff of The Voice were holding back their anger all this time. Only at this moment could they finally vent it all out. Many of them couldn't control their emotions, while some male colleagues were crying out in excitement and a few female colleagues wept. They were very tired all this while. In recent days, it hadn't been easy for them. Director Zhong. Ha Chichi turned around and hugged him as she cried. Thank you. Zhong Yi simply acknowledged her and smiled in embarrassment. You don't have to thank me, I should be the one thanking you. Thank you, everyone, for not leaving, and for following me from Central TV Department 1 to here. I also want to thank everyone for your continuous trust in me. Without all of you, even if I were superhuman, I could not have achieved all this. Therefore, I should be the one giving thanks to everyone. All of you did a great job and this outcome is the result of everyone working hard together, so everyone should have a share of the fruits of the labor. Not only were the original program team staff of The Voice excited, those originally from Department 14 were very excited as well. Director Zhong, congratulations to you and everyone else. Our documentary channel has finally come out on top. Thank you for coming to Department 14. I'm so numb from this. Let's see who still dares to look down on our documentary channel in the future. Cheering. Shouting. Along with cries of joy. There was jubilation throughout the entire office. 
Yang Tianfei's secretary also wiped away the tears from the corners of his eyes. For some reason, he couldn't stop his eyes from watering. He said, Director Zhong, you don't know this, but long have those of us at Department 14 suffered from the stress and pent-up resentment over the past few years. Although we know that you won't stay on with our documentary channel forever and will definitely leave in the future, but no matter what, I want to say that it's great to have you here. Zhong Yi smiled and replied, it's my honor coming to Department 14 and working together with everyone. After saying that, he turned his head to Yang Tianfei and said, Director Yang, I've told you before that I wouldn't disappoint you, now, I'm glad to say that I've managed to carry out my promise. Yang Tianfei clapped Zhong Yi's shoulders excitedly. Good. Great. When they made the last-minute change to the broadcast time of a bite of China yesterday, Yang Tianfei asked Zhong Yi for his reason in doing so, but Zhong Yi said that he would give him an answer the next day. Now, Yang Tianfei finally understood everything. This viewership ratings table was the answer that Zhong Yi had given to him. Deputy Station Head's Office Deputy Station Head Ju looked at the viewership ratings table and stayed silent for a long time. In the program team office of Rise to the Dance. Xu Yipen was silent. Chen Yi had a look of horror. For two full minutes, the entire program team was in complete and utter silence. Central TV Department 1 Jiang Yuan was stunned there for a long time. Jiang Naixiong had smashed a teacup on the floor in anger. The secretary trembled in fear and ran to tidy up the mess with a broom. He also quietly took away the latest viewership ratings table that he had brought over earlier. A lot of the people from Central TV were furious and did not seem to be in a good mood. A documentary. A documentary without promotions. A documentary without celebrity guests. A documentary without advertisements that merely cost 10 million renminbi to make and was so niche and so unpopular, that no one was supposed to pay any attention to it. Yet it had unexpectedly scored the same viewership rating as Rise to the Dance. How was that possible? How could that be? At this moment, a poem was brought up by someone on the internet. Rotten fruit black bugs have long since chewed through my flesh. I lie on a bed of moss so cold it stings just letting the rot set in deeper. Waiting for the rot to pierce my core and decompose my prison. My imprisoned soul will then, wearing a pea green vest, leap out grinning from ear to ear. No one could have imagined that the poem Rotten Fruit, which Zhong Yi had posted earlier, could really come true. No one could have imagined that Zhong Yi would really wear a pea green vest and leap out grinning from ear to ear. With a bite of China, he had given Central TV Department 1, Rise to the Dance, the television station, everyone, the entire world a very loud slap. On this day, chants of Zhong Yi's name reverberated all over the internet. On this day, a bite of China shocked the entire nation. Chapter 817, Celebration In the office space. Zhong Yi's cell phone rang. When he saw the number, he moved away from where all the noise was, otherwise he would not be able to hear anything over the phone. It was a call from his old classmate, Dong Shanshan. But when he answered the phone, it was Hu Fei who spoke. Little Zhong. Brother Hu. How, how did you manage to do that? Ha ha, it's just the audience giving me some face. How is this even a case of giving face to you? Such a viewership rating already has nothing to do with giving face nor would it be related to the magnitude of your fan base. This is purely from the audience base that the documentary itself has earned. You're already getting a 1.27% viewership rating with just the premiere episode. Do you really intend to poke a hole in the sky? Up until now, Hu Fei still could not digest this fact. On the other end, Dong Shanshan had taken over the phone. Old classmate. Hey, Shanshan. Dong Shanshan said rather speechlessly, the viewership rating of your documentary has totally steamrolled variety shows like ours. Do you think that's appropriate? Ah. Zhong Yi laughed in return and replied, it's indeed not appropriate. Dong Shanshan said, you also know that it's inappropriate. You're really honest, you. Zhong Yi said, but you can't blame me for that, right? Following that, the voices of Xiao Lu, Hu Ji and Hu Di were also heard over the phone. He could tell that they were not standing close to the phone but were not very far away either. Teacher Zhong, how on earth did you film a documentary like that? Teacher Zhong, I'm Dafei. 
a bite of China is very nice to watch. Go, teacher Zhong. Let those people at Central TV know the consequences for offending you. Fight it out with them. The higher the viewership ratings, the better. Smack their faces. Send them to their deaths. Ha 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 ha. As soon as he heard that voice, he knew it was Hu Di. This face smacking is already very brutal. Hu Ge gloated. Zhong Yi's old colleagues congratulated him in their own ways. Even though they were no longer working together anymore, the feelings between them when they worked and struggled together in the past did not fade with time. Every time Zhong Yi got into trouble, they would send their regards and support. When they encountered problems, Zhong Yi would do his utmost to help them. Zhong Yi laughed and said, Thank you, everyone. I have an incoming call from my mother right now, so I got to hang up. I will treat everyone to a meal some other time. All of you must definitely come. Hu Fei said, That's for sure. After hanging up, he answered the incoming call. His mother's loud voice emitted from the cell phone, Son? Son. Quick, go online and have a look. That documentary of yours is the number one in the nationwide viewership ratings. Quickly, go and look. Zhong Yi laughed drolly and then helplessly said, Mom, since you know about it, do you think that I, as the executive director of A Bite of China wouldn't know? Why would I need to look online? The viewership ratings table was delivered to me a while ago. You already knew about it. His mother said loudly, Ayo, you have really stolen the limelight this time. It was only after a few of our old neighbors came to our house to give their congratulations just now that your dad and I knew about this. Actually, regarding Zhong Yi's new documentary, his mother was one of those who had the most doubts about it. From the time Zhong Yi started saying that he wanted to make the documentary, his mother was already expressing her constant pessimism and disbelief about it. But right now, his mother was much happier than anyone else. My son did it. He has really managed to do it. With a documentary, he left the entire variety show industry clamoring. With a way that was not favored by anyone and even thought of as totally impossible, he had clinched the number one spot in the nationwide viewership ratings. What sort of ferociousness was this? What type of magnificent feat was this? Congratulatory calls from his friends consecutively came in. They came from Yao Jinsai, Tian Bin, Fan Yingyun, Chen Guang, Fan Wenli, Zhong Xia, and so on. Even the famous documentary director who had praised A Bite of China and Zhong Yi on Weibo previously had somehow managed to get a hold of Zhong Yi's number and contacted him. Director Zhong, this is Xiao Kai, Xiao Kai? Director Xiao? Zhong Yi was a little stunned. I never expected that you would know me. Xiao Kai was also quite surprised. Zhong Yi laughed and responded, Of course I know about you. You are a senior in the documentary industry and I have often heard about you. Xiao Kai said, More like I'm the one who has often heard about you. In these past two years, I've often heard my friends mentioning your name. Sister Zhong's manager is from my hometown and I got your number from Old Fang. Haha, <laughs> the new generation has surpassed the older one. You're indeed worthy of your reputation. Please don't say that. I still have lots to learn from the seniors. Zhong Yi did not try putting on any airs. Xiao Kai said, you don't need to learn from us. That's just going backwards. Your documentary has already carved out an individual path of its own, and also provided all the documentaries and documentary filmmakers a clear direction. We should be learning from you instead. A Bite of China is fantastic, and you have given all of us documentary filmmakers something to be proud of. Zhong Yi quickly replied, Director Xiao, please don't say that. I really don't deserve all this praise. In the field of documentaries, I'm just an outsider. That I managed to do well this time was all down to luck. If there's a chance to pay you a visit in the future, please don't hold back your knowledge from me. I hope to learn a lot from you. After that, they hung up. Not far away, Yang Qianfei waved his hands and announced, Everyone, stop whatever you're doing. Today, everyone will get a break. I'm treating, so let's go dine together. Oh. Hooray. Ha ha. Time for the celebratory feast. Thank you, director. Everyone cheered. Little Wang was still sobbing from her excitement. 
Zhong Yi told his assistant, that's enough, little Wang. Don't cry anymore. Let's go. Only then did little Wang, Huang Danden, and a few other female colleagues wipe away their tears and walk outside together while chatting away with Yang Qianfei, Zhong Yi, and the others. Not only was the program team of a bite of China going, all the staff working overtime from every one of Department 14's three sections went as well. All in all, there were around 30 to 40 people. When they went downstairs, the commotion they attracted became a little large. Many people from the other departments saw their group. When they spotted Yang Qianfei and Zhong Yi leading the group, the look in the eyes of everyone at Central TV changed. It was Zhong Yi. It was the staff of Department 14. Beside them, a deputy director of Central TV Department 3 happened to pass by. When he saw them, he immediately walked up, laughing loudly and saying, Old Yang, congratulations. Yang Qianfei also smiled and said, Old He. Old He said, You guys have really managed to shine this time. That viewership rating has really scared a few people to death. Then, he looked at Zhong Yi and asked, Director Zhong, when would you be free to come and help us out at Central TV Department 3? Yang Tianfei said, Are you trying to poach my people in front of me? Old He laughed. It's not only me, I think there are already numerous television stations and channels that want to bring Zhong Yi over to their side now. There were also some other staff who had gathered around and chatted with the Department 14 staff they were acquainted with. Congratulations to you. Congratulations, congratulations. You've all gotten really popular now. The show is very nice to watch. Your viewership ratings are so scary. How did you guys manage to do that? Director Zhong, can I take a picture with you? In the past, Department 14's fate was one that saw them largely being ignored wherever they went in Central TV. The station and other departments did not place any importance on them, and it was difficult to even get some things done due to the management rejecting and refusing their requests. But now, a lot of people had come to congratulate them and no one dared to despise them anymore. At this moment, Department 14 become the ones that everyone paid attention to. Their colleagues were paying attention to them, the media was paying attention to them, and the entire country's audience was paying attention to them. With just a documentary called A Bite of China, they had managed to attract nationwide attention. This was the most glorious event to ever happen in the history of documentaries. This was a scene that had never occurred in the history of China's documentaries. At a restaurant downstairs. At the innermost private room. Yang Tianfei did not care whether or not he had to go back to work later. He made an exception and poured himself some white wine. Let's raise a toast, cheers. Director Yang, Director Zhong, we would like to give a toast to the two of you. Everyone stood up. However, Zhong Yi said, let's toast to ourselves. Yang Tianfei agreed, right, we should make the first toast to ourselves. Cheers. Cheers. Everyone enjoyed the celebratory lunch with incomparable joy and were in high spirits due to the happy event. Their faces were brimming with smiles and glee. A bite of China had given them something to be very proud of this time. When they finished their lunch, it was still just 12 p.m. due to them coming early for the celebratory lunch at around 10 a.m. Zhong Yi and Yang Tianfei were fighting over who should pay when it came to the bill at the entrance. Coincidentally, they saw the restaurant's front door open beside them as a group of people led by Xu Yipeng and Chen Yi starting coming in. Looking at the people who followed behind them, it seemed like almost the entire Rise to the Dance program team was here as well. The Rise to the Dance program team staff were stunned. When they saw them, the staff of Department 14 were also stunned. What was this? Wasn't this what they meant by enemies often cross paths? Zhong Yi glanced at Chen Yi and the others. You're here to hold a celebratory feast too? Chen Yi gave him a fake smile and said, You too? Yeah, but we finished eating already, Zhong Yi said. Xu Yiping stared at Zhong Yi and said, Director Zhong, your documentary is really great. It's just average. Zhong Yi smiled a little and said, We're tied for first place in the viewership ratings this time, so you guys are great too. Xu Yiping nodded. I should congratulate you as well then. Saying that, he paused then continued, but there won't be a tie next week. We'll definitely have to determine who's the better of us too. Probably so, 
Zhong Yi remarked. These two groups of people had a long history of enmity between them and everyone disliked one another. After exchanging a few friendly but hypocritical words, the two groups walked past each other, one of them into a private room inside the restaurant, while the other left the restaurant. Little Wang pouted. Just look at their faces. Those who are in the know would believe that they are having a celebratory feast, but those in the dark would think that they're having a farewell lunch instead. Zhong Yi was tickled by what she had said. Why have you become even more sarcastic than me now? Little Wang smiled gleefully and said, didn't I learn all that from you? Everyone laughed. Meanwhile. In the restaurant's private room. The staff of Rise to the Dance knew that Xu Yiping and Chen Yi were not really as calm as they looked on the surface. When they saw the viewership ratings in the morning, everyone from their program team was stunned for a full minute. As for the celebratory feast that was arranged for the afternoon, many of them had already lost interest in it, because even though their viewership rating was quite high, it was not perfect since they were not the only number one rated program in the country. Further, the show that tied for first place with them was made by Zhong Yi, the previous rise to the dance's executive director. He even did it with a documentary that they had not taken to be a worthy competitor and was rejected by everyone. This kind of complicated and shocked mood could be easily imagined. A 10 million investment vs a 100 million investment. No promotions vs an overwhelming promotion. No celebrity guests vs a gathering of big names. A documentary vs a variety show. And the result? The viewership ratings turned out to be the same? Aren't you totally embarrassing rise to the dance that way? However, this matter was obviously not over as the competition was just starting. A bite of China had become popular, but at the same time, rise to the dance was also getting more popular. If the premiere episode for this week could not determine which was better than the other, then they'd have to let it be decided next week. Hence, Xu Yiping's opening words at the celebratory feast were, the viewership ratings must definitely go up a level for next Friday's broadcast. We must push down all the other shows and get the number one ranking in the viewership ratings. Chen Yi added, the only number one. Everyone gave their loudest response to that. Understood. Yes, director. We will definitely do it. A documentary cannot sustain interest. They're definitely no match for us. The premiere episode doesn't say and mean much at all. The real competition from here. Right, everyone is very confident. We guarantee that we will complete this mission. Chapter 818, Scoring 200 Million Renminbi Worth of Advertisements Sunday morning. While Zhong Yi was still in dreamland, news of a bite of China kept bombarding the public. Since yesterday morning, it has not stopped, and of course the morning newspapers today wouldn't either. A bite of China wins the top spot. The contest for viewership ends in a tie with the appearance of an unexpected dark horse. Zhong Yi opens a new era for documentaries. Has spring arrived for the documentary genre? Zhong Yi's viewership rating miracle continues on. Praise for a bite of China. A bite of China in high definition. Awakening the memories of taste. Breaking down the success of a bite of China scenes. Detailed explanation of Zhong Yi's touch of magic in his filming techniques. The first ever documentary to be called a classic is born. I have the pleasure of witnessing history, a history belonging to the field of documentaries. After decades of silence, has the documentary genre been awakened by Zhong Yi? Could the waking lion continue its viewership miracle in the coming week? Let us look forward to what happens next. On this morning, news and discussions of a bite of China were at the same level of rise to the dance for the first time ever. Yet a bite of China's program team and Central TV Department 14 did not spend any money at all on promotions and news articles. The netizens were continuing to flood in and contribute to the topic. Ah, I am still in disbelief. Of all the entertainment industry celebrities, I only acknowledge Zhong Yi. Me too, I'm utterly convinced by him this time. That bunch of rise to the dance fans who came to criticize a bite of China and even claimed that Zhong Yi's standards were not good enough. I'm totally laughing at them now, do they know that? This was Zhong Yi's directorial debut. This is his first time crossing over to film a documentary. That bunch of brain dead fans. Big Saber Bro will outscold all of them single handedly. 
Zhong Yi's fan club leader, Big Saber Bro, always as fearsome as ever. In the past, I didn't like Zhong Yi. But after watching A Bite of China, I have turned into a fan without any hesitation. I like this documentary so much. It's simply too awesome. Me too. Chen Yi's reputation and popularity might be good too, while he's also lauded by those who are very supportive of him. But anyone who knows a thing or two about this industry would know that teacher Zhong's abilities are not something that Chen Yi can compete with. They're on totally different levels. That's of course. Just based on talent alone, who in the entire entertainment industry can compete with Zhong Yi? If teacher Zhong had half the looks of sect leader Huai, he would have already become an A-list celebrity. Agreed. Teacher Zhong isn't bad looking. I find him to be quite all right after looking long enough at him. He's even getting more and more pleasing to the eye, he he. I'm a brain dead fan of Zhong Yi. At home. Still dreaming, Zhong Yi was pushed awake by someone. Zhong Yi, wake up. It was Chen Chen. Zhong Yi impatiently turned his back on her and said, Don't disturb me, go away. However, a moment later, Chen Chen went around him and pushed at him again. John Yi, wake up. Grandma wants me to wake you up. She says that you have to go to work. His mother also came into his bedroom. Hurry up and get up. Eat breakfast then go to work. John Yi didn't know how to react. What time is it right now? I will go later. There's nothing urgent. It's already past 8 a.m., and you still want to go later? His mother nagged, hurry up. Quickly go to your office and do your work. Don't laze around at home like this. Your new show is a hit now. Shouldn't you be working hard to consolidate the popularity of it? If you let Rise to the Dance surpass your show next week, how shameful would it be? Now that you've managed to make the two shows share the top spot, do you know how many people are waiting to see who becomes the winner? Wake up. His father said from the living room, your mom was provoked by someone, ha ha. When we went out for a stroll last night, a neighbor from the opposite apartment building said that Rise to the Dance is a better show than A Bite of China. When your mom heard that, she went over impatiently and argued with that person for the longest time. If not for the neighbors who were there to help calm things down and stop them, your mom would have fought with someone already. John Yi cringed. Mom, you didn't need to go that far, did you? His mother dismissed, why not? They said that my son's show is not good. She must be blind. But she seemed to have forgotten that she was the one who was most pessimistic about Zhong Yi's documentary. However, after the viewership rating for A Bite of China was announced, it had really changed a lot of things, and changed the mindsets of many people when it came to traditional documentaries. The most interesting phenomenon was that those who watched A Bite of China at the beginning all thought that only they themselves liked watching it. They believed that no one else would accept the documentary, only to find out later that that was exactly what everyone else was thinking when they watched it. Zhong Yi, who was finally made to get out of bed by his mother, went to eat breakfast and reluctantly went to work. Around 9 a.m. Right after he entered the program team office, Zhong Yi was immediately blocked by some people. Director Zhong. It was a middle-aged woman around 30. I'm the advertising manager of Everyday Eats, Miss Xu. Can I discuss with you a bite of China's, before she could finish, a middle-aged man came up to him. He grabbed hold of Zhong Yi's hand to shake it the moment he came up to him. Director Zhong, I'm Hawthorne Beverage Group's old he. We cooperated previously on The Voice. You still remember that, right? The advertisement this time for a bite of China, you must definitely leave a spot for us. We're old working partners, so you better leave a slice of the pie for us. Someone else said, Director Zhong, can I ask how much the title sponsorship fee costs? Director Zhong, can I have a word with you? A group of people from various companies and manufacturers surrounded Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi couldn't manage them all, so he said, everyone, please, one by one. You guys are making it impossible for me to answer your questions. There are people responsible for the advertising arrangements, so can we please go by the proper procedures? Saying that, he called out to Ha Chichi who was standing next to the group of people. Sister Ha, please arrange a welcome for our guests, or perhaps arrange for a meeting room where we can discuss this further. 
Ha Chichi and Zhongs were immediately went to make the necessary arrangements. Zhongyi asked, feeling puzzled, why did so many people come here? Ha Chichi smiled wryly. There were already businesses calling up yesterday regarding the ad spots. At that time, they called up Department 14 directly to talk about it, but this morning, Director Yang announced that the advertising deals for a bite of China are to be handled by our program team itself, so everyone came looking for you instead. I had wanted to make individual appointments for the advertisers at first, so that we could deal with them one by one, but who knew they couldn't wait whatsoever and just came rushing over hoping to talk to us directly. After all, our show has started broadcasting, and even two episodes now, so they naturally feel a little anxious about it. We couldn't stop them from coming in at all, Jongs were added. The earliest to get here arrived at around five in the morning. I don't know how he managed to get in through the gates and into our office, but I heard that he chatted with our night shift staffer, Little Sun, for over three hours. Little Sun almost passed out from talking. When he related that to them, Jongswa couldn't help but laugh as well. Little Wang came up and whispered, and a few of the advertisers whom Sister Ha contacted before a bite of China started its broadcast also came here today. Back then, even after we pestered them and talked until our mouths got tired, that bunch of people still did not want to buy our ad spots, but look how it turned out now. We should just not sell to them. Zhong Yi shook his head and laughed. It's wrong to say things like that. Before this, there was no viewership rating for them to consider with, so they didn't know whether our show would be good or not. There has never been a precedent of any title sponsorship for a documentary before either, so there's a huge risk investing into the ad spots. We can't possibly request they take on the risk for us, can we? There's simply no reason for them to do that. So if anyone wants to buy the ad spots now, we'll welcome all of them alike. Little Wang gave a thumbs up and said, it's still Director Zhong who is the most generous of us. In the meeting room. The advertisers were all gathered around a large meeting table. There was a total of more than 20 representatives. When Zhong Yi came into the office, every one of those people tried to speak. However, Zhong Yi said, everyone, please listen to me first. I know your reasons for coming here today, and will also happily welcome any deals related to advertising on our show. But as A Bite of China is a documentary, it is different from the other variety shows that you're all familiar with. That's why we have our own set of rules when it comes to advertising as well, so why doesn't everyone sit down quietly and listen to my explanation? Please explain. Let us know what you mean. No matter what the rules are, our company will definitely take an advertisement spot. Only then did Zhong Yi say, first, we won't allow any advertisements to be put into the original footage of the documentary that gets broadcast. Everyone was dismayed. Ah? Then how will the advertisements be presented? Why is that so? This. Zhong Yi continued explaining, second, a bite of China has already finished filming and we won't be doing any more of that either. If any of you had planned to do some product placements of your company's products within our show, we definitely can't accept that. I have to be responsible for my documentary as well as the arts. The faces of the representatives of two of the companies immediately darkened. The other company's representatives also forced smiles, thinking how other shows hoped for as many ads as possible, even to the point of finding ways to insert a few more in when the ad spots were filled. Who didn't want more money? Who would think that they were earning too much? But it seemed like Zhong Yi and the program team of A Bite of China was exactly like that. A group of them had come to invest their money, and still, the sellers were being picky about things, even going as far as setting rules for them. But there was nothing they could do. The show was way too popular. And they had the qualifications to set the rules. After putting it so bluntly up front, Zhong Yi changed his tone and began introducing the advertising model for a bite of China. He talked about the different types of advertising strategies that would help the advertisers maximize their promotions, and also gave a simple introduction of the price points for the different advertising types. Finally, another group of advertisers shuffled into the meeting room as their numbers went past 40 people. In here were the advertising representatives of over 40 companies and enterprises, which weren't just some small businesses. Those who could come to a bite of China's program team to buy an advertising spot were definitely not small businesses. A small company would never be able to afford such prices. 
In the end, after a series of bids, all the advertising slots for a bite of China were sold. The title sponsorship was not an exclusive one this time and went to two companies instead. However, the title sponsorship fee of the two advertisers totaled 100 million. Three second-tier advertisements were sold, while 13 advertisement spots were sold for advertisements on Department 14, shown before and after the broadcast of A Bite of China. At the end of it all, a few advertisers felt that the prices were too high and were left with no other choice, but to just put their money into the reruns of A Bite of China on Saturdays and Sundays. On the issue of the internet, three online video hosting sites also made contact with the program team. The online exclusive broadcast rights were finally sold to the highest bidder, but with the prerequisite that they would delay their telecast to two hours after the show was first broadcast on Channel 14, this was to ensure that it wouldn't affect the viewership ratings. After the discussions were done, even though Zhong Yi only made an estimate, it was obvious that they had reached an astronomical figure in the advertising revenue this time. Although the advertisers were all mainly from food and beverage related companies and did not number more than the advertisers of The Voice, a Bite of China was still a rare show about food. This would fit very well with the promotions of these companies, so they naturally were willing to spend more money too. For example, a beverage company might hesitate if they had to spend 8 million renminbi to buy an advertising spot on Rise to the Dance, but on A Bite of China, they would agree to this 8 million renminbi price tag in a heartbeat. That was because the style of a bite of China fit the nature of their business, which would already achieve half the effects of the promotions, so they would naturally be inclined to it. If they chose to look for another show similar to a bite of China? There was none at all. Zhong Yi even received a call from a friend. It was a call from skit actress C.I. Shofang. Little Zhong. Hello, teacher C.I., Zhong Yi said very politely. C.I. Shofang said, someone has asked me for a favor to link them up with you. Can I ask if there are still any advertising slots for a bite of China? Any second or third tier advertisements will be fine too, so if there are any, could you leave one for my friend? She's a childhood friend of mine and has asked me for my help on this, so I couldn't refuse her. Can you check if that will be convenient for you? It's fine if it's not. I'll just let her know. Zhong Yi touched his nose and answered, I've just sold all of the advertising spots, but since you're asking, I'll definitely do my best for you. All right then, let me work out something for you, so just get your friend to contact me directly. C.I. Shofan laughed and replied, then I must thank you. Consider that I owe you one. Don't be that courteous with me. Zhong Yi said, you're pulling in advertisers for me. I should be the one thanking you instead. Oh, come on. C.I. Shofan giggled. That might be so for other shows, but for a show that's directed by director Little Zhong? It has to be the advertisers fighting to buy a spot from you instead. There won't be any spots left if they come too late. Negotiating the prices. Initiating the project. The contracts were signed. When everything was done, the program team staff tabulated all the figures and had a great fright. All the advertisement slots and broadcasting rights for a bite of China were sold for 197 million renminbi, very close to the 200 million renminbi mark. Hachichi swallowed hard. Zhongs were looked at that long string of numbers in a daze. The staff who were originally from Department 14 were even more unable to process what they were seeing. When had this group of people, who had always been working with traditional documentaries, ever seen so much money? They were just dumbfounded by it all. Tong Fu said excitedly, We have money now, we finally have money now. Huang Danden blinked her eyes and said, Would the station start having second thoughts when they see that we have so much money? Are they going to funnel our money to Central TV Department 1 again? Wu Yi said, They certainly won't do that. The popularity of a bite of China has already left some executives of Central TV Department 1 with a swollen face. Even if the station couldn't be any more shameless than they already are, they wouldn't dare do that. Little Wang said eagerly, who could have expected that our documentary could earn so much money back then? The advertising revenue of Rise to the Dance is also around the same as ours, right? Tong Fu said, 200 million. I feel like I'm in a dream. Ha Chichi said with a laugh, now, we can finally run a proper promotional campaign for our documentary. We've been waiting for this amount of money for too long now. 
the news spread like wildfire to every corner. A bite of China scores 200 million in advertising revenue. Title sponsorship for a bite of China reaches 100 million, with a total of nearly 200 million, matching rise to the dance's advertising revenues. The miracle brought about by a 10 million yuan low cost documentary series. With the media reporting about this, it suddenly created a stir again. A bite of China. A bite of China. A bite of China. Countless people went crazy for it. Chapter 819, The War Between a Documentary and Variety Show Industry. Later that afternoon, the advertisement revenue details went viral on Weibo. 200 million renminbi, oh my heavens. They sold off everything in just a day? That's what the trademark of John Yi does. Everyone's gone crazy. In the past, if someone told me that the advertising spots and authorizations of a documentary could fetch 200 million, I would definitely have taken that person to be an idiot. But now, it has happened for real. Central TV documentary channel has really made a killing this time. Their greatest success was to transfer Zhong Yi over to their department. Those advertising revenues should have been Central TV department ones. I wonder what expressions they have on their faces now. After displacing Zhong Yi, this should be the most idiotic move that Central TV Department 1 has taken in the past few decades. They are so idiotic that even though I am not a fan of Zhong Yi's, I can't help but find Central TV Department 1 idiotic. Ha ha ha. Indeed, Central TV Department 1's deputy director Jiang Yuan did not look too good, especially after he found out about the advertisement revenues of a bite of China. At that instant, he also felt that he was an idiot. Although the advertisement revenues of Rise to the Dance were about the same as a bite of China, after some contemplation, how much had been invested back into Rise to the Dance? It was more than 100 million. And what about a bite of China? They only invested a mere 10 million into the program. An exact sum of 10 million. John Yi. It was John Yi again. Were you invited by Monkey to specially deal with us, one? At that instant, Jiang Yuan suddenly had some regrets. He really should have kept Zhong Yi frozen at Central TV Department 1, and not allowed him to go so that he wouldn't even have the slightest chance to appear on screen or make any more shows. But then again, they couldn't be blamed for not doing so either. Central TV Documentary Channel had the lowest viewership ratings among all the channels and was the worst performing department. If it were any other person in his position, they would also agree that this move was foolproof and that Zhong Yi wouldn't be able to do anything while he was at the documentary channel. He picked up the phone and called Xu Yipeng. Director Xu. Director Jiang. Can you ensure next week's viewership rating will be good? Don't worry, that won't be a problem. Good. You must definitely regain honor for Central TV Department 1. I understand. We're all prepared for it. Very good. Elsewhere. Department 14. Some of the advertisers that came too late had missed out on the entire advertisement deal. A few of them were closely following Zhong Yi around, trying to get something out of him as he moved around in the office. Director Zhong, you can't be like this, a company's representative said. Another person also said, we have already cooperated once previously, so we're considered old partners. But now, you just come up and tell us that all the advertisement spots have been sold. How do you expect me to go back and answer to my boss? I have a mission to fulfill this time. My boss and colleagues at the company have already issued the military order. John Yi said helplessly, everyone, the advertisement spots have really been sold out. Even the spots for the reruns have been taken. He was holding a list in his hand and pointed it out to them. Look at this. We really can't fit any more slots in this. Why would I lie to you guys? A female deputy director said, you have to think of something for us no matter what. That's right, director Zhong, the others beside her echoed. There's really none left. Saying that, Zhong Yi thought for a bit before adding, if you guys don't mind, there's still a chance for cooperation. You see, we still have a third tier advertisement package that we can sell but this would require you to use your own company's resources to handle the promotional advertisements and online or television commercials. We can authorize you to add a message like a bite of China's recommended beverage on your advertisements and commercials. 
these authorizations aren't expensive either. Those advertisers looked at each other. All right, I'll take it. We'll also take it. We'll get this since there's no better choices left. Hi. The reason why this advertisement was sold cheaply was because a bite of China's program team did not have to handle the promotional resources for them. Instead, the advertisers would have to fork out their own money to buy spots to advertise. Then, they would have to add in the branding of a bite of China into their advertisements and make use of the influence of a bite of China to raise their brand's reputation and trust. A bite of China would then be able to gain access to free promotions for the show through their advertisements. This was essentially benefiting from the association with each other. After the matters at this end were settled, Zhong Yi put up the schedule for a bite of China's promotions. He called Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and a few others over to tell them, I've just sold several advertising authorizations which could help us in our promotions as well. I need you guys to get in contact with their people to find out the progress on it and to get the contract signed too. Oh yes, now that the money is in, our promotional activities should also begin. Let's follow the proposal that we did up previously and double up on it. No, triple up on it and get all the advertisements out there in the public eye. Upon hearing this, a lot of the staff were fired up. Little Wang looked over. Are we finally going to compete head-on with Rise to the Dance? Tong Fu asked, Director Zhong, do we have a chance of winning next week? Huang Dandan giggled. With Director Zhong around, who are we afraid of? We're afraid of no one. Everyone's confidence was at an unprecedented level. Actually, what they were doing now was already poking a hole in the sky of the television industry. Everyone, let's get things moving and just do your job well. We'll let nature take its course for the viewership ratings, Zhong Yi said with a light smile. On the same day, the promotional advertisements of a bite of China started appearing everywhere. On the online video hosting sites, media outlets, and Weibo, a bite of China was everywhere, with money. Of course, they could promote however they liked and get as much exposure as they wanted. They had already received the payments, which were nearly 20 times the invested amount of their show before tax, so Zhong Yi and his team no longer needed to worry about the costs involved now. The netizens were exclaiming. A bite of China's promotions are finally beginning. These new promotional advertisements are really pleasing to the eyes. I'm so looking forward to the third episode. Teacher Zhong will always support you. A, eh, what is a bite of China? What's this ad about? Are you dumb, previous poster? Didn't you watch TV last night? Go and search before asking. Ah, uh, it's just a documentary. What's so interesting about it? Ha 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 ha, my friend above, countless people have uttered those same words as you yesterday. But after last night, no one mentioned them again. Fuck, is it that awesome? I'll go have a look. Are there any videos online of it? Yes, a bite of China's online video hosting partner has already uploaded the first and second episodes. More and more people learned of their show through the ads. That night, on seeing a bite of China's massive promotional activities happening everywhere, the program teams of many television stations felt very uneasy, although there wasn't anything they could do about it either. In some television station. In a program team's office. The supervisor looked at his staff and said, a documentary like a bite of China can even produce in such a way and get the top spot in the viewership ratings and advertising revenues. As someone working in the variety show industry, don't you feel embarrassed? Everyone smiled wryly but no one said a thing. I feel embarrassed. The supervisor slapped his own face, agitated. I feel extremely embarrassed. We'll put in overtime today. No one is to leave if the recording for this week's episode is not done well. At some province. In a television station. An executive director of a program team had gathered everyone in a meeting room. Look at this. These are the results of a bite of China for the past two days. I don't know whether you guys should be ashamed or not, but I'm definitely ashamed and can't afford to lose face like this. If a documentary can even get number one in the viewership ratings, then what reason do we have to give for our entertainment interview show not being able to do so? Are there any more reasons to say that documentaries are only for a niche audience? No, director. We will not find excuses anymore. 
Uh, we will work harder and strive to break 0.4% for the viewership ratings before the end of the month. A bite of China's incredulous viewership rating had shocked and also inspired many people. Similar scenes were playing out in many television station program teams of the industry. A documentary presented in a brand new way had challenged people's understanding of documentaries. This was also a delightful phenomenon as a lot of people were excited by it. Perhaps it was a subconscious reaction. Perhaps they did not intend to compare. But without a doubt, to preserve their last bit of honor when faced with the enemy that was a niche program, many television stations and entertainment shows were getting anxious. At this moment, a war broke out between a documentary and all the variety shows in the industry. They did not wish to get trampled under the feet of a documentary, else that would be truly face-smacking for them. They did not believe that the viewership ratings for the next episode of A Bite of China would still be that shocking. Jiang Yuan refused to believe it. Xu Yiping refused to believe it. Chen Yi refused to believe it. A lot of industry insiders also refused to believe it. A miraculous comeback of the documentaries? It was more than enough to have let it happen once, but if it continued to dominate the television industry, then it wouldn't just be a miracle, but a divine act of God. Chapter 820, Zhong Yi and Old Wu get caught in action. At night. It was still very lively on the news, with various reports being constantly published. The variety show's defensive battle has started? Zhong Yi forces variety shows to an impasse. Next week's highlights, rise to the dance and a bite of China to battle it out for top spot. The documentary genre strikes back, but whose face has it slapped? However, as one of the parties involved in this matter, Zhong Yi had already driven out to the vicinity of Dauran Pavilion. He called Old Wu at the roadside before driving to Wu Zuching's villa. Before his car could even come to a stop, the door to the villa opened. Wu Zuching came out gracefully. You're here? Yes, I just got here. You just got off work too. Zhong Yi got out of the car. Old Wu nodded and said, I got back a while ago and was just reading the newspapers inside. What news are you reading about? Zhong Yi asked as he walked inside the house. The news about your a bite of China of course. I flipped through a few pages and saw that all the reports were about your Department 14's documentary. But I can't blame the media reports for working so hard, since I have also watched your documentary and find it to be really good. The camera framing and angles are nice, the human and cultural backstories are also interesting. I feel that this could be used as teaching material for all documentaries to learn from, Old Wu commented. Zhong Yi replied happily, I'm flattered, I'm flattered. Wu Zuching hadn't changed clothes yet since she had just gotten home as well. She was dressed in her work clothes, a pair of heels, and a pair of black pants. Her top was a grey knitted sweater with a white shirt underneath. This outfit exuded her sense of capability very well, but did not overemphasize it. Old Wu had always radiated a soft charm from the way she carried herself. Zhong Yi had not seen her in a long time now, so after he went into the house, he couldn't help but take a few more looks at her. He sat down and took out a tea caddy from his bag carefully. Then he graciously handed it to her and said, have a taste of this tea first. This is Wu Yi Mountain's D.A. Hongpao that I told you about before. Don't underestimate these tea leaves. I guarantee that you've never tried it before. Since you like drinking oolong tea, I'm sure you'll like this tea. He added, oh yes, you must never give this to anyone else. Just keep it for yourself to drink. Old Wu smiled and said, okay, then I'll give it a try. She boiled water. Then made the tea. Very quickly, the inside of the house was overflowing with the fragrance of the tea. Wu Zuching sniffed the scent of the tea and gave a slight look of surprise. She raised the cup and lightly pressed her lips on the edge of the cup and took a small sip. She couldn't help but smile and say, it's indeed good. This is truly my first time trying this. You can't get this outside? Zhong Yi smiled and replied, of course you can't. Even if you have money, there's no place to get it from. There are only a few trees in the entire world that produce these tea leaves, and I have bought all of the parent trees. That's why only I have access to this tea. Others won't even have a chance to try it. Ration them well. If you like it, I'll bring some more over when they're gone. Giving them to Old Wu did not make him feel bad, 
but he wouldn't give it to anyone else. Wu Zuching nodded and took another sip. It tastes even better with the second sip. It's really good. What's more, this tea can be brewed five to six times and the flavor will still remain. You want some too? I don't want to drink it for now. Zhong Yi couldn't bear to drink it. He just sat there and gazed at old Wu, enjoying the view as he watched her slowly sip the tea. Old Wu was beautiful and gorgeous. No matter how he looked at her, he did not get tired of it. Sometimes, he even felt that if he sat there doing nothing for the entire day and just looked at old Wu, he would still find it enjoyable. Old Wu asked, stay over for dinner tonight. Of course. I've been craving for your cooking all this while. He immediately felt hungry at the mention of eating. Old Wu went to the open kitchen and started cooking dinner. As she washed the raw food, the two of them chatted. This year's television award ceremony will take place soon. It'd be great if you could give a bite of China a little push to get a higher viewership rating. If it doesn't end in a draw again with your show getting the number one spot nationwide, it would aid you in getting the prize for sure. If the viewership rating could hit 1.5%, then that most prestigious award for documentaries is as good as in the bag. Zhong Yi said, why would it still have to depend on the viewership ratings? Old Wu explained gently, that might not be the case for others, but for your show, it's necessary. You have offended too many people within the industry, so unless you produce something that give people no chance to argue against, if there's another candidate for the award, they definitely won't give it to you. Then she glanced at him and asked, otherwise, how do you think that a bite of China would get nominated for the awards at the last minute? It was because I got my secretary to recommend your show's nomination to the selection committee. The SARFT is the overseeing authority, so they cannot reject the recommendations that we suggest. Zhong Yi was taken aback. It was you who helped recommend the documentary? Hi, I should have known. I was still thinking why we would get nominated when we have just started broadcasting. Old Wu laughed. This nomination was deserved anyway, but it was just because there were people who did not like you that they picked on and criticized the documentary. I was only helping to lay the path for you, but you'll still have to depend on yourself in the end. Who picked on and criticized us? Xu Wenzhong. Who is that? The honorary vice president of the television association. But I don't know that person. You know his brother-in-law though, that famous crosstalk artist named Tang Dazhang. Him. Zhang Yi immediately understood. His feud with Tang Dazhang was indeed a big one, but how could Zhang Yi have known that his wife's brother had actually obstructed him without him knowing? Old Wu, if you didn't tell me about this, I wouldn't have known at all. Is that Xu Wenzhong one of the judges? When the time come, if he still attempts to stop us with some underhanded ways, then the award will, Wu Zuching interrupted, that won't happen anymore. As of this afternoon, I have already stripped him of his qualification as a judge. Zhong Yi was stunned. You removed him from the panel? Yes, I did, old Wu replied calmly. Zhong Yi was dumbfounded. You can even do that. Old Wu said, why can't I do that? As one of the highest qualified judges, he has lost his most basic principle of fairness. Since I know about it, I definitely won't tolerate it. This was who his girlfriend was. How appropriate. When Zhong Yi heard about what she did, he felt very touched. He never thought that in a situation unknown to him, Old Wu would still step up to help him with so many things and help him prevent sneak attacks from others. Look at you. You're very busy, but you still worry over my problems. I feel so bad about it now, so, old Wu, why don't I make dinner instead? That's not necessary. Old Wu waved him off. But Zhong Yi had already walked up to her. That won't do. I need to show my gratitude. Old Wu gently fended him off. It's not like you know how to cook, so why don't you just wait to eat? Even so, I can learn. Zhong Yi folded up his sleeves. You can teach me. Old Wu glanced at him. Are you really serious about learning? Of course I am. Zhong Yi said determinedly. Old Wu nodded her head. All right then, ha ha. You want to start off with cutting the vegetables? Following that, Wu Zuching walked behind Zhong Yi and leaned across his back. From behind, she held Zhong Yi's hand holding the kitchen knife, 
while her other hand gripped Zhong Yi's left hand. Bend your left hand a little bit more, then support the knife by letting it rest against your wrist. As long as you pay attention to your thumb, you won't cut your fingers. Right, this is the way. With the hands on teaching, Old Wu was almost hugging Zhong Yi from behind. Zhong Yi was enjoying this quite a bit. He had always been too lazy to cook meals for himself, but this was so enjoyable that it felt fun. Little by little, he learned from Old Wu as he occasionally took advantage as well. After dinner. The two of them drank some hot tea. Little Yi, shall we go out for a stroll? Old Wu suggested. Zhong Yi agreed without even thinking. Sure. Old Wu looked outside and said, but the air isn't very good. There's a lot of smog. We should both wear face masks. Do we need to? It seems fine to me. Of course we need to. The air pollution is getting very serious and can easily lead to lung cancer and other respiratory diseases. Is it that severe? Don't you know that, old Wu? I've heard about it, but it doesn't seem to be severe to me. If the effects are really that great, the newspapers would have had a field day already. Hasn't the news of the dangerous effects of the smog only been raised in the past two years? If there's some governance regarding this, it should get better within two years. Ah, uh, we should just wear our face masks anyway. Zhong Yi couldn't respond to that. It was only now that he started to realize the citizens' understanding of PM 2.5 in this world, which was totally different from his previous world, and that the concept of PM 2.5 was only brought up within the past two years. Compared to his world, it seemed to be late by many years. Everyone still did not have a clear understanding of the dangerous effects of the smog, and if someone like Old Wu who worked at the SARFT as one of its leaders even did not understand it well, it was needless to mention other citizens, one. This was a rather wide-ranging topic that even three days and nights of discussions wouldn't be enough to cover, so Zhong Yi said no more, except to remind Old Wu that if the PM 2.5 readings were high, she should remember to wear a face mask. Outside. His mother called. Why aren't you back yet? I have something to take care of. What is it? It's already past 8 p.m. Aya, I will go home once I'm done. I gonna hang up now, mom. The two of them strolled along the path leading to Dauran Pavilion Park's gate. Old Wu was wearing a face mask while Zhong Yi was fully geared up. He even covered his head with the hood of his down jacket, afraid that they would get recognized. They chatted as they strolled. Laughing and talking. Zhong Yi hardly had a chance to spend time alone with Wu Zeqing, so he naturally treasured every second of it. They walked from Daoran Pavilion to Nanheng Street, then from Nanheng Street to Kaishiku. Zhong Yi looked around and remarked, We're almost at my place. Let's walk back to where we came from. Wu Zeqing held his arm and returned a smile. Okay. The two of them turned around, ready to head back. But at this moment, an unidentified person had come up a distance not too far from them, carrying a large bag which seemed to indicate that the person had just bought something from the mall across the way. Zhong Yi subconsciously caught sight of that person which made his legs tremble. He could only mutter an, ah, uh, at that. Mom? What was she doing out here at this time of night? Didn't she just call me from home a while ago? His mother also noticed that there were two people walking in front of her. Even if other people couldn't recognize Zhong Yi, she couldn't possibly not recognize him, right? Moreover, even though she couldn't see his face, she still recognized what he was wearing. Zhong Yi's shoes and the down jacket that he was wearing were bought by her from the mall. Son, his mother said, slightly taken aback. Zhong Yi pretended not to hear and pulled old Wu along and walked ahead. He still did not want his parents to know about him and Wu Zeqing yet. Wu Zeqing also stopped in her tracks and looked at Zhong Yi. His mother was calling out behind him, Little Yi. Zhong Yi could no longer pretend not to have heard, so he turned his head blankly and exclaimed in surprise, Eh, hey, Mom? What are you doing here? He stood quite a distance away and did not go over to her. His mother stared at the woman beside him and said, I came out to buy a sweater. When I called you just now, I had hoped that you'd come back earlier to give me some advice. All right then, go where you're going. Don't come home too late. Having said that, his mother did not question him further and just turned around to go back home. 
but just before she left, she had one last look at the old Wu standing beside Zhong Yi. Only then did Zhong Yi breathe a sigh of relief. Wu Ziqing had already taken her hand off Zhong Yi's arm. She asked, Is that your mother? Is it all right that I don't go and greet her? It's fine, it's fine. Zhong Yi said, We'll let them know when the time is right. Let's go. Kai Shiku. At home. His mother opened the door with her keys and then shut the door behind her after entering the house. Chen Chen was playing games, while his father was in the living room watching television. When he looked up, he could only see an angry face. What's the matter? Which neighbor did you argue with this time? Didn't you go out to get a sweater? His mother sat down angrily on the sofa and threw the newly bought sweater down. Don't talk about it. I saw Little Yi outside the mall entrance just now. He was with a woman talking happily and laughing. The two of them were even locking arms, looking close. When I called to him from behind, he even pretended not to have heard me. His father said curiously, locked arms? Yeah. His mother said, they were quite intimate. His father said rather happily, Little Yi has a girlfriend? That's a good thing. He's already in his twenties, so what's wrong with him having a girlfriend? Look at you, weren't you always anxious about introducing someone to our son? His mother said angrily, it's good that he has a girlfriend, but why was he avoiding me? I think there must be some problems there. His father quickly asked, what does the girl look like? How tall is she? How old is she? His mother said, I couldn't see clearly because she was wearing a face mask but she's rather tall and she wasn't even wearing very high heels, though if she did, she would likely be taller than him. It's good that she's tall. That's good, his father said satisfied. Our family has always been short, so I've been hoping that little E would find someone taller. His mother curled her lips. Her height is tall, but her age is even older. How old? His father was stunned. His mother shook her head. I don't know, but from the way she dressed and her demeanor, she's definitely older than little Yi. But his father seemed fine with it. If she's older, so be it. A mature wife ensures a joyful life, so long as our son likes her, it's fine with me. It's not fine with me. When he gets back, I must ask him. Why didn't he let us know he's in a relationship, his mother declared indignantly. About forty minutes later. The door opened and Zhong Yi came home. When his father saw him, he quietly winked at him and pointed his chin toward the sofa. At that moment, his mother questioned, what's going on? You'd better explain. Zhong Yi played dumb. What do you mean what's going on? What's going on with that woman? His mother said again, when did you both start? What does she do? What does her family do? Zhong Yi laughed. Whoa, are you doing a household check? His mother stared at him and said, I have to ask to be sure. If I did not bump into you, did you intend to never tell us? John Yi gave a forced laugh. It's not that, it's just that the time is not right yet. I wanted to tell you guys when we were more stable. The main issue is that I still don't know what her family thinks, so why would I make you guys happy for nothing if it doesn't work out? Look at you, why are you getting angry over something like this? If you're not satisfied with her, then I'll just end things with her later and find someone else. He said that as though he would really do it. Hearing that, his mother retorted, don't you dare. What are you talking about? Don't be unreasonable like that. Your dad and I haven't even taken a look at her yet, so when will you bring her home and introduce us? His father said, our son will bring her home when he feels the time is right, so stop worrying for nothing. How can I not be worried if this concerns my son's marriage? His mother did not like hearing that. After squabbling for a bit, Zhong Yi deflected all the questions back. At this moment, the news channel on television suddenly reported about a piece of news. Yesterday, the SARFT's deputy chief Wu Ziqing attended the Chinese Editorial Society's 16th Annual Assembly and delivered a speech. On screen, it showed many participants of the assembly with Wu Ziqing standing behind the rostrum, smiling as she gave her speech. His mother was taken aback. Eh? His father said, yo, President Wu's already the SARFT's deputy chief? She's such a high-ranking official? 
Zhong Yi helplessly said, wasn't she already one since a long time ago? I remember that I mentioned this to you before. Keep quiet, keep quiet, his mother interrupted. His father said in a speechless manner, what's the matter? His mother wondered, why does she look so familiar? Zhong Yi raised his eyebrows and quickly coughed loudly several times. His father smiled and said, that was our son's boss when he was at Peking University. She often appears on television, so of course you'd find her familiar after seeing her so many times already. Is that so, his mother said in confusion. But this figure of hers looks really familiar. Zhong Yi dabbed at the sweat on his forehead. His father looked at him and asked, Little Yi, are you still in contact with President Wu? Zhong Yi cleared his throat and replied, I guess so. His father nodded. Do keep in contact often. Now that she's such a high-ranking official and a leader who oversees the entertainment industry, it's better that you be on friendly terms with her. Be on what friendly terms? His mother shook her head and said, Chief Wu is already the deputy chief of the SARFT. Which television station and film company does not need to give her face? Does she need to be on friendly terms with you? Stop overthinking it. Little Yi only taught at Peking University for half a year. What's that little bit of friendship good for? Chief Wu might not even know who our son is. After all, it's already been so long. Moreover, Little Yi caused such a big incident when he was still at Peking University, leading those students to scold the foreign dignitaries and creating so much trouble for them. Even the sky nearly came falling down, so who knows if Little Yi has already offended Chief Wu, so what friendship is there to talk about? His father gave a wry smile at that. That's true. Hearing this, Zhong Yi rolled his eyes at them. What do you mean by I've already offended her? With that temperament of yours, whoever you offend wouldn't surprise me. His mother snorted at him and continued, I just that you'll start offending less people now so that your career can take off properly and then you can marry a sensible wife. Oh, but she won't do if she can't make it past your dad's and my criteria. His father interjected, as long as little Yi thinks she's fine, I have no objections. His mother said, she'll still have to get past me then. She won't do if I'm not satisfied with her. Zhong Yi quietly glanced at Wu Ziqing's figure on the television and said to them both, don't worry, ha ha. The two of you will definitely be satisfied when the time comes. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.